I was I had it playing, Bugs. Okay. I was watching you the stream from from like Twitch. Oh. Okay. It was a black screen the whole time. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. With music. Don't Bugs, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Okay, so, since we're both here, hello everybody, I'm Friendly Frankenstein, your cheerful co-commentator, person who isn't doing the drawing, but person who may occasionally do cursed voice things, and this is... I'm Faceful of Bugs, nice to see you all, how y'all doing? And Bugs is the person who's doing the drawing, and that's what we'll be doing tonight. Uh, tonight we're doing something we haven't done for a little bit, which is a kind of focused draw and talk. Yeah. Uh, this time literally about Sam and Max because it's on my brain again recently <laughs> and I guess I should have realized that that might be what happens when we play video games on this channel that's mostly about us like special interesting stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that it might reawaken old or new special interests yeah I, but hey I didn't anticipate being so gripped by Sam and Max but literally my sketchbook today is like, Katie KBC thank you glad I could catch a hey, stream thank you Whoa. so much for the subscription Two we months. love to see a stream hell yeah I was just telling them I need uh, because Cosmic Eternity resubbed too I need to thank make that guys. like third month I need to make that three month <gasps> sprite soon. They put a hat on the bug. They did! Oh, oh it's God. so big! <laughs> the poor bug. The bug is dancing under big hat. Let me. Uh, oh, that makes me so happy. Oopsie -dopsie. Uh, and later on tonight, we're also going to then transfer over to bugs working on commissions while we just kind of chat. Yeah. The, uh, the late night steez. Is that Olaf? Let me turn it up. No, no, it's a snowman nose on the bugs. Oh, it looks <laughs> just like Olaf. That's great. Oh. Uh, and apparently a bugs could be a little bit louder. Bugs has just turned themselves up. A little bit. Bugs can have size as a tree. You don't, that's, that's actually how that works visually. It is. Louder it's bugs true. is bigger. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, let me knock us over to Clip Studio Paint, which yeah. isn't on this one. Oh, and uh, could I, could I get a side stream? Wrong Clip Studio Paint window. Absolutely oh, well, no, Hang on. No, I've got it running. I've got it running. Okay. Sorry, I didn't see the live notification. There it is. Okay. There we are. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then, we all accidentally just draw Barney, mm. because the problem is he does kind of look like the really affable but doesn't have a chance uh, X from like a Hallmark movie. Fuck. You're right. Or like the, the, you know what? He can go either way. He's either the affable dad who doesn't have a chance from like a, a PG-13 family comedy, or he's the, the, the country boy who's about to teach Gordon Freeman all about Christmas. <laughs> Why Gordon and Christmas in Christmas Town is a big deal. Why my dad's been seeing it every year, Gordon. It's family tradition to be Santa here. And then it turns out like they you can tell they really wanted to have it turn out that he was actually the heir to like being Santa Claus, but then they realized they were gonna get sued by Tim Allen. Fuck. Gordon, I'm P Papa Noel. <laughs> 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 Off brand for the Hallmark channel. Hey, Queen with Lily 666, thank you for following during this bit. <laughs> Genuinely. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> oh, God. It, for, it just tickles me whenever anyone follows during a bit that I'm like purely doing for my own entertainment. Hey, thank you, Crystal's Pearl. I do actually want someone to do the Free Boon Hallmark special. Hey, how 9000 did nothing wrong? Thank you for the follow. Uh, say, how's the music level sound to everybody, by the way? Oh, is it a little loud? Don't don't ask me that. Don't ask me that. I'm hearing it through Discord. I never have any idea what reference there is to how that sounds to chat. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Let's see. Did I put my touch on it? Well, apparently, it's a bit quiet. A little bit quiet. All right. Let me turn it up a little bit. Hey, new. Good to see you. Hello. <laughs> 
I, I do freely release, by the way, uh, Hallmark or otherwise romantic Christmas movie, but Free Hoon, to the universe. That one's free. Anyone can take a riff off that one. Just, I don't know, link a clip of us laughing about it like doofuses. Thank you, Daxaster. <laughs> so nice of you to start off the stream thank, this thank way. Thank you, Daxaster. Really, thank you. I, oh, that reminds me, I should clear out all the wasps from last time. Yeah, please. Thank you. You all got up to 28 last time. How did that okay, These happen? are all getting marked as complete. I don't understand complete. it. It is so rude that it's, they would release it's wasps starting... completely unprompted. And, oh, thank you, Queen Lily. Thank you. So nice of you to sub. Thank you know, you I'd so actually, much. you know, I thank think you you're actually, so much for the subs and for JLJ. I think you're actually our currently 100th subscriber. So thank you. That's great. Yeah, it, it, it changes. It's going to drop by about 28 in a few days, but still. I'm very oh, happy. yeah. Anyways. Not bad, frankly. Anyways, uh, so. Whoa. Oh. I had. Uh, hey, thank you, Evil Elodie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, it's a hype train. Hey, thank Twitch, you. Twitch, were you listening alone. to us? This makes me feel like Twitch is just. Every now and then in, like, the laboratory setting that I vaguely place our chat into, uh -huh. like, all the computer screens just light the fuck up with hype train! Hype train! <laughs> We're like, huh? It's like an what? alarm goes off. I mean, if you say so, okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the subs, yo. That was lovely. Yeah, thank uh, you. Twitch is self-aware, which is distressing. Um, I'm, I'm warming up. Not with like Sam's in a good way. We're because it's like the most difficult shape. So please excuse that I'm going to be drawing yeah, uh, over, and over for a little bit. One of the ways that Steve Purcell decided to haunt us all, um, bugs. Yeah. I swear to God, my brain just edited in the Moonbase alpha noises over <laughs> this track. Like an audible <laughs> hallucination. Whoa, Josh For a the solid zombies. second. Thank you. <laughs> Josh of the zombies. Did anyone Gordon get the awful footwork. men? <laughs> Good. Gordon Footwork deserves it. He does. <laughs> oh, now, now, now it started in chat. Hey, you. Hey, you. Uh, fucking, how many times have I watched that, like, in my. I guess not my formative years. Your yeah. early 20s count as formative years, okay? Yeah, for sure. Functionally. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I spend so much time watching Lazy Town. No, I watched Lazy Town when I was a teenager. Still for gay slash trans reasons, mind you, but... Oh, uh, I have to tell you my Lazy Town story off the air. Absolutely. God, uh... <laughs> <laughs> If there's actually a Gordon and <laughs> I'm seeing like plans being made in chat, but delight and delights and frightens me. No, wait, who's Snake. making the novel? Snake! Snake! Oh, okay. Wow, I can actually remember too much of this. Brain empty, head only moon base alpha memes from like Sarah 10 Murphy, years ago. Sarah Murphy, if you need any art for that, hit me up, okay? It's true. Uh, no, we're not doing HLV. Luckily, we're talking about Sam and Max tonight. Not any kind of Cyber Kids AU. Although, I think technically in Sam and Max, we just played the Cyber Kids AU. So that's distressing. By the way, we didn't mean to do a seven hour stream. <laughs> Full confession. I literally remember thinking. I remember thinking, oh, sweet, we finished the game we left on last time. Uh. But we, we can just show a little bit of the new one, and we can show, like, oh, what's Bosco up to? Oh, what's what's uh, uh, our favorite gal in the whole wide world doing over here? Oh, well, we can show them a little bit of, like, how the cyber street works. And then I blink, and we finish the game. It was great. It was very fun. But also, it's very funny to reflect on. Oh, God damn it, Bugs. What are you drawing? Nothing. This has the exact same energy as, like, asking a dog what it's eating sometimes. Nothing. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you just need to start All to right. eat faster. Yeah. This music really does add something to the tone, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Watch, it's gonna do something really dramatic now. The iTunes is also... Nope. Continuing the theme, actually. Ah, Hypnospace Outlaw. Yep. 
I didn't realize I was about to guess Billy Hatcher. What, what am I drawing here? Hey, don't worry about it. Warm ups, you warm -ups. know, normal warm ups. Warm up Wacko Warner type B. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, Hypnospace Outlaw actually has some really dope music is the weird thing about it. Yep. Does he have a claw? Who added me? Did someone add me about my body horror? Oh? Oh no, my girlfriend just quote rt me. Oh. Anyways, don't worry about that. I'm not trustworthy with bug snacks. I'm not trustworthy with anything G-rated that I can do body horror in. That's all I'm gonna say. The power of the clothes. Don't worry about it. Oh god. He, he's shooting at his enemies. <laughs> and now we got some fucking tone music. <sighs> Slow jazz for weird Gordon AUs. <sighs> you do love to hear it sometimes. You do. Mm -hmm. What was the first pass of that hand? Not. You don't worry. <laughs> Make a flag on. I think everyone who does any kind of creative endeavor suffers from. Oh, but what if new shiny idea? And I did that. <laughs> it's the struggle. Let me see eventually there. We got our first Lego Morphic study put in. Oh. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh, please. Please put that on the Discord or somewhere we can RT it. Hey, thank you, Mollusks and Monster. Hey, Snaky Snail. Snail, thank Aww. you. Snails, you are so nice. That's very sweet of you. Oh, God. Yay. Oh, hype train complete at level one. Woohoo. Thank you all so much. That was lovely of you. Thank you. <laughs> Behold. Oops. Behold. We're not going to question what he was doing. Oh, here we go. Behold. Okay. Are you beholding? We behold. Okay, good. Thank you. It's That's very, very good. Eventually, uh, there. Thank you. I'm. Je I had to. The reason I went quiet for a moment is I had to pause and take my inhaler with my mic muted. Oh. So that's how you know that you've made me laugh really hard. <laughs> you did. You got a gift sub, Gordon Footwork. Now you hey, got all. Hey, hell, thank, thank you, you for the sub. sub. Oh, Nine thousand did nothing wrong. You guys are being very I generous love... tonight. Thank you. Indeed. Uh, also, can I say that I love when people have like a screen name. That invites a couple of questions. <laughs> I mean, I think technically the point of HAL 9000's whole thing is that the error was in the humans who were directing him. Mm. Just a little tragic. <laughs> no, I'm with the bugs, bugs chat. What? What you... That's his weapon. So about that shading. Uh-huh. <laughs> every cyber kid has their own power, first of all. I don't think they did. <laughs> I think they each got like a loot crate of boxes to use every episode. And Gordon has that a was always gun. kind of different. And it's natural. Kind of. <sighs> okay. <laughs> he can only use it so many times though. <laughs> Uh huh. <laughs> I don't think that's how the show worked either, Bugs! No, this is Gordon's power. He's an adult, so he has to have limits on his. <laughs> I will say, there really is just something so beautiful about watching, like, a six year old try to go ham on a stunt. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> I kind of assumed dancing. they were gonna, like. Yeah, no, the evil dancing is the best. I'm just all about, I just want the entire show to be edited into, like, the, the footage of the kid from that episode being turned evil by, like, experimental SoundCloud music. <laughs> I think that was actually Witchcore. Don't, 
Not sure. Bugs is the match is the max of you two. I'm sorry, Frankie. Yeah, Fandom Hop, tell me something I don't know. Yeah, we. I I used to think I was the Sam, but I accept my role. <laughs> You're further to the Ernie side of the spectrum than I am. That's all. That's what I'll say. <laughs> we don't really have a 100% Bert, but that's you know, true. It's tricky to do. It's tricky to commit. I need to clean my glasses. They're so blurry. I might want to do that. I really do. <laughs> I really, I love seeing new pictures of Sam and Max. I do too. That's a weird way to put it, but you know when you're in a fandom so small that you've like seen all the pictures. Yeah. That, that's been like me for the better part of a decade or so. So let's talk about a dog god of an Alagamore. Let's talk about Sam and Max. Uh, I think we've given y'all some like quick info about like the actual real world basis for sam and max uh which is that steve purcell kept drawing on his little brother's cute drawings of a of a dog and a rabbit that were like detectives maybe because he was an older sibling and that's kind of what you do sometimes mm -hmm. uh and somehow or another this running gag led up to one of the most beautiful comic series art wise with a very weird, surreal sense of humor about the freelance police. Uh, and also Steve Purcell used them as his cake toppers. Here. That's true. That's his wedding cake toppers with Sam and Max dressed to be getting married. This is the first Cannot... time Sam and Max appeared. Ever. Yes, isn't that... <laughs> that's actually really cute <laughs> so he's just like he made a new drawing okay he didn't draw on top of his brother's drawings uh and notice that already the toes haven't been detailed in yet but the personality is all pretty much there oh it's Zot oh that's funny Zot is uh oh that's really cute yeah if you know all those understanding comics, Scott McCloud stuff, uh, yeah. you are aware of Zot. Uh, so Ooh. Sam and Max has existed. Oh, <clears throat> hmm, hmm. oh, a Max cosplay. That sounds fantastic. That sounds very Do that. cool. Good. Uh, so basically, over time, we eventually wind up with Sam and Max the comic series, which. I have to confess, I'm suddenly very unclear on how those were originally published. <laughs> was there like a monthly Sam and Max where they published in something? Uh, so there actually he just... was, there were original floppies of Sam and Max. Um, I think how it Holy worked out shit. was, uh, yeah, I actually have a few of issues. Um, because uh, I and real quick, Sam issues. and Max is not a kid series. Real quick, Sam and Max is not a kid series. Technically not much happens in it that is inappropriate for a child except for all the guns that they have and do and the stuff they do sorry go ahead so uh the first comic monkeys violating the heavenly temple um yeah this was published by fish rat productions uh which is oh so basically it's an it's an indie comic series yeah exactly makes it sense. was an indie comic series that more or less sprung out of where he went to uh college so let me see that's can... really cool uh Here. i will one day I am, I am immediately seized of the urge to own one of these floppies for no good reason. It's a poison. They're about eight bucks uh, on eBay. He did literally... Oh, sweet. Okay, uh... And he did actually get his little brother's, like, complete sign-over, like, these characters belong to you now. The way it seems... The way I've seen it put is that it seems, like, a little sarcastic, but very loving, mostly. Uh, and by the way, I did figure out what the deal with Sam's toes might be. <laughs> I think they're just because, Good. you know, a little kid eventually- What? 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 Nothing. I'm telling them what I was thinking of. Okay, okay, okay. It's a joke on the abstraction of little kids drawing feet, like, as just three little bumps, so he interpreted them as weird human feet to torment his little brother. <laughs> it's, the, it's the best theory, probably the only theory existing so far. So, uh, real quick, um, Sam and Max- you know, we've, we've talked on stream before about how Steve Purcell worked mm -hmm. at LucasArts and did comics for them. Sam and Max yeah, yeah. had a game called Sam and Max Hit the Road. Against all odds. 
by LucasArts. Which it's a great game. Uh, and real quick, I'll say, I do think it kind of makes sense in a cosmic way because LucasArts isn't an indie game studio, but they were a small, weird studio for quite a while. Like, an, an oddball little not big name studio. So it makes sense that those doofuses making those games would really be into a particular indie comic dude. So, uh, as a little heads up, I think in the future we are going to be hitting Hit the Road, yes? Oh yeah, uh, I've never actually played Hit the Road, so I think that that would be really fun to do on stream, uh, possibly with a guide open in another tab. Maybe. A little bit. <laughs> But it would seem really fun, and I feel like playing more adventure games would be kind of cool. Yeah, because even... there's a lot. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, uh, we we're even thinking about hitting like full throttle and stuff. Because you know. Yeah, exactly. Lucas Arts. Grim Fandango is on the list for yes, sure. Yes, yes, yes. Because from Lucas Arts and Grim Fandango, we can do a direct line for Double Fine, which we both yes. love. Double Fine Productions and Psychonauts. <laughs> Double Fine, yeah. Double Fine Productions, like, owns a chunk of my brain forever. Yeah. Basically. Same. So. Uh, particularly, psych the Psychonauts stream is literally coming. We're, like, scheduling with Grizz, I swear to God. Yeah. Uh, uh, possibly not before the New Year's, mind you, but. But soon. We, we, the problem is that Grizzly's schedule um, is a little up in the air sometimes, but we've been trying to make it work out, so this will happen. We if promise. nothing else, like, yeah, it will happen. Uh, and it'll be very funny because the sense memories I have of, of fucking Camp Whispering Rock is oh, man, ridiculous. I know. <clears throat> it was like my first major platformer, honestly. Really? Great place to start. Definitely oh, not cool. hellish. I never really played any of the Mario games before that or anything, so it was definitely my first, like, collect-a-thon game. Because otherwise, before that, it'd be, like, Portal. Mm. And Portal's kind of a, a platformer, but also, like, not really the same way. Yeah, I feel ya. Uh. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so Sam and Max then became a game there, and... The Telltale games are pretty much, like, I think, another offshoot from LucasArts, a little bit. Mm. Yeah, if nothing else in spirit. I think literally in personnel, though. Yeah. Uh, and so they kind of brought the Sam and Max thing with them. And honest to God, I actually really admire the verve of making another Sam and Max game. <laughs> okay, uh, when LucasArts closed, most of them made Telltale. Evil Eo Idolon says, which... Honestly, thank you. I'm not good at this type of trivia about a series. <laughs> the actual, like, years and tracing stuff. But, like, Telltale is where I got in on the series, which is kind of odd mm -hmm. as a place to start, uh, <laughs> but it's just true. I literally started with season one of Telltale, uh, and I think when... I think season two was already out when I actually played it because again my copy was a disc for the Wii and one day I hope to find this disc in my stuff somewhere because that's a weird fucking thing to own it is and that's very ex oh let's see oh that's cool about my stem oh or stem that's cool yeah and uh, worth noting Steve Purcell also did comics for the staff newsletter at LucasArts that everyone wound up really adoring. So anybody who wasn't already a fan of Sam and Max kind of became a fan of San Sam and Max. Oh. Because honest to God, it's charming. Yeah. Hey, speaking of that, the new Serving the Highway Edition has uh, color scans of those, and I really love it. Ooh. And also, I know a shop in yeah. SoCal that delivers online, and I think every copy there is signed, because mine was signed when I got it in the mail. And I was very uh, Mine is literally still in... Mine is in storage because it was one of the things that I wanted to have be safe if there was a fire in the area. Oh, that's, that's nice. not a joke. That's nice. But it's also like and now I'm like, but now I'm like, fuck! It's raining out, and I want to be able to read my damn Sam and Max. So yeah, I, I kind of wish there's a place on. I, hey, Dark Horse, I'm I'm drifting this this thought. A digital edition, just saying, I'd pay for it again. <laughs> I really would. Uh, yeah. So Sam, oh. What up? Uh, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, I was gonna say- I uh, was just gonna say- Go, go, go. Go. Go! 
<laughs> Jesus Christ. There was also a cartoon. The cartoon's really weird. They weren't allowed to use guns or do, like, actual violence, so instead it was psychically damaging in other ways. I haven't watched very much of the cartoon. All respect to everybody who loves it. It's a waking nightmare. <laughs> Which is technically on brand for Sam and Max. It is an extreme waking nightmare. You can actually find But like it was a cartoon for kids. Yeah. You can find concept I, art I feel like Sam Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> God in heaven bugs, I swear to God. <laughs> You can find a uh, concept art of it in the uh, sketchbooks that I mentioned that are like three to four hundred dollars on eBay these days. But some very nice people have posted skins online on Tumblr. Um, I actually had a computer where I was saving as much of that sketch data as I could, but that computer has bricked. So once I find those files again, I'm going to dig them up and rub my face all over them and learn. For real. But there's uh, some very fantastic set design in there. Yes, for real. Uh, and I will note that, like, I actually really think there should be other Min Max cartoons because now everybody has concept of like tunes that are aimed at adults in their head. And Salmon to me is the perfect tone for that because it's adult, not because of like there's titties or anything. There might be in Salmon Max somewhere. I don't know for sure. I doubt it. I but just because it's like definitely not for kids. Mm. It's definitely not, like, aimed at a family-friendly entertainment. And I think that it's weird, like, surreality and kind of lack of <clears throat> much care about, like, lore exactly would be really fun. Uh, and also, I feel like they're funny animals, but they have guns is a much easier sell nowadays. Oh, absolutely. In general. <laughs> Yes, that's true. Hound 9000 brings up something incredibly important. It, the cartoon gave us one very important thing, which is Sam and Max's adopted human child, the Geek. There's actually a little shout out to the Geek in Season 3, which I think is very cute. Yes! Uh, which I should clarify, that's not canonically what she is. Canonically, she's a super intelligent child a la uh, every step. Stereo Kit's typical smart child from a cartoon show in the 90s. But she just kind of lives in their building's basement, and they're like the only adults mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. So that's their child. As far as I'm concerned. Ew. Uh, they're just very hands off, and they let her like do her own thing study wise. The truancy officer did not get very far. Uh, side note. I'm a bit of a sap, and I actually like the idea that in the Telltale continuity, she still exists. It's the, just that she's, like, old enough that she kind of moved out and kind of started her career. Because, because like, if she was 10 in, like, the early 90s, like, when the cartoon yeah, came out, yeah, then by yeah. the Telltale series, she'd be, like, 20 or so. Aww. Yeah, exactly! Uh, uh, and honestly, I have so much respect for anyone who played Poker Night and saw Sam and Max and were like, I want to learn what the fuck is up with these characters, because <laughs> I, I think that's why they're in that game, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Telltale was like, piss, 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 piss. <laughs> hey, look at these characters. The heavy say sandwich line. I remember being on yeah. in T into the TF2 fandom and being so excited when that game came out because Heavy had a line about like saving a sparrow or something or... Or crushing yeah. a sparrow egg between his thighs. One, one or the other. And everyone was very excited about it. <laughs> the end. You can't evil... <laughs> uh, evil Dolon says, Mine's the inverse. I cannot play poker for the life of me, but I play it for them. And my hell brain immediately... <clears throat> you play it for them. God. And then you do it again. God. Fucking... <laughs> Treachery brain. <laughs> it's just what it does you all know, day. I'm it's actually sarcastic. in that same boat, evil uh, Edelons. Um, I I I am not very good at poker. So. Uh, I'm good at poker for one reason only, and that's because Harvest Moon for the DS had a gambling casino run by Pixies, and it was one of the games still where time froze so long as you were inside. Mm -hmm. uh, so every time I had the casino unlocked and had all the pixies that were the gamble pixies rescued, I would just like play cards so I could get the magic items that made some stuff easier. God. <laughs> Good. 
So I have a vague remembrance of how to play poker from my fucking 13, 10 to 13 year old delinquency harvest moon period. <laughs> you had poker competitions at your elementary school and cheated? Good for you. Good. Good. <laughs> Fuck them kids. <laughs> Also, Mega Flygon, that sounds great. Tabletop Sim does let you do poker, huh? Does like it? an idea to tuck in the back pocket. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, Harvest Moon DS was a great game, just to go on a slight tangent. In general, if you were a young autistic child questioning your gender. Oh, man, the uh, witch. In my, yeah, the witch, and in my case, where I would be like, oh, I'm gonna play Harvest Moon DS cute, and I'm gonna romance all these middle-aged men, but I gave myself a boy's name, so I could pretend that it's like the Yayoys. And now as an adult, I'm like, no, you were just gay and trans. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, you literally picked the girl character and gave them a boy name. <laughs> it's just trans farmer simulator. <laughs> Oh, Blue Star, I understand you, though. Uh, by the way, uh, there's a Sam and Max romance game would be impossible, but I always think that there's that one doofy video game cameo romance game, and I think if Sam and Max ever appeared in something like that, they have to be a unit for sure. Yes. You have to romance both of them, never one or the other. It's exactly. But they have separate affection meters, so oh, watch God. the fuck out. God. Total pain in the ass. <laughs> You have to rise them both at the same time. <laughs> I know you gotta romance them both. Uh, so, dovetailing back to the original everything we're talking about, long story short is that Sam and Max are an almost against all odds beloved pair of characters, mm -hmm. but they've always been kind of a niche beloved pair of characters. Uh, which I do actually find a little bit inspiring. To me, there's something to be said for making something that might not ever be widely known, but you got a fucking cartoon contract and, like, a lot of video games. Yeah, and new games coming out. Very exciting. Yeah, literally a VR game. Just because it's something that's beloved by the kind of people who create stuff. In a way, I almost feel like Sam and Max were like a preview of something that would become much more common in internet culture, which is like creators loving stuff that other people make and helping there be more of it in the world. Mm. Just to be a little sappy for a moment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ah! Halfway to Malin, it's your sub message in my heart, uh, and I'll read it for you just as a special <laughs> treat uh, because you're important. Adrian has escaped the zoo. Use the Tonka helicopter to hunt them down. Follow the arrows to find Adrian. <laughs> Quick, chase him with the helicopter. Oh no, Adrian's <laughs> broken out of the zoo. Reminder, you can use the arrows to find Adrian. God. <laughs> Tonka Joe is important. Uh, so... Another funny thing with Sam and Max is that, as you noticed, it has a couple of continuities. But in a way that you can kind of just pick and choose whatever events at any point, because Sam and Max don't lack continuity exactly. It's just that so much Buckwild stuff happens in it, and there's usually not like big overarching arcs outside of the Telltale games. Uh, so like, don't worry about it too much. Like. In the comics, at one point, uh, out of nowhere, they get jumped by a bad guy who's a man with a fishbowl for a head. Mm -hmm. And then they get rescued by uh, two babies and a chimpanzee who are all wielding guns that I believe are called the Diaper Boys. Nope, the Rubber Pants Gang. The Rubber Pants Gang, thank you. Or no, the Rubber and Pants all of those And all of those characters are referenced as if they're established characters. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. It's like, I think literally like opened my third eye at some point, like not to be too goofy here, but like, <laughs> I particularly have a big love of stuff that just goes for it like that. Like, fuck it. 
we just introduce these characters and they're beloved. Oh my god, the second wave of potential Sam and Max figures have the rubber pants gang in it. That's beautiful. No. That's definitely like, it's terrible, but. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of a series where you can do almost anything in it, and they just kind of exist in this wonderful, cartoony, kind of New York world, where, like, some things are consistent. Flint Paper, they're like, uh, we haven't met him yet, you guys are gonna love him, honestly. He looks him. like Barney's weird uncle. He does. <laughs> and Bugs' art also get, brings me joy, I'll say that. Thank you. Uh... Flint Paper, they're like hard-boiled, like proper detective uh, neighbor is reoccurring. He's great because literally the entire joke is that he's like who the comic should be about almost. Eventually there. Let me see. Oh yeah, Bugs has drawn some particular art. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Oh, Are no. Sam and Max in love with each other like Butch and Sundance? Steve, you put them on your wedding cake. You put them on your wedding cake, Steve. Yeah. It's... Someone on Twitter put it best. It's literally like Pinky and the Brain, where they just literally are gay. But in that, like, I don't know. They've got, like, 1960s established bachelor energy. Oh, wasps. How Evilly rude. Dolons. Rude. Thank you, Rarokey. Flint Paper does not look like Jimmy Neutron if he went wrong in life. <laughs> That's so mean. <laughs> not Jimmy Neutron. He deserves all the hate he can get, but my god. <laughs> Rude to Flint Paper. Uh, hopefully that wasp point to someone who will appreciate it. Yes. So, with, with Sam and Max... Uh, oh, okay, so Flint flower. Paper is a constant. I'm sorry about that. I hope you get better soon, okay? Uh, their office is consistent. Uh, they are always the freelance police. There's always the commissioner who has never been seen mm. and kind of haunts me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't answer any question about what their job is or who the commissioner is or how they would get that job. Because the thing is, if they were just called the freelance police and they were the only people who called themselves that, Whoa. you'd be like, hey, Nub. Oh, hey, hey, hey Nub. Nub. holy shit. Thank you, Hey Nub. Holy I shit. I glanced Thank over you. expecting wasps and instead I get kindness. <laughs> we, we've conditioned this ourselves music is... to wasps. <laughs> also, this is the perfect music for it. Thank you so much, Haim. That was thank lovely you, of thank you. you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank Absolutely you. Absolutely kind. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> <laughs> now we got extra bugs in the chat. I do love extra bugs in the chat. I always love bugs. Oh god, what was I even saying? Just trying my line of thought. Uh, <laughs> oh, the commissioner. I, the fact that Sam and Max answer to a commissioner means that they can't possibly just be weirdos who decided to name themselves the freelance police because they specifically get, like, orders from the commissioner. That's the one starting point of every single Sam and Max story, almost. There's probably a few where they don't. They get a call from the commissioner. They both dive for it. Uh, Sam grabs the phone and prevents Max from getting it. Mm -hmm. uh, the commissioner gives them the mission. That's how it always goes. Right. I, it's, it frightens me. <laughs> it frightens me that there is some form of somebody out the, the commissioner has the most dangerous power in the world. Which is the ability to point Sam and Max at someone. <laughs> and Sam and Max will do it without question. It's true. Uh, there is, however, one possible answer for who it could be that would make me feel better. Because the geek did impersonate the commissioner once. Whoa! Cowboy hey! Holy shit, Cowboy Tim <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you! <laughs> That's oh so God. lovely of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Catboy Tim. <laughs> now <Allen>. you can. <laughs> now I can share my three months lol. Now I can. You did share clear some space for lull. it. Dang it! Now I have to make a three month monster. <laughs> <laughs> Leon the cowboy. Well, thank yes, you. Hey, hey gamers. <laughs> thank you, Leon the cowboy. 
No, you got the two-month monster. It got bigger. You must have fed it. You guys like Sam and Max, huh? <laughs> <laughs> we're very glad, because honest to God, this was one of those convos we had where we were like, this one's kind of for us. Yeah, honestly. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Honestly, thank you so much. Oh, and it's a birthday gift for Taco Ninja by accident. Oh, that's lovely. That's wonderful. <laughs> I think it's the Bayonetta music. <laughs> Drives the chat wild, clearly. <laughs> God, I really need to crack open, ba open Bayonetta soon. Do it. It's good. I'm excited to it's destroy my gay. wrists. It is. Uh... Aw, oh, thank you. I'm glad emphatic. You do try to be nice to listen to. Most of the time. I haven't played Bayonetta. Bugs has played Bayonetta. I own Bayonetta. It's on my Switch. It's downloaded, I swear. Honest. I am a big fan of Platinum Games, like, by proxy, if that makes sense. It's mostly thanks to Matt McMuscles. I gotta be real. It does make sense. No, Almost weren't. explicitly. Oh, sending Sam and Max after Frankie to play Bayo. Rude. I was so addicted to Bayonetta 2. I remember uh, back when I used to go to like the semi knockoff therapy my doctor had me do for a bit. Um, I was just sitting in the waiting room playing Bayonetta 2, just like, I have to get past this part. I have to rescue Jean. <laughs> <laughs> those are those intense sense memories. Yeah. <laughs> God, which it. Which is also- oh! Do we have the ultimate jam on? Oh god, I love all the amalgam tracks. Yeah, honestly. It does something to my brain. I've literally, like, sat writing just listening to the- to the, uh, orchestra version of the amalgam boss- the amalgam fight music. Yes! It's kind of on a loop for, like, a while. Don't worry about how long. <laughs> uh. So yeah, there's basically some constants in Sam and Max, and then further in Telltale, uh, Telltale kind of has its own set of constants, and we're gonna be talking some about, like, our ideas about Sam and Max's fairly non-existent continuity, and we're gonna be mostly working from Telltale. Uh, which is why it was necessary to explain that there's been, like, five iterations of these beautiful goofuses. Mm-hmm, mm hmm Oh, Frogger in the waiting room. I feel that. I feel that. I never actually got to do that because I grew up in the kind of area where we had highlights and you liked it. But, you know. <laughs> Cowboy Skid is pretty good, I will admit. Uh, so in Telltale, I, we've been actually talking recently about, like, one very cute thing about Sam and Max is that it's actually canonical in every series they've ever been in comics, games, and cartoon that Sam and Max knew each other when they were little kids. Like, little kids! It's, Tiny! It's very a puppy cute. and a bunny! It's very cute every single time. Uh, we also know a few other details from the comics specifically that uh, Max has a really big family and that Sam and Max's family now, with them as adults, do Christmas together. <laughs> <laughs> or like Thanksgiving? They do holidays together, mm -hmm. which is really, really, really cute. It is. Like, it's literally like the married couple who actually do like the big whole both sides of the family thing, mm -hmm. which is impressive, frankly. <laughs> Baby Max is basically the- it's all- yeah, it is a little bit worrying to know that there's a bunch of other Maxes. Just waiting like, literally, to be unleashed. He has like 30 siblings, y'all. Like, that, I'm not even joking. I think he literally has, like, at least a dozen siblings. I don't know if anyone's ever done a count in the comics of how many Legomorphs we see, but he's at least... I always like to think that he's literally, like, the middlest sibling of however many siblings he has. Like, if he has 20 siblings, then he is, in, he is child 10. He's on the dot middle sibling. Uh, Sorry, I was Max is the middlemost child, and that's no, no. I fully understand. <laughs> yeah, like Max is the middlest sibling. Uh, Sam, we kind of know a little bit less about, but we've seen 
what looked like his parents in the comics, and we've met his grandma in the cartoon, his and his grandma, grandma fucking rules. rules. She's a cop, which sucks, uh, but she does fucking rule is the thing. Yeah. No, Sam and Max generic flower, Sam and Max. Definitely not the Max from Max and Ruby, the picture book buddies. It might be a reference, though, now that I come to think about it. Oh, that'd be cute. And this track is... Moon. Adder Electro Moon Disc. Oh, it's from Moon. It's from Moon RPG, Moon Remix RPG Adventure. <laughs> you should play it. It's beautiful and transcendent, and I need to finish it. There is an NPC who has music discs, and it's for a trivia game where you have to guess every music track in the game, including the, like, 50-plus that come just from this one NPC's oh, store. God. I have listened to a lot of the music that this character sells, and then I ended up blindly guessing until I got the quiz right. But there are some good tracks uh, in it. It's, it's a, it, there are some good tracks. Weirdly enough, I didn't play the music very much. You have to put on the music yourself, mm -hmm. uh, or you can put on like a little playlist, goofily enough. Mm -hmm. And more often than not, I just kind of listen to the ambient background sound. Yeah, I did too. It's got very great sound design. I, every so often, um, <clears throat> I'll hear like a sample of a bird, and it's one of the birds you use yes. right outside the grandma's house. Yeah. And yes. it kills me because it's also like when you go and see Asgore, the end of Undertale, it's like, oh, there's that same sample bird. I wonder if Toby Fox, because, you know. I see you, Toby. Yeah. I see you. Yeah, 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 exactly. I know that I know that we know that Toby never got to actually play Moon Remix RPG Adventure before he made Undertale. But I feel like uh, he would have liked but it is watched clips, you know? Yeah, he def yeah, because he said that he heard of it and that he like read about it. So yeah, that yeah. would make the most sense to me. So uh, also down. side note, everything made by those people, some sounds continue, and so every now and then like listening to like Chibi Robo or Tulip, my head fucking like shoots up for a second yes. like a dog hearing the mailman exactly exactly the and if me and bugs are watching it hmm? the shotgun's a little too short i have to bring the uh grip up some he saw it real tight yeah he saw it in real tight he saw it real <laughs> tight all right sorry you were saying uh because moon and tulip are made by the same studio and also there's like a family of kind of like moon rpg's descendants kind of mm -hmm. uh whenever me and bugs are watching something and one of those voices gets reused a little with like a different pitch yeah we like go who is that who is that okay it's the visor yeah. it's the visor from moon remix <laughs> <laughs> and there was like some mst3k we were watching or no it was i think yes no you know what it was in halloween they're playing was it? a was clip it? from um the thing the original version of the thing yeah and there's a character who's like i'm the reason they made this rule about the thing i'm like that's the fucking baker yes that's the fucking baker it, yes it was hey we're RT convinced. Squids, thanks for the we're, follow yeah, thank you for the follow rt squids uh oh you're gonna play moon right now good do that it's Excellent. lovely do it's it, an it, old it, game it, it, it. it's an old game i think it's on sale this week too. it's so I, I played that game by being very cautious <clears throat> with the time limits they give you. I recommend caution. Anyways, uh, oh. would we play it sometime? You know, I've played it Probably. enough to know how to get through the puzzles. Yeah. Uh, and I haven't actually finished the game, which could actually be an interesting way of finishing the game is yeah, to just cool. hit it on let the me, LP. Let me write that down. On Fuck it, put it on the thing. list. Yeah, yeah. On the list! I have a desk calendar where I've scheduled out, that's what was accidentally showing at the start of the stream. Every X is a day that we've yes. streamed. And then I write down what oh, days funny. other streams I want to watch her on because I'm a big fucking dork. Um, <clears> that's <throat> literally what decides our schedule sometimes. Yeah. Pretty much it's like, well, are you doing anything interesting? Well, I'm going to be watching the Squirpy stream. Oh, okay. Well, I'll watch it with you. But, mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> it is now on the list. Thank uh, you. And I wrote down every suggestion uh, we also got in the Discord, too. It's true. Uh, which you can join the Discord to be able to give us a, suggestions. Crab what kind of games you'd like us to play? now following me. <clears throat> Great. Hey, thank you, Crab with a Knife. Oh, God, <laughs> we're being threatened. <laughs> I feel like I would, some that that is something I feel there should be an emoji for, but not like necessarily on our channel. I mean, like universally. Yeah. Uh, you should just be able to modify crab with knife. Oh, actually, onion. I'm the same <laughs> way. I 
Jenny? Yeah, we do that. <laughs> I can't recognize them to like the voice actor names. Bugs is good at that. Mm. But I can cross-reference them in my head and be like, Yes, that is Wander Over Yonder from that one side character. I'm that weirdo. <laughs> hey, um, have I told my super robot monkey team Hyperforce Ghost Story on stream yet? No, you haven't. But let me just real quick say, oh, yeah. weird thing. Uh, the uh, <clears throat> DNA from the developers who made uh, Moon RPG Remix actually trickled down all the way to Dungeon Quest builders and a lot of the recent Paper Mario games, including oh, yeah. Paper Mario Origami King. Yeah, yeah. Which is also possibly on the list. It's very long, though. Oh, yeah, I, I do have that game, and I've heard there's some good horror in it. There is. It's really, really good. Anyways, uh, tell your super monkey force go. <laughs> hold on. God damn it! My brain has been holding onto that title for ten years, and now it's dumped it. I had a shirt with it with super the logo Hyper. on the back, so every day I super robot monkey team hyper force go. No, I don't want to wear super robot monkey team hyper force go. I want to wear something else that isn't super robot <laughs> monkey team hyper force go. Anyway, <clears throat> tell the story. So uh, Tom Kenny voices uh, one of the robots in super robot monkey team hyper force go. And, uh, one of I, the robot monkeys. Yes, one of the robot monkeys, because it's a show about robot monkeys and their Frenchy hero. It's very cute. It's a great show. Um, Did anyway. I mention I was super into it when I was 13? Because that was the style at the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, my family is made of people who uh, we work entertainment press, uh, small time. So, uh, specifically, my family covers theme parks and cartoons. Um, usually I'll get enlisted to, like, help out one of my folks by, like, taking pair, uh, pictures or whatever. Um, so my dad was covering a Super Robot Monkey Team Hyperforce Go com uh, panel at Comic-Con. And, um, they've got all the voice actors on stage, except for Tom. And the panel is starting. And, um, one of the voice actors, oh gosh, she's that one voice actor they always get when they do, like, the deep voice characters. He voiced the, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah, the leader. Yeah, 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 the leader. Of the I know exactly which one you mean. Let's see, Super Robot. Yeah, Super Robot Monkey Team Hyperforce Go. Hyperforce. The aughts were a wild time, y'all. We had just gotten, like, producers were just starting to sign off on stuff that was, like, anime. And so this was literally, like, someone took the desire for, like, lol random <laughs> humor but then plugged it into kind of a rad, like, Tezuka-esque kind of beat. Okay, so... It's kind of how the show shook out. Antari, who's voiced by Kevin Michael Richardson. Um, Kevin Michael Richardson's on stage, and he's like, I'm sorry, folks, I guess Tom couldn't make it. And from the back of the hall, because it's like, this is back when Comic-Con was a little smaller, so you could actually do this. This one guy goes like, Oh, he sucks! And Kevin Michael Richardson kind of looks in the back, and he's like, Tom, get on stage. <laughs> and Tom Kenny had been sneaking out to get his son some merch from the hall floor and then <laughs> snuck in. <laughs> Which he's allowed to do because he made it funny and he's Tom Kenny. Yeah. I, I actually got him to sign a birthday card for a friend once. And this was the year he was doing Ice King uh, for Adventure Time. Adventure oh, Time had God, just yeah, started, yeah. basically. And he was at a uh, bar by Cartoon Network. Uh, or uh, by where the Cartoon Network event area was. I think this was the year it was the uh, San Francisco, or not San Francisco, San Diego Kids Museum, where they had the giant inflatables. I actually met Penn Ward there. It was kind of cool. But um, anyway, they, they did this whole other thing where they would give you a prize when you cleared the maze and some poor bastard got a banana signed by the whole cast and it just rotted. Ah. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, He's in a bar and there's some dude in an Ice King cosplay and he buys the guy a drink and the guy's like, well, thank you, but why'd you buy it for me? And goes like, in the Ice King voice, he goes, because I like your hat. <laughs> <laughs> it was really cute. Because I like your hat. Yeah. yeah. Someday I'll get Ice King done. Fucking difficult. He has a specific voice range. Anyway, <clears throat> I got, I got stories, but yeah. <laughs> I do love that one. I just love that, like, he had the class to, like, make it a bit instead of being like, Hey, sorry, I was late. Yeah, honestly, it was it was delightful from what I hear. It was my dad who saw it, but... <laughs> <clears throat> honestly, I, I never got to watch much of that cartoon because the way I was watching it is that I uh, grew up in a super rural area and didn't have television for a long time. But when I was, like, a baby middle schooler, 
uh, iTunes started carrying TV shows and stuff because iPods. Fucking such an old phrase. I'm crumbling to d every time I have to say the word my iPod with video in it. <laughs> I die you slightly. I turn into the crypt Yo. keeper. Ah. You know, I had. I did at one point. Who we could. I would save up. We we watched on the Game Boy Advance. You remember how they would do that? God, yeah, I remember. <laughs> we all gathered around <laughs> his Game Boy Advance and watched. Back Pokemon. in the day. <laughs> uh, but so I would just kind of buy random stuff, uh, which is also how I got into LT Gray, though, which I'm glad of. And I would just literally like look at the titles of shows and get a couple of episodes, but I could never afford that many of anything. Uh, so I never got to watch it that far, but I have fond memories of it because in retrospect, like what a great way to use kind of a goofy name to get away with basically doing like a low key Astro Boy esque yeah, kind of show. Honestly. Like not as grim, but the style and the oh, pacing. The El Tigre. Was so good. I've my passion for El Tigre, by the way, and just everything that dude has ever done or will ever do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've joked before about the concept of things that are so beautiful that I don't care about how straight they are. <laughs> <laughs> the and I think that's just the book of life is that. The book of <laughs> life is so straight, was, but it's good enough that it's okay. I was on the press tour for when they were doing the book of life thing, and Zibalba's voice actor, Ron- Whoa! Wait. Dr. Sex. Oh, thank you, Dr. Hmm. Sex. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Sex. <laughs> Holy shit, it's Dr. Sex! Wow, the Dr. Sex, thank you. <laughs> Zibalba's voice actor. We'd love actor. to see it. Did a uh, Ron Perlman did an interview and his fucking voice shook the room, man. Ugh. Yeah. God. Uh, side note, just because we're sharing some side stories, uh, I actually worked in a movie theater while uh, Book of Life was in theaters. Uh, I worked as an usher for like two years, like maybe a year and a half, uh, while still going to school basically the last job like that that I could take before my physical disabilities really set in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I liked it for what it was. If I could have listened to my iPod, I pro- fucking iPod. My I if I could have listened to music while doing that job, I might have stayed there a really long time, honestly. Uh, but I got the understimulations and the anxiety. And, and, but and the passion the crowd. Yeah. I don't want to talk. <laughs> Half a hot dog without the bun. All the way at the screen. The <laughs> most carnage I have ever seen. The popcorn. Oh my god. <laughs> and I don't blame the parents. I really don't. All you need is to look away for two seconds for a two-year-old to dump out a thing of popcorn dead on the floor. But I'm still haunted by the hot dog. Because <laughs> there's a discreet series of choices that had to be made for a hot dog to wind up all the way at the screen. Sorry. Bugs just like fucking triggered, like set <laughs> off my deep sense memories. <laughs> I was going to say that while the Book of Life was still in theaters, I would kind of sneak off and watch little scenes of it, like when I had a moment. And one of my favorite memories is that I got to see like a little family, like watching the Book of Life, like on the Wednesday matinee. Like you could tell they'd grabbed the kids right off of school to get to go see it while it was cheap. It's literally like one of my favorite memories. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, my uh, we didn't do it this year, but uh, my family, cause I'm I'm white, but my mom married into a Mexican family, and the family's adopted me. Um, <clears throat> we we watch it when Dia de los Muertos comes around, or Dia de Muertos. It's beautiful. It is. Uh, I weirdly just grew up in an area where Day of the Dead was kind of like kind of a thing a little bit oh. and i'm not sure why because it's not like it, it was a very white area so in retrospect i'm like hey hippies hey <laughs> hey we want to talk real quick i felt bad for lying i am not dr hey, sex but dr skeletons. second you all are great oh hey cowboy benry that's okay cowboy benry i forgive you thank <laughs> you wow it's cowboy benry holy crap cowboy <laughs> benry's here oh my god look cowboy benry wow <laughs> Oh, 
god. Uh, someday I will definitely just go off about LT Gray for a stream. That'll be fun. You'll just get to hear about me being gay for White Pantera, honestly. Yeah, good choice. That's about where that goes. The man is the most divorced man to ever exist, and yet... <laughs> yeah, we are all Dr. Sex. Yet. <laughs> we are all Dr. Sex, it's true. <laughs> Dr. Sex. LT I Gray like was how so you divorced, hold that guy. I thought he was like oh a widower. <laughs> I forgot about that. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I set something for 69 cheers. <laughs> mm. You tried to sneak up on us this time. <laughs> <laughs> That's not... I, I've hidden some terrible things with Barney. There's one or two that y'all haven't found, actually. There's one I'm definitely sure will never be found, and thank God for that. Because it is, uh, no, it generic is flower. a painful sonic attack of Barney. Yes. Uh, I don't hear them, which is fun. Yeah, it's but, just for me. Uh, also, generic flower, you're not wrong. The Book of Life is very uh, poly by accident. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But here's the horrifying thing. I tweeted about that once and about like how I definitely think the main character comes off as trans. And... Uh, the man, the, the man himself liked my tweet. <laughs> Yo. So I have to live with that. Uh, I think he was just searching Book of Life on Twitter. The blue check mark and everything. <laughs> mm. I think he's one of those people who's a very straight creator, but he's like, Oh yeah, cool, I hadn't thought of that, was kind of the tone I got. I don't know. <laughs> See terrifying, you, terrifying. Thank you for hanging out. See you hey, on the dusty trail. See you down. See you the down on them lonesome trails. Yeah, Horshe is a funny one. <laughs> he do his best. Also, he just makes everything gorgeous. So, hmm. You're in pretty good shape for a man of science. Hey, I'm sorry. Thank you. Hey, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Katie Katie. So that's that finally set it off. Uh, that that's not the the scary one. I think that one is okay. 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 And I think there's one I said that's <laughs> never going off. That's like four twenty dollars. Those are never ever. ever nobody going do it. Off. Nobody. All of you know. It's close to it's close to the holidays. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm hey, making like a warning point. Actually, speaking of that, um, hi, Kalish. Yes. Uh, my dad's girlfriend was told to give 75 bucks to someone in need uh, by a okay. friend for her 75th birthday, so if anyone knows anyone who, like, needs a donation, like, bad, 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 please let me mm -hmm. know and I can get them 75 bucks. For real. Always good to know. Uh... <laughs> okay, so, let's steer this one back to Sam and Max, which isn't straight, but occasionally... Sam and Max, I'm just gonna say, have- they just come off like a pair of married gay dudes who aren't really in the closet, they just like, don't talk about it exactly. Like, they're- they're a married gay dude couple from the 1960s, transferred to our world. If that makes any kind of sense. It does! They're that like, no, no, they just lived together for 30 years, don't worry about it, and one of them was- really upset when one of them almost got married and everybody in Hollywood kind of knew they were a thing but like you weren't allowed to say it's like that mm -hmm. Bert and Ernie yes Bert and Ernie is a really good comparison point uh, let me... because we all know it but yes no go ahead go ahead uh, eventually there it's kind of weirder than that it's not that Max canonically doesn't like women it's just that every time he expresses attraction to women Sam says Max, you don't even like women. Hey, Sam? Okay. Hey, Sam? Uh, so yes. the only bits one is 69. The only donation is one. Whoa. Thanks. This is a test donation for $17. Oh, that was me. I accidentally hit the test one. That was a trick. We didn't get oh, any money. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, no, no, no. Test button, test button. Uh, where did I put it? Oh, shit. 
Uh, yeah, Mike from Monsters Incorporated really does have some. Yeah, this is my wo this is my wife and this is my boyfriend. Okay, it's six dollars ninety cents, four dollars twenty cents, sixty nine dollars, and four twenty dollars. That's all I have right now. So don't don't send like a hundred dollars thinking you're gonna get something special. Let me set up something. <laughs> aside from killing us, yes. aside from killing us live on air, yes, you'll get that. Anyway, sorry, Frankie, you were saying? Uh, I think I was just going to say... Oh, I was just pointing out that even though in theory it's canon that Max doesn't like girls, what's actually canon is just that every time Max is attracted to a woman, Sam gets, like, really pissy about it. Mm -hmm. Which is really different. That's actually different. And don't. 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 I'm looking at chat. <laughs> Do not. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Do not, do not, do not. <laughs> yeah, that's also a good point, Haim. It is very <laughs> funny that Steve Purcell is literally like, are they gay? Only as, as gay as this other pair of fictional characters that have giant essays devoted to how they're definitely a gay romantic relationship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Fair enough. Hey, good luck at work, Hazardous Haribo. Have a good day, Hazardous Haribo. No, 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 no. I'm pointing, I'm pointing. <laughs> Uh, so I definitely run with Sam and Max being, like, old-time married, and I'm big fond of the fact that they knew each other as kids. And in the Telltale series specifically, uh, for a couple of reasons, the idea that I have is that Sam probably grew up very close to the street that they wind up, uh, having their office on. Oh. Uh, there's a couple of- there's a flashback in later seasons that, like, literally places them on that street as little kids. And for reasons that are kind of spoilers, kind of, it makes the most sense for Sam to be who lives in the actual area. Mm -hmm. uh, Semi-consistently, they're often portrayed as having a house that's in a different area than their office is. Uh, and the idea that I came up with that I just like is that it's actually like Max inherited the house from someone on his side of the family because he has a giant family and like his grand uncle retired to Miami <laughs> or like had to leave to somewhere that doesn't have extradition treaties with the US. <laughs> that sounds like Max's family, right? Right. <laughs> now listen, Sam, we can move in. All we have to do is never look in the basement. <laughs> and they just like concreted up the basement. The broiler, st the boiler's still down there. They don't worry about it though. God. Uh, and basically, like, they definitely grew up together, but like I was joking around with on Twitter the other day, uh, not even really joking. The vibe that I always get from them is that they've been dating since they were in high school, more or less, but they never said it was dating or, like, the L word until they were, like, in their late 20s. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm definitely not just saying that because I'm a gay who thinks that childhood friends to uncertain relationship status to obviously married forever is just really good and cool and I'd like to see that and I'd like to see it with gay characters more. I'd like to see it. Yeah, confirm. That's the thing, is that it does allow for the long-term relationship, but also the pining. You can't see it, but I'm making little, like, rub your fingers and thumbs together gesture when I say pining. <laughs> it doesn't do anything for y'all. This is not a visual medium. <laughs> I mean, it is a visual medium, but not on me. Oh, but thank yeah, you, Yeah, exactly, Black actually, Nanya. For the 69 bits. I don't think I thank you when you donate that. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, and actually, Nanya, exactly. I'm sad and gay and like to hurt sometimes. Uh, exactly. <laughs> pining cash money. Honestly, though, that is the cash money. Uh, I also mentioned on Twitter, but I was literally, like, thinking about the song, uh, Do You Love Me from Fiddler on the Roof. Yes. Because that's shit. that's where I'm at sometimes. Frankie showed me that. And uh, like, zero. <gasps> yeah, yeah. Zero Mostel, baby. Fucking cannot be beat. Still the best. He had the best Muppet show. He does the best musicals. What are you gonna do? But it's like we. It's literally like if you haven't seen this song, uh, it's good. You should watch it. It's very tender. We can't play it's it on literally stream like Mr. Bezos will break our necks from orbit, Oh God. But... Oh, he'll break into this stream. Like, through my window. Yeah. But it's literally, like, 
an older couple uh, who at this point in the, the movie have been struggling with their daughters wanting to marry for love and the subject of love coming up and the husband just like kind of asking his wife do you I'm love with you buddy me hey hey thank you for the raid goof cat and thank you for the <laughs> and thank you for the subscription thank you so much y'all <laughs> I hope y'all are here for like talking about yearning do y'all like to yearn oh you like gaming I like to that's yearn. good we do like gaming. Technically, this is talking about gaming. In a way. Uh, they have many video games together. <laughs> <laughs> I think some of you saying gaming were in this chat to start with. <laughs> Goof Cat, thank you for the follow. But thank I think you for the it's very cute. Hey, thank you so much for the follow, Goof Cat. Good to have you. Let's see. Yearning and gaming. Who could ask for more? You're right, Dex Aster. You're right. I'm getting good reference of a crossbow. Give me a moment. Oh, perfect. Totally understandable. Theme of crossbow. Uh, by the way, interesting to note, through all of canon, Max never wore clothing, but Sam always has. Make of that what you will. I don't make anything of it because it's literally just what Steve's little brother drew one day and now we all have to live with it. It's true. Huh. I totally mistook this one for a Bayonetta jam. Nope, this is Sonic Adventure. This Sonic. Is theme of uh, Zeta, I think. Honest to God, I think you could still make a pretty good game out of is this song from Bayonetta, Sonic, or Billy Hatcher. <laughs> You would win that, but it would be fun. It would be fun. <laughs> yeah, generic flower, you totally, you've, you've got it. Childhood friends, to pals who are not dating, to kind of dating, to dating. Good time, it's good time. The cartoon was very into putting clothes on Max, and it was always a little weird. It felt like seeing him naked for some reason, even though he's very close. It does. I think it was, and it was almost like a Bugs Bunny thing because there is literally an episode of the cartoon where, like, they just slap a wig and a dress on Max and have them pretend to be dating. Mm. So, you know, very straight, very straight. Very straight. Definitely not like a romance trope <laughs> I could pull up for almost any fandom as we speak. I feel like if you have to put clothes on Max, he probably wiggles a lot. Hey, like trying buddy. to get a sweater it on a like dog. This hotel's had a mix-up, and there's only one bed in our room. <laughs> All right, Sam. I hate to do this, but get in the bathtub before I bite your jungular. <laughs> oh. oh, you gotta look at how nine thousand drew. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, no. Please post that in the in the Discord. <laughs> Wait, I want to show this a little more on stream. Eek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There we go. This is literally just like how I was during this scene. <gasps> There's something really powerful about seeing a soda popper drawn like a tiny, like the tiny middle-aged men that they are. Yes, thank you. Uh, and also wonderful. about the, the model of Blizzard <laughs> with the green covered face oh, is like yeah. this. Yes. Oh, we don't have a command for the Discord link. Just scroll down a little bit and it's below our Twitter handles. Yeah, it should be under about. We should set up a bot for that. That actually would be very helpful. That would helpful. be a good idea now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> we'll figure that out one of these like, days. People keep trying to command it, so I think we should put something actually in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should. We'll get that figured out. Thank you, though. Yeah, uh, sorry about that. God. Si Side note, since we are talking about Sam and Max, this is technically relevant. Me and Bugs hashed it out, and we decided that Peepers is objectively the worst soda popper. Mm -hmm. Wizards up And there, I can show not... my math a little bit. Oh, Queen Lily drew them too. Yeah, uh... Oh. oh! Let me see, let me see. How cute! Look at that! Oh, I love that! Oh, it's actual Irish wolfhound Sam! I like that! You made it work! That's very cute. Thank you. Uh, oh, as an aside, I do think that Sam uh, has a tail. I just think he tucks it 
because otherwise it would get hurt when he sits down. I I think that actually just makes sense as an answer, and I'm very proud of myself. Yes, I think that about makes sense. About something that nobody needed to worry about, but I did. <laughs> but that's super cute, Lily. I love it. Thank you. Uh, so the Soda Poppers ranking is... Uh, Specs is the best, despite his on-camera incident. Because to be fair, he did get called on to a talk show because a dog and a rabbit claimed that they fucked him on the moon. <laughs> so maybe it's understandable that he got a little cussy in response. We did claim that he was dressed up like an alien. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> and yes, also, Sam's tail would go nuts all the time if he didn't have it tucked. So secretly, it's so that he doesn't, like, ruin his poker face. Yeah, Spex is the best one. Spex very obviously doesn't want to be here, and he, like, objectively was trying to go and just get into politics and get away from his brothers, and they, like, followed him, which is a fucking nightmare. Mm-hmm. Specs is the least evil. He's not good. He's just the least evil. Uh, Wizard, despite how much I personally hate him, is second because I think he should just be in a hospital. <laughs> like, he's not great, but he doesn't seem to be like the person coming up with these plans. Mm -hmm. And I genuinely think he just like needs to be like under medical supervision yeah desperately uh he's he's not at fault for his problems uh i think peepers is evil because peepers is the one of the three that objectively clearly wants the attention still uh and i have decided that since specs doesn't seem to I don't think Specs wants to be wearing the soda poppers outfit. Uh -huh. So my theory is that Peepers made his brothers sign a contract that if they're ever seen with him in public, they have to all be in the outfits. God. <laughs> he like made them sign it when they were all like 12. And they kind of assumed that he would let them out of that contract eventually. And he did. But they didn't. He didn't. Uh, Peepers clearly is still seeking stardom, and he is explicitly dragging his brothers along with him, and I think he's basically the worst of them, and perhaps the seed of the soda poppers evil to begin with. So that's my brother, my brother, me. <laughs> God! Yes, I... And me! Hurt. You're... 30 under 30, media luminary, wizard! Fuck. Okay, I'm yes. just gonna go let myself Specs out. Is Justin, isn't he? <laughs> By the way, I didn't know I could do a wizard voice. Great, great. Thank you, chat. Love this. It's never. <laughs> it's never Thank happening you, again. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's never not. happening again. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, okay. I'm sealing it. Uh -huh. I'm sealing it with the uh -huh. dark power. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh. Oh, man. Two years of tea leaves your voice with some interesting levels. <laughs> no! No! God damn it! <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> I brought this on myself! You did. Isn't that fun? <laughs> <laughs> and now we have wasps, damn it. Uh, Leon. <sighs> How rude of you. How mean of you. <sighs> <laughs> now we have three wasps. We have we have released eight total we have released nine total wasps tonight. How rude. Ten. Cruel. <laughs> Oh, Leaf Twig, that makes me super happy to hear. Honestly, getting people into Sam and Max does make me incredibly happy. Yes, same. Th thank you. Thank you, Claudito. Thank you, Crash Dash. <laughs> I'm just so watching nice. the wasps, like, stream. The chat monster is just, like, slapping the button furiously. 
the release wasp button. That's a big, right, big, bright red button with absolutely no kind of cover or guard over it. You cannot uninstall it. <laughs> hold on, hold on, let me try real quick. Mm. Mm. Yeah? Hold on, hold on, I'm trying. Okay, try harder. On a recognized command! Oh. Nuts. What? Gosh dang it! <laughs> I think I made the problem worse. No! <laughs> That's 15 total. Yes, it's a big red button, but we put a piece of paper next to it that says, Don't do this. So please don't do this, okay? Thank you. <laughs> oh no, you released your, your points that you were saving. Hubris. <laughs> Hubris of the wasp. Tricked. The temptation of the wasp. Tricked. Fallen for trap of trick. Is this a normal month of wasps for an average Friday? I gotta be honest, the, the average has been going up. As far as our Twitch metrics goes, wasp has been raising steadily. Mm. Yes, the wasp numbers are up. It's It, it looks like a good season for the wasp market. <laughs> I, I would say sell now. Bear market on wasps. Yeah. Bug market on wasps. <laughs> The demerits of being part of the chat hive mind release wasp. Ah. Uh, side note, I also think that Sam keeps his tail tucked away uh, because otherwise Max will grab it. Yeah, he'll just yank on it. He can't Wait, help it. I just realized. Huh. His way. Okay, his tail wags a lot when he's happy, right? Yeah. Where exactly is Max's face if he's standing next to Sam? Oh, it's the the Max hitting machine. <laughs> It's the Max hitting machine. He tucks his tail because otherwise it'll just slap Max in the face <laughs> all day. <laughs> wow, that's true love. I don't make a lot of requests about what you're going to draw, but... <laughs> yes, give me one sec to finish this crowbar and this will be yours. Absolutely, absolutely. God. It's the Bapperinator. <laughs> I think, yeah, that's the thing is, if anyone who's had a dog has had their dog, like, find a way to slap you in the face with their tail before. Oh, God. <laughs> Bogby and Friends says, also, I've only known about Sam and Max for this stream, but I would commit crimes for them. You will. Good. Do a crime. Do it. Okay. Thank oh. you. Knocked over by a Great Dane wagging her tail as a oh. kid, god. That, yeah. <laughs> uh, side note, I also think that Sam used to have dew claws, but they had to get removed. He had, like, too many injuries happening. Sad, really, but you know when you're a little kid, it's like getting your tonsils out, really. Mm. Don't think too hard about it. I thought too hard about it. Don't be like me. <laughs> Cats will slap you in the face with a tail sometimes. Uh, by the way, you know what I think about sometimes with Sam and Max? Huh. I think until Telltale, there weren't really many other types of furries besides dog or legomorph. There were other talking animals, <laughs> but they're all mostly realistic. Like, the rats are realistic rats that live in rat holes that talk and get mail. I don't have anywhere I'm going with this, it's just interesting and kind of weirds me out, because every now and then I try to imagine what that would even look like. Uh, also, we have mole people now, but they're literally just moles. Hmm. Max has too many toe beans, and I try not to think about it. And cool. Romantic modern hero. Romantic modern hero. They need a hero, somebody who is just like me. Anyways, <laughs> this is literally my favorite Lupin song. It shouldn't be my favorite Lupin song because it's the nerdiest song in the world. I'm a superhero. I'm a superhero. I'm a superhero. Leader of today. Yeah. 
It's a good song. It's literally just the hero of today. It's even dumber. It's I'm a superhero. I'm a superhero. I'm a superhero. The hero for today. God. So God. I love so you, sexy. Lupin. Y'all are going to be in trouble once we finally get to sit down with the movie, by the way. It is uh, a fucking disaster of a song. I love it so much. Listen it to is. This it's track. the dumbest. It's not a hero. This should not be a hero's theme. It's not. This shouldn't be the theme of like, the main character. Yeah, this is like a villain's <clears throat> theme. It's great. Why am I yeah, this is like the dude that Batman fights has this as their theme song. Side note, call me DC. I'll figure it out. Trust me. Yeah, exactly. It is the lyrics that Writes Putin itself. Would, make, would make up running around. <laughs> What's even funnier is that once or twice it's been portrayed as a song on the radio inside a Lupin episode, which is even funnier because that makes it sound like it's a dumb pop song that Lupin just really likes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pippin, Gremlin! Oh, Pippin. Gremlin, baby. Ah. Uh, side note. Lupin the Third and Sam and Max are very much similar series in a weird way, mm. which sounds bananas to say out loud, but also Lupin the Third has had an episode that began with the Bermuda Triangle getting kidnapped by a ghost ship, and then the end of the episode, they summoned a UFO. Oh, yeah. I'm... And also in another episode, ep another episode, Goemon fought a dragon. Do you remember the episode where they that wasn't stole the, point the uh, Statue of Christ, and then at the end, the Statue of Christ started talking yes. to them? Yes! I tried to suppress that from my memory, but I hadn't. Uh, also, do you remember how in the episode where Goemon fights a dragon, that's not the plot of the episode. No. The plot of the episode is a fairy tale princess, like, duping all three of the dudes into helping her. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that episode? And so in this... <laughs> hmm, do which episode? The episode where uh, the chick turned into a crystal rainbow when she died after Lupin. Yes, and it was actually incredibly tragic. Yeah. And like one of those really sad episodes where Lupin falls in love. Yeah. Uh, which is weird because he also had an episode where he fell in love with a girl who turned into a field of flowers by the end of the episode. Bit of a reoccurring theme. What do you got there, Hal 9000? Mog. What did it do? <laughs> Fuck. That's very good, actually. Mog. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the Mog Champ. <laughs> Thank you for the Mog Champ. Oh, that's a lovely. Uh. Hey, remember how there was also that one episode of Lupin the Third where it started with Fug Fujiko being turned into a giantess, but then it turned out that was actually just a cover for a woman who likes to turn people into wax statues, who appeared to be psychic, but actually it was just the ghost child that was psychic. Oh yeah, and then the wax statues were like alive actually, and they were like dipped celebrities. Yeah, 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 so she was going to turn everyone else into wax. Yeah, yeah, I remember that one. Or wax, it was unclear actually. Do you remember the so long story sh but <laughs> Go ahead. You remember the torture no, no, episode one more, one more. That, that centered around yeah. everyone being slowly tortured and but the side plot and was there's Lupin no playing with a blow up doll? Oh yeah, no, there is Lupin playing with a blow up doll in a bathtub. Yeah. So long story short, even though Lupin the Third is often like looks like a very serious series and has like a beautiful movie made by Miyazaki, that was his first ever movie. That's genuinely very sweet and almost like a cute, like Robin Hood kind of fairy tale thing. The tone is remarkably similar to Sam and Max in some ways. Mm -hmm. Lupin is a serious series. It's just also like this. And I actually personally love that. I have a personal adoration of media where the tone shifts so wildly that it gives you whiplash almost. Like, I want to see a super goofy, goof em up music scene and go BAM! The tragedy, like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Lupin is that exactly. And Sam and Max, weirdly enough, kind of is too. Um, it's worth noting that in the comics, which you should read if you ever have a chance to, I wish, again, I desperately wish there was some place I could point you to online. Mm -hmm. uh, Lupin is unapologetically fun, is true. Except for sometimes people decide he should be edgy. Yeah. Less said about that, the better. Um, Sam Max has 
a part of the comic where I think it's after they go to the moon, right? Where Max just straight up dies. Yep. Uh, and they have a whole moment of showing Sam realizing he died and like like there's literally like a panel of him turning like little buddy that kills me and then immediately after that Max's spirit starts to possess Sam's hand yeah and talks through it like a hand puppet yeah uh, normal and I think he literally puts it into a little like paper bag hand puppet or does he just put Max's ears on top of the hand? Uh, he just puts Max's actual ears on top of his hand and then he talks through right. his hand. Yes, and then they talk to the giant cockroach people of the moon, I believe. Yes. After they busted the bank heist with all the cockroaches dressed like animals. Hey! Right, thank right. Hey, hey, thanks for subscribing. Hey, Real lesbian. cool. Thanks for the amazing <laughs> streams, Frankie and Bugs. Oh. Genuinely, thank you all for being here. <laughs> oh, what do you got there, Mega Flygon? I saw that. I saw that Mega Flygon. Look at that. Let me see. Let me see. Hot diggity dog. That's adorable. Thank you. Oh, oh, that's so cute. That's wonderful. How lovely. That is wonderful. The babies. Uh, and Phantom Hop, the paper Max puppet is actually just from the comics, where they did a cute little, like, Hey, kids, here's a craft you can do with Sam and Max to make your own Max puppet. I think that's what I was getting mixed up with. But in it the Telltale games... So. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Uh, <clears throat> in the, uh, in the office in their... in the games, mm -hmm. there's a photo on the wall that is them on the moon from that comic book yeah. episode. In fact, the uh, Max so Hand Puppet is actually in the game. That's right! It's on the board. Yeah. Yeah, this stream is also a piece of media where the tone shifts wildly. You're damn correct, Clued the Destroy! <laughs> <laughs> Can't be stopped, won't be stopped. It's true. Uh... Which, I honestly love that about Sam and Max. I don't think it would have its hooks in me quite so bad if it didn't get, like, oddly emotionally sincere out of nowhere for just a little bit. It's yeah. never that long. Yeah. But there's enough to write a Hurt Comfort fanfic off of. Oh, is there ever. Hot damn, man. I tell ya. <laughs> yeah, every now and then me and Bugs do do the evil laugh at the same time. Because that's just what we do sometimes. Uh, I, which, by the way, I'm still very charmed that in the Telltale series, in episode one, Max being gone becomes like the sole fixation of Sam for the duration that that's true. Like, he's not even like apart from Max without knowing where Max is. He's just like in Bosco's and knows that Max is back with. To be fair, a wannabe cult leader. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's see, Leaf Twig, your first. We got a first Max here. Oh, hang on. Yay! Oh, that's lovely. That's cute. Oh, that's a very nice looper too. Great work. I love the floppy yeah. ears. Oh, let me shrink that a little so you can see the floppy ears. Yeah. So and cute. honestly, that is one of the charms. Thank you. One of the charms of the series is that Sam and Max are very fun to doodle. It's true. Maybe I'll do this as a soft play. Yeah, that's a little better. Yeah. There we go. Doesn't mess up the, uh... The problem with doing multiply layers is every so often they smudge up the, uh... How much you can actually make out of the art. That's true. It's a little bit like Vaseline on the lens. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Max has the wonder Max does have a very wonderful design, but it does always crack me up because he's got like he's weird comparison, but much like a lot of Coomer designs, the tuniness belays it being like weirdly to get some proportions right. Mm, I feel you. Mostly where Max's ears and where his eyes are uh, catch me off guard sometimes when I try to doodle him. Kumar's hard to draw, man. 
It's hard to draw. You know what it is? It's... Whoa! Hmm. Hey! Draw with Scotty! Thanks hey, for the th follow! Thanks for the follow! It's... It's... Trying to convey, uh... Both the softness and sweetness of Coomer. Uh... Yeah. Versus the reality of the Half-Life model. Hey. I struggle with that with Tommy a lot. Before I started ruffling I his feel hair. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, the ruffle makes it work out really well. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with HDL VRAI, you will be forced to learn how to draw a mustache and helmet and fucking hev suit. Uh. Something I find very funny is how often, like, different kinds of, uh, what, what you're into can drive what you have to learn how to draw. Mm -hmm. Sam and, Sam and Max's Hats and Guns Part 1. Yeah, basically. Like, Sam's hat in particular is a goofy style hat. Uh-huh. But with a wide brim. And then puffed out things right. to mimic a fedora. So you have to learn, With an, like, hats are all discs, and the bri and then things building out. But the discs. brim of, of, and the brim of Sam's hat particularly is often stylized in some pictures that it kind of looks like a rectangle. Yeah, exactly. You have to do it's, the like rectangle. It's a. Up. To once again invoke uh, Lupin the Third. This is also a problem you get with Lupin the Third, because mm -hmm. uh, there's two characters in Lupin the Third who almost always wear hats. One of them to the point of that being like half of his design hallmarks. <clears throat> and yeah, honestly, I do love the uh, the Half Life models are kind of abstracted, so you get to see how people adapt them to slightly different designs. It's, I always think that's cool. It's so fun, because the way that the textures wrap on those models is so, like, crunchy, that you can just, like, stare mm -hmm. at it, and, like, every different artist is going to interpret things in different ways, you know? And even from there, it's like, yeah. okay, well, what if they, like, most of these characters weren't white, you know? It's... Yeah, or like, well, obviously all the models are the exact same size, more or less, mm -hmm. because that's, like, how they did it. Mm -hmm. So well, there's no reason not to decide that they might have, like, very different body types from each other. Yeah, exactly. Uh, outside of, like, the few very, like, small, like, uh, having Coomer be kind of short and stout, which I really think is cute. I do, too. I do like seeing very soft bendries, but I do also kind of... I like that there's <clears throat> also people who do the big crunchy bendry. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. It's a spectrum. The, the hev suit is uh, tough. I actually drew for Cosmic Eternity. I broke down... Um, someone on Tumblr was kind enough to post turnaround models of all the uh, Half-Life characters with the Half-Life model viewer, which I actually have on hand because I like to use it, but... Um, I, I broke down like the different parts of the HEV suit, and it's it's fun. It's fun once you. Yeah. Learn. Hey, love Maestro. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. What is this? Uh, Sam is also just fun because he's a very weird shape to have exist in 3D, but mm. Telltale actually did a really good job. Which, by the way, is one of the things that the remaster actually shifted the most that I did not clock at all on a glance is Max and Sam's, uh, like, models are very different. Oh, yeah, aren't they? They, they shifted a lot around, like, even down to, like, a little bit of their height where Max's ears are, uh, some of the eye proportion. Sam's, uh, Sam's tie, especially. Actually, you know what, I think, I know for the press release, they had something in their press kit about how Sam was restyling. Yeah, they had like a side, they had a side-by-side -side kind of thing, right? Yeah, one sec. There was actually something that was on Purcell's uh, art blog for the longest damn time, I think it's gone now, that was him drawing over the models that Telltale sent him, like, no, no, no. Yeah! Max's eyes should God be bless, I actually... I, I really appreciate it because I am also someone who draws characters by kind of making like a quick set of weird like proportional guidelines in my head. Mm -hmm. 
so it's I, I like that he's very particular. Here we go. Beep boop. Check it out. So as you can see, like Let's the see. eye size, the eye proportion is quirked, the mouth yeah, proportion look at is that. quirked a little. Oh, he's pudgier too. They took away his shoulders. Wow. They gave him back his belly button. Oh yeah. Yes, the stylized belly okay. button is cute. Yeah, I really do like how you can see, like, the first pass on that feels more like how you would expect Max to look. Yeah, I... But then it's like, no, his hands are... His hands have got to be a little bit bigger. His toes aren't that defined. Mm -hmm. uh, the eyes are way wider apart than you expect them to be. Yeah, and it's always the ears are positioned above the eyes. There's always five teeth mm -hmm. on top. And I think it's like one, mm -hmm. one two, three, four, five, six on the bottom. And in the remaster, it really is mostly like the torso got cleaned up a little bit. I love that he's got like a shorter, pudgier body with yeah. these long, weird legs. It's interesting stuff, right? It's not quite where you would expect. He's not actually like as generic, cute animal proportioned as he could be. And I kind of like that distinctness. Uh, is there one of those for Sam by any chance? No, but good night, Katie KBC. Dang it. Hey, good night, KDBC. Yeah, the Telltale Sam and Max games are honestly very good, if outdated, mm. and adventure games, so sometimes the puzzles are bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's just true of any adventure game. Oh, right, I was and I'm okay that. with it. Uh, and it's worth noting that we're not gonna- we're probably not gonna play the second season until it's also been remastered. Uh... So, it'll be a little bit of a wait in between. Mm -hmm. But I think that's kind of good. I like that we're gonna get to space it out a little bit. Yeah, I do too. Uh... Get some time off from... No, the soda poppers are dead. I have to keep reminding myself that. <laughs> we, we killed them in the Dakota Wars. It's true. They've been assassinated. Have you seen... J joke parody about fictional characters. Joke parody about fictional characters. Have you seen the, uh, the uh, bloopers reel for season two where the chair turns around and it's Homestar Runner? Yeah! <laughs> no, there's like some of the bloopers live in my mind. There's... This is very obscure, but they do... Oh, we should watch the, the fake bloopers for season one if we can find them. Oh, they cute. do, vo they animated, uh, for every season, they animated the characters to some, like, voice actor takeout lines. It's very cute. And Moy Better Blues oh, is I've... painful. I'm not looking oh, forward to Snails... it. Snail says, speaking of adventure games with bad puzzles, who here has played the Chizo Mythos games? Uh, that's a phrase that not many people will recognize. I met my girlfriend through the Chizo Mythos games, and one day... I will fight Yahtzee about the salty teddy bear dowsing rod, and he will know that I'm correct to do it! He himself will know! <sighs> Mental. <laughs> yeah, music-wise, we have a bit of a tone shift. We do! <laughs> Devil's Playhouse Remastered is gonna be amazing. Oh my god, Because as it is, right? like... The third season is also known as the Devil's Playhouse, uh, or the Devil's Toy Box, mm -hmm. uh, for reasons. for reasons. And it was already a massive improvement in lighting and modeling. Uh, I'm so excited to show y'all. <laughs> King's Quest? They made that many, huh? I've never played King's Quest. I've never played a King's Quest. I, I feel like I know them through Homestar Runner's Peasant Quest, if that makes sense. <laughs> Which I know is literally a parody of the genre, I but... know them from stealing all that money from the Homestar uh, stuck Kickstarter. Oh, fuck. That's right. Christ. <laughs> that was a fucking debacle. That was one of those... That was a weird one, because that was, like, not the answer anyone was expecting for what went wrong there. Yeah. I, like I see this as a person movies. what got got. Yeah. I also, like many people, I between the <laughs> Kickstarter and the game coming out, I kind of cooled it on Homestuck, so. Yeah. Say lovey. Yeah, same. Definitely not just salty because my favorite character got killed. 
in like a super abrupt, really terrible way. It was one of the things where it's like, I remember when I was reading Problem Sleuth, like beginning to end, I was like, this fucks, this rules, I can't wait for this to update. Somewhere yeah. with Homestuck, I just started getting fucking exhausted. <laughs> it, it was a lot. Not to do a fucking, like, <clears throat> fandom post-mortem, but, uh... Tumblr was a vicious ecosystem for something like that. <laughs> oh, two wasps. We shall wasps. never see its way again. Oh, wasps! Two wasps! Goodness. And ooh. Oh, fuck yes. Now we got some jams on. Monkey Island, huh? I do know there's an <clears throat> owl who yells at you, so I, I know that. It's true. You know, I haven't played Monkey uh, Island either. I'm a bad Telltale fan. Homestuck's in middle school. I was in college! Well, I was in high school. <laughs> Hang on. That's true. That's. I think I was like late high school to beginning college. Good lord. I. You all know I'm 29. Come on. Let's see. Oops. I'm a millennial. Millennials are this old. I am. I'm literally the last year of a millennial, and my dad is the last year of a boomer. God, that's very funny. <laughs> I'm old. That's why I'm an uncle. I'm I'm not a fandom anything. I'm just platonically uncle like. It's true. Okay, Frankie. I've done. Indeed. I've done your deed for you. I'm so happy. <laughs> Max just two seconds away from trying to tuck that into Sam's belt loops. It's true. I'm. I'm literally an uncle IRL. I feel I should mention that really fast. That's not me saying to use that as a nickname. I have a niece and a nephew. My sister is eight years older than me. <laughs> <laughs> They're both very, very cute. My niece, is, my niece has gotten obsessed with the Muppets and really likes my Aloha print shirt. So I've done everything correctly. Me jiggling my knee while moving over. This isn't doing much for me. <laughs> All right, do we want to hit a tiny break and then go over to commission work? Yeah, let's do that real quick. Okay, I'm gonna move us over the sweat setup screen. I'm gonna heat up some tea real quick. The bugs is gonna get up for a moment. Be right back. Goodbye. See you in a bit. I'm gonna stay here though. Uh, yeah, one day I could actually be a grunkle, which definitely pleases me. Ah, just think of it. One day I'm gonna get to kick back and call somebody something embarrassing. It's not actually that great of a Grunkle Stan impression, unless I can warm up for a little while. Generally a good old man-ish voice, though. Oh, what do you got there? <laughs> egg! I appreciate Egg. Uh, it's egg time in chat. Le egg. Un egg. Oh, a uh, link was just shared in chat a moment ago uh, from Fandom Hop. You can scroll up a second to find it. Mostly now chat is just egg, I think. Egg time. What will egg do? Huh. I want to make another pixel piece sometime soon. I want to do the chat creature because I was thinking about what it must look like if a chat beast gets very big and stands up. So I think I'm going to do a pixel piece of that because I think it would look interesting. Just like a really weird Pokemon. <clears throat> I should make deviled eggs again sometime. They're weirdly hard to get to work. Uh, the chat creature is a reoccurring way that I have been drawing... Uh, an abstraction of the chat that is kind of a big furry pile. Uh, I haven't posted a new one on Twitter for a bit, but let me upload one of those so I can link it in chat real quickly. What's going on? Audibly stalling for time. Oh, uh, someone asked what the chat creature I was mentioning was, ah. so I'm quickly putting one in Discord so I can link to. My PC Copy up, link. So 
Oh, I should go get the one that I drew for the Discord too. I think it's in the podium. Mm -hmm. Side note: Did you know? Did you? Did you all know that we have a Discord, which is where you can find out about our streams ahead of time? Mm -hmm. It is the fastest way to know we're probably going to stream later in the day. And there's also a fan art channel as well as a pets channel, and you can suggest games. And that's about it because we're very tired and we don't have the gumption to moderate something that has an actively talking area. And we would want to pay moderators exactly. to mod for us. Exactly. Sorry, I was eating. But a it's nutty. still a good place, and you should go there. I was eating a nutty buddy. Sorry. <laughs> I could go for a nutty buddy. Toss me one. Okay, here it comes. Did you get it? <laughs> okay, I got it. I got it. Good. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the chat that I drew to celebrate getting uh, 70 people in the chat. So I tried to draw one. There are literally 70 pairs of eyes on that chat creature. Because, God damn. I don't know. Good job. You ever just watch a Mystery Science Theater 3000 and you just kind of keep going for a bit? Hey, good night, Mega Flygon. Sweet dreams, okay? Good night, Mega Flygon. <laughs> good night, Hal. Go, go charge your tablet, Hal 9000. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we watch a lot of Mystery Science oh Theater, y'all. Yeah. I could literally, yeah. we could literally do like a focus stream segment just on that. Uh, Mystery Science Theater might have been Baby's first introduction into a series where you shouldn't worry about the canon or the continuity, because in theory there's no canon or continuity, but I pay attention to the canon and continuity. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was very little, my grandpa, who I lived just up the hill from, uh, had a tape copy of Mystery Science Theater the movie that I would borrow a lot and watch. And then when I was like a little baby teenager, I started being able to rent uh, DVD copies from like the local library mostly. I think once or twice when I was house sitting for my older sister, I could rent them from a fucking DVD rental place, which gives you a very deep picture of growing up in the 90s slash aughts in the middle of nowhere. Oh yes, it is Goomby time, by the way. It is Goomby time. This is a client commission for a sketch page that I'm working on. I'm also doing a... Which we will probably... Huh? Go ahead. Oh. Go, go, go. I'm also doing a uh, sketch page of some Marvel characters for this client, uh, which should be fun. That one's going to be traditional because one of the characters will be heavily inked. Indeed. Uh, and I'm so glad, Bubbly Milk. Hand to God, I've been making snowmen in Animal Crossing since I was 10. And on the GameCube version, you didn't get to kick it a nice little short distance. It careened the fuck into the horizon sure at God's mercy, <laughs> rolling out of your little loaded acre to inevitably fall into the river. Sure it was a nightmare. Did. And uh, it was very funny because I saw someone on Twitter complaining about the new snowmen because they're like, I remember how you didn't used to have to make them perfect, you just made a little snowman family. I'm like, no. You had to make a little snowman family and also proportion it perfectly. Mm -hmm. So there's three distinct shapes and sizes. Bad. Bad. I remember I kept accidentally Caref making the snow mama and I'd get so frustrated. <laughs> uh, honest to God tips for making a snowman at Animal Crossing. Walk towards it, you'll kick it automatically. Try to aim for an area where there's nothing that you could knock it into. Rolling it through flowers is fine. Rolling it through weeds is fine. Rolling it over a pathway will shrink the snowball, which can let you correct if you make the head too big. The head should be a little bit smaller than the body. Not by much, but like distinctly visually smaller. Here, hang on. I'm, uh, I'm making you a chat or a chart chat. Uh, generally speaking, I find it's easiest to build up size in an area that's fairly clear and then move it someplace if you want to have it be in a specific area. But uh, also, I've destroyed two snowmen, and every time it's like that specific sensation. <laughs> Of serenity, but also salt. Do you understand? Oh, that's the chart for- yeah, that's why it's Goomby. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I did not pick the name, but it's now like- you know. It was so funny, I had to adopt it. 
<clears throat> and also one. Oh, that's great, Minerva. <laughs> It's just a funny Twitter joke. I like it, though. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna retweet that. Okay. Yeah, I, I do like old men in love. <laughs> we both are passionate about Something old about men it. Love. It's very sweet. You know, you can it's find true. love in any age. And also, like, being younger gay people seeing older gay people and stuff is just nice yes. even if it's fictional and it's a good time yes. and also sometimes older dudes are hot don't worry about it and also sometimes if you make the older dudes trans you're like haha gay and trans and old and happy <laughs> <laughs> that could be me that, that could, could be, be me, me. Uh, G-Man canonically does shit for the drama because he's a messy bitch and that's true in every continuity it's true I'm gonna leave this but, like, one in for he's... the client. <laughs> I feel like they'll like that. I feel like they did ask for... And also now they'll have a visual to, like, tap if anyone asks about it. Yeah. Uh, oh, side note, I actually made some pretty good process on chapter two of Cold <gasps> Cold Man. Yeah. I think I literally wrote all the way up to, like, where I kind of left off last time. It's finally been edited back into shape because of course I have to write from the perspective Fuck of yes. somebody who doesn't experience linear time. So there's literally a short sequence where uh, he hears the phone ringing and he starts to loop it because it would be rude to leave the phone ringing too long. <laughs> so it's just ringing for the first time over and over again while he's collecting himself oh, that's more or cute. less. I like that. He, he's shy. <laughs> 2020 is saved. Cold, cold man will update. I'm still very delighted at how much love it got. I'll be honest. <laughs> it's a good story. You did good. You're a good writer. People One are excited tries. about it. I try. You're good. I do, I do good. You are so talented and cool, my friend Frankie, who is in, going to be in the Blaseball musical coming December 26th. That is true, that is true. I don't have any songs. It's a short part, it's a small part, but it's a wonderful thing, and if star. you like baseball, you'll love it a lot. I'm not the star, I'm the He's interviewer. The star. I'm interviewing the star, or my character is. <laughs> this slash that reporter. Uh, which is a very odd voice to drop into, because it's basically just me doing a rough impression of baseball commentators, but I think I'm also at some point wandering towards George Nori. Just a little bit. He is the star. Bugs is the hype bug. We are both each other's hype people. It's true. He's the one because who makes Bugs me actually tag wait, uh, radio TV solutions people when I draw them. It's true. <laughs> I have bullied Bugs into doing this. It's true. I, I, Over I time. will. I just drop it because I'm too shy. I, I literally come to him and I'm like, does this seem like it's a little like too much to post in the, the fan art channel? And he's like, no. What are you talking about? I'm like, I don't know. I mean... The fan art channel? Where the fan art where well, Wayne listen, goes? Where I, Wayne's fan art goes? Listen, I just think that, you know... For your fan art of listen, Wayne? I don't want to book it with my fan art. <laughs> In his fan art channel he made for his fan art. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, in case you ever wondered if, like, other people have these problems. Yes, we do. We sure do. Short answer, yes. You know, I talk a big game, but also, like, I'm the person who gets to just scuttle around making the jokes on the <laughs> sidelines. Frankie is firm, but nice do not to look me. at me That's directly. Exactly it. I try. I do try. That's, that's about where I'm at, which, uh, Funny story, that's actually why my name is very specifically friendly. It's friendly, not nice. Which is a weird distinction to make. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you gotta do the not nice things, like set boundaries or bully your friends into being nicer to themselves. Yep, it's true. Ironically. <sighs> oh yeah, MST3K... I gotta be honest, I do think MST3K gave our generation a thing for, like, that domestic villain vibe. Oh, man. TV's Frank and Forrester. I tell ya. Oh, well, thank you. I love for the ages. Hey, thank you. I, I just scribbled that on top of a friend's cap. 
Or not on top God. of, but I was looking at a friend's cat from it. I think it was six girls. I mean, an acquaintance's <laughs> cat, but you know. Friendly, not nice is like a bald five. You're not wrong. <laughs> Uncle vibe so strong. Listen! <laughs> Being nice is lovely. But to real talk to a very goofy song for just a second, I was raised, like, as a girl. And you get pressured to be nice constantly. And what it often means is never make anyone else uncomfortable, often to your own detriment. Yep. And so when I started, like, transitioning and figuring myself out in early college, I kind of came to realize that I felt like it was bullshit because people could be nice and it would destroy my day. Yeah. Because you can be nice in ways that like really hurt people. Like, say, being in like an art feedback in class and being like, yeah, that looks great, and then having nothing else to say about it. That's technically nice, but it's terrible. Mm. Uh, so I kind of decided back then that like I wanted to be someone who is friendly and who's approachable and you can talk to but not necessarily be beholden to being nice yeah that doesn't mean be an asshole it just means don't value other people's comfort over your own in a certain way yeah Frank, uh, I've been learning which this a lot is... about that from Frankie to be honest it's I, I've been told by friends that I'm good at at having boundaries, yeah. which is an odd thing to be complimented for, but does seem very valuable. Uh, which I also very much like have to credit my parents uh, because they have literally spent their entire lives audibly telling people who asked them, and they read as a female person a lot of times. Uh, I've watched them tell people who asked them to smile on the streets to fuck off and shove it up their ass. Good. And I'll always be kind of grateful right and like i was like 12 and like oh god how embarrassing uh my 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 mom person said the wrong thing and i was an adult I'm like ha ha yeah exactly, fuck yeah exactly. that rules <laughs> way to model behavior parent <laughs> <sighs> oh for those new my parent is non-binary oh yeah which is why you know i have a stepdad and a dad and a parent it works out because we're all the children of divorce out here. <laughs> true, true, true. <laughs> <laughs> remember, if, you, if you're not a 90s kid, you don't remember your Gen X parents' marriage failing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dark joke for the evening. I get one. Speaking of which, one thing that I do really like with G-Man, Coomer, and uh, Bubby is that they all have different level of divorce guy. Oh, for sure. I don't think G-Man's ever been married, but somehow he still has divorce guy energy a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I can't explain why, but he does. Coomer is the most divorce man of all of them. Coomer Just, is he's divorced. He's still got that... Like, it feels like it's been a while for Coomer, but he's, like, gonna be- It was not a good breakup at all. Like, it went bad. Uh. Bubby, I think, is, like, the amiable divorce guy. Uh. I actually consistently write his ex- His ex-girlfriend as, uh, Barb. A.K.A. Barbara. Uh, a stone lesbian who thought that it was kind of a mutual closet situation. But they're also, like, really good friends. They like to go. They like to go fishing together. You know, mm -hmm. I like it was a good time. Super mutual breakup. A little sad still though. I think Coomer has been divorced at least once, but you can read it as twice. Good for him. What a chance. Eli and <laughs> honestly, uh, Eli and G Man do read as divorcees. Is the funny thing. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> Ms. Alex, your father. Like, yo! What's with that delivery? <laughs> Some very distinct... And it's very funny because I know why the delivery is like that. And it's just meant to be foreshadowing of technically Half-Life 2 Episode 2 spoiler information. Uh, 
Yes, it was Bugs who drew the G-Man divorce selfie yes, pic. That's and right. it might have I think it was even drawn on stream. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Oh that was gosh, one of her early so streams! Wow! What'd you say? My glasses are so close to my eyeballs right now, I just realized they're pressing up against <laughs> Anyway! <laughs> Don't do that! <laughs> People who wear glasses are terrifying! They're like, oh, whoops! <laughs> anyway... That was Bugs! That was specifically Bugs, and it was on, like, one of our first streams. <laughs> In case y'all ever wondered if, like, our vibes have always been fairly consistent. Yeah. I, I, oh, yeah. I uh, Gort Bold. My dark it's secret true. revealed. Uh, and my screen name on Tumblr is Friendly Troll, so we're both using slightly outdated screen names that yeah. are getting increasingly confusing, but also are going to break, like, 50 links if we ever change them. Yeah. I don't want to update all my links. I don't want to either. <laughs> like, I, is there a way, like, maybe one day I'll do that thing where you keep your old URL and it just bounces to your new thing. Oh, that'd be smart. <sighs> God. Yeah, for some reason G-Man and Eli accidentally wound up with divorce energy instead of what it was supposed to be, which was like, oh, foreshadowing. Wait, why does the G-Man know Eli? And instead it's like, huh. So Alex's mom never shows up on screen ever, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shit. I've mentioned it before, but I do like to try and like come up with a personality for Alex's mom. But also I have to refer to her as Alex's mom for anyone to know what I'm talking about most of the time. Yeah. It's... Which is a little bit rough. <laughs> It's it's almost like there was a period of time where Bob was not good at writing women. It's almost like yeah, it's <laughs> it's really funny. It's almost like there's this very long period of time where Valve got slightly better than hotted boob scientist seduces Gordon, and then got weirdly smug about doing even slightly better than that. Yeah. Oh oh, we got a first Sam. We got a first Sam. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's really oh, good! Hey, great work! I Yo, like that! On that you hat. got it! You did good! That's a nice Yeah, that hat is ben difficult. Like the cheek is always tough for me. Great work! Wonderful job! For Leaf real? Twig. Great stuff! Honestly. <clears throat> oh, my yeah, tea! Yeah, honestly, I... Oh, back. oh, did you drink your tea? I forgot my tea Go in get the your tea. God. Honestly, there's nothing that makes me happier than seeing, like, oh, art happened because we talked silly for a little while. It does feel like magic. What the hell song is this one? Ha! Sonic! I think. Yeah, Sonic Adventure 2. Sam is very difficult to draw. Sam is tricky because he's like very suddenly being given a pop quiz on the flower bag principle of animation, uh, which Bugs can probably explain better than I can. Hi. My, my thought process was literally, oh, it's Toriel's theme. Oh, that's nice. Oh, I, I like that, um, <clears throat> that one teacup where it, you can see the old kingdom. That's nice. Oh no, my sticks! So, <laughs> I have tea now. I actually have that mug. I do too. Ugh. <clears throat> it's very good. You okay there? Burnt my throat a little. Fucking clanging, fucking clanging noises. Hey, the Blankest123. Ah, uh, hello, Blankest123. Ah! We can chill here. Uh, <laughs> Bugs. I'm fine. Bugs? Uh, it's very hot. <laughs> Do you need a moment? I'm good. Okay. 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 Bye. Uh, I was telling the chat that Sam is really difficult to draw because Max is like an unusual but understandable cartoony figure. And then Sam is suddenly just a pop quiz on the flower bag principle of character drawing. Mm -hmm. Honestly. Uh, 
which is literally the idea of like drawing form and figure by thinking of a flower set, like a bag full of flour. Yeah. Which is an interesting one because when they say that, they mean a cloth sack full of flour. And a cloth sack full of flour hasn't been a common item since mm, the 60s. Yep. Not that animation is slightly outdated and how it talks about things are still using animation principles designed like half a century ago without really updating the way that we think or talk about them. No. Why would you say that? That's not true. I almost think, like... It is it is a very useful visual. But also, again, first imagine that you've ever interacted with a flower. Honestly, you know what works, though, is a rice bag. Oh, yeah. If you've ever gotten, like, rice in the nice big proper sack, oh, that's yeah. almost an even better example because of how it settles, uh, which rose. I do and always have. Oh, oh, the stem. Oh, the delightful stem of gently flopping around a sack of Calrose. <clears throat> oh, G-Man divorce selfie. So many wasps. <laughs> Ah, stream original. Ah, and thank you for the wasp, Viplanite. Vi I'm with you, buddy. Hey, Vi it's a raid, Oxlip. Alexary again. Hey, hey thank you. Thank you for the little raid. It's lovely to see. Late night crew. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, oh, fuck yes. Yeah. I, I oh, the play. world ends with you. <laughs> I keep thinking about getting it on Switch, but I actually, I really would almost rather dig out my DS. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel it. Uh, yeah, I it would just, say it a really bag of milk would be right, Leaf Twig. Oh yeah, if you're Canadian, a bag of milk will do you fine there. Yeah, but yeah, I, I don't. Know you are allowed to eat the wasps. We do not forbid eating the wasps any way that gets rid of the wasps. If, you know, you could probably get some vitamins out of that. I, I think it's okay to have a crunch munch. Oh, yeah. And honestly, like, the, the tragedy of The World Ends With You on DS is that it really was one of the few games that incorporated the two screens in a way that's integral to the gameplay, mm -hmm. and it just makes trying to play a port of it kind of a bummer. Yeah. To me, okay, personally, due to problem. my nostalgia. I liked having to split my attention across two screens. Yeah, I feel like Kind that. of. Yeah. I enjoyed playing the game, and I learned how to do it well, so... <laughs> <laughs> I try very hard to pronounce people's names correctly on the fly. Yes, you can cultivate lots Sometimes of I... trees. You can, actually. I'm actually going to be very tender in the background of this one. <laughs> I think being tender is a good time. G-Man has trouble waking. Oh, sleepy. You know, that would make sense. I feel like he's so unused to sleeping. Oh, what do we got? What do we got? Let me see Nude After Dark. Oh. Hey. Hey. Hey, now. Oh, look at the world. <laughs> that's great. beard. I love that. Hey. Oh, hey that's now. wonderful. This is very... Ooh, hey, this is good. This is good. You're this. in good shape for a man of Science. Hey, this is pretty good. Pretty good. I like it. Oh, <laughs> honestly, thank you, Newt. That looks lovely. Drinking. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Bulp soda cracks me up. Yeah. Because I'm always like, he had to know, right? <laughs> no, he didn't know. No, he definitely knew. Did he? He might have. Didn't. Just me. literally me fighting with myself mentally. You're falling for bulk Most shit. of the time I land on, I think he did. Oh, thank you, Aug Auxiry. That's lovely. Thank you. Yeah, G Man just like isn't used to sleeping, so he has no like practice at getting up. And like the other times he's tried, he's been like on his own, so it's eh, so. No, he probably slept after he had Tommy. Because he'd be, like, sitting up with Tommy, so he would, like, doze a little bit. Mm. Oh, that makes sense, Leaf Twig. Uh, so G-Man, like, he's warm, he's cozy, it is difficult to get up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Get sleepy bear tea pajamas on. Yeah, I definitely do think having a baby just makes him tired. Like, it just makes anyone tired. Mm, babies are uh, work, man. And Tommy wasn't, like, they're a lot of work. I, I, I helped out a little bit with my uh, older sister when she had her first kid, which I'm glad I had the chance to do, honestly. Fucking wiggly kid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my niece was, like, fucking tired of this baby shit immediately. She was ready to go. No. Resulted in being punched by tiny baby fists. Oh, good! I, I have a, <laughs> uh, a semi nephew who has his name is Abraham. Everyone calls him AJ. Mm -hmm. And his favorite thing to do is yank your fingers so hard they feel like they're gonna pop out of their <laughs> sockets. And he's this little the ball baby of sunshine, death grip. so you can never say no to him wanting no. your hand. That's the thing, when a baby, like, grabs you, it's like, usually they're having fun, or they're upset, and they're seeking comfort. Yeah. And A, tugging hard enough to break a baby's grip, like, goes against all of your instincts. Yeah. For which sure. are, don't pull baby, do not pull baby. Uh -huh. And also, baby nails are tiny little razor blades. Yeah. Yes, yes. That too. True fact. They will draw blood. They will. Oh, soap and I. Oh, baby. Aww. It's tough. It's tough. You're this little tiny being and everything you felt is new. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it's bad. Yeah. And even the stuff that's not bad is kind of a lot. When, uh, because I was, I was raised in Florida. So by the time I was mm -hmm. talking, um, I'd never really, like, seen snow. Um, and so we went up to see my grandma and my Yankee up in Boston. And uh, it had snowed, and little kid me stuck my hand right in the snow, but didn't <laughs> know the word for cold. So I just oh, you going, too, huh? I, I just kept going, hot! Hot! <laughs> uh, I didn't... I have a very similar story. I didn't see snow until I was like, I want to say four or five. It's like one of my earliest memories. But I read Calvin and Hobbes really, really little. Uh -huh. Like, I learned to read very little. And I read Calvin and Hobbes first, pretty much, because I was a weird child. Oh, hey, thank you, thank you for the, the follow, follow Cryptid, Cryptid Road. Road. Uh, and I had only seen snow in Calvin and Hobbes, and in Calvin and Hobbes, like most cartoons depicting snow, characters just kind of run around. Yes. And it's have not fun in it. At all. And it looks light and fluffy. Yeah. It looks light and fluffy and fun. Yeah. And we were on a road trip through California because that's what you do mm. if you have family that lives somewhere else in California is you drive mm. six hours minimum to go see them. Yeah. Uh, and I just remember the utter betrayal I felt <laughs> after I charged the fuck out into the snow. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been on when snow snow melts a little and then it refreezes so it becomes ice yeah oh my god i almost got a concussion that way when i yeah, lived in portland I, I have smacked my knees real goddamn hard that way when i'm up in new hampshire it is ugh. it's the treachery is that you want to crunch snow with foot because ice on snow crunch good exactly but it's better to do that with like a rock yeah <laughs> yeah it's not quite the same though you know what's cool though um my dad lives mm -hmm. out in the woods and when it snows like that, I can actually go out the next morning and uh, see, like, oh, there's bobcat tracks over here. Oh, yeah, animal tracks. Yeah. Oh, so cool. Yeah, you have to do a penguin walk on slippery conditions. You do that in California sometimes, too, uh, in sufficient rain conditions. Yep. Because uh, sometimes if leaves don't get pulled out of the way, you just kind of have an active mulch layer. Got bad. Okay. I think that works. Oh dear, are lovely. Also bastards. Oh yeah. But I I say that as someone who grew up rurally on like a farm kind of fish situation. Mm -hmm. Small, the dark backstory. Not unlocked until you've done the persona thing like three times. It's really rough. I'll die for you first before I tell you my backstory. <laughs> Uh, deer are but long bastards. story short, if you do, if you do any kind of gardening, deer are monsters. Beautiful, yes. but also fuck you. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> one, one time in 
Hawaii, it actually rained for like 30 days straight, and I still had to walk to school because <laughs> I was a latchkey kid. And I just uh, arrived yeah. at school with like, it, it was, you know, at the time when the fashion with jeans was to wear like the semi bell bottoms. And oh my god. So my pants were like soaked up to like halfway up my leg. <laughs> See, I just grew up in a rural area that's like Pacific Northwest enough that for most of my life it would rain like most of the year. It doesn't anymore, which is kind of a massive bummer. But anyways, yeah. uh, what always was weird to me is how many people I grew up around would do that like tough it out Pacific Northwest thing of like, I don't need a rain. I don't need an umbrella. Yeah. Why would I need an umbrella? Oh my God. And I was just like, well, I have a golf umbrella that my parents got from the thrift store. And frankly, it seems to be working out pretty well. <laughs> Classroom full of sodden, weed-smelling ass motherfuckers. <laughs> I, I was that stubborn person who would not wear the uh, anything. <laughs> and uh, then you know what? I got a lot of colds growing up. I, I couldn't tell you. Wouldn't why. you know it? <laughs> Mysterious. 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 God. Uh, I also grew up, like, with a wood stove, oh, so please know how so little I'm joking about the rurality. It sucks. It's not a good thing to have as your main form of heat. It's true. I I have had the fun experience It's nice if you have a backup. Nice scar on the back of my uh, left hand for a while. Oh, yeah! Yeah. Oh, oh man. Uh, I got one on my, on my elbow where I just, like, smacked it right into the side. Ooh. Yeah. Elbow's a bad place for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh no. thank you. Yeah, I thought I, the other night I was falling asleep and I was thinking about like something about the kitchen scene I drew isn't working for me, and then I thought more focus on Bubby's fire powers. Yeah, that's cute. Uh, speaking of fire, honestly, I I do always like the idea that Bubby likes to like. I don't think he likes to camp with a tent mm. because he's old and fuck that shit. Uh -huh. But I do think he's the kind of guy to like rent out a cabin by the lake and have a little like fire pit kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I feel like he just loves having instant fire starting abilities. That'd be cool. I feel like he probably misses. I, I always imagine that he very much misses like landscapes that aren't the fucking desert. Sunkist is microwaving a Let breakfast burrito. Fuck. It's, that's perfect. Yeah, Crystal's Pearl, you kind of... I, I never had, like, the barn kind of situation. We were just plants. Uh, which, side note, the best fertilizer is fish slurry. But also it smells exactly how you'd think fish slurry smells on a hot day. <laughs> So there's that. Delicious. That's amazing, how it wonderful. <clears throat> uh, definitely didn't have parents of some of my older sister's friends uh, have a jug of fish slurry explode in their car on a oh. hot day. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> you don't get that smell out. It's like having a dead body in the car. You just sell the damn car eventually. <laughs> I'm drawing like an office type kitchen, but whatever. I, I spent so much time stealing snacks from my office kitchen that I think that just it is ingrained in my memory. Eh, I think it just reads out as like, this is the kitchen that works for this framing. Okay, thank you. Fine. Thank you, my good friend Frankie. I free your brain. Thank I free you. your thank brain. Thank you, thank you, Frankie. You were so kind. Also, also Bubby's house uh, is probably <laughs> like kind of a weird doofy house that he bought in the 70s so oh god yeah he's got like one of those uh pits in the living room but it's all carpet mm -hmm. fuck god you walk in the front door and it's like this is a death machine for anyone who does not know where they're looking and gordon has eaten shit like six <laughs> times yeah i know what you mean fuck <laughs> Oh yeah, chicken shit is also a t it's a great fertilizer. Oh yeah. Oh, the smell. Oh, the smell's bad. We actually uh, had a neighbor who was a vet um, who would mix us up the chicken shit fertilizer in Hawaii, and we'd mm -hmm. have to walk home carrying the big tub of chicken shit. And boy, fun. yeah, that's just what every kid wants. Yeah, you love it. 
also, also, generic flower said popcorn ceiling. Yeah, Bubby's house definitely oh, has God, like a popcorn, popcorn ceiling. ceiling. Yes, and every chance he gets, more Cooper, like picks at it. God. He does. Uh, I I always mentally imagine like after everything settles out, there's Tommy's house. Mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes Gordon's apartment, but more often than not, I just kind of have Gordon and Benry moved into Tommy's house. And then there's Bubby's house, uh, and Coomer had, like, a condo that he basically just sells because, uh, fuck it. I, I completely... Uh, and Bubby's... Hmm? Uh, I completely forgot. Someone pointed out on, like, Tumblr that, like, Tommy makes fun of Bubby's house during the, like, a cab stream. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's ca canonically Bubby has a house. Yeah. Anyway, you are saying? It's very funny. Uh, my, my vague fan in four is that Bubby's house he bought with his ex-wife in the 70s, so it's just kind of like, it's kind of okay suburban kind of house that's like close enough to work mm. that he hasn't been in for a very long time. Mm. Uh, but it's a house, and he's got his man with him now, so. I dig that. Uh, but I do always like the idea, like, Bubby definitely constantly like fantasizes about like buying a different place, like in the woods or something, but he never really does. God. Just want somewhere Somebody's a to fucking sass machine. Safely throw firecrackers at a wall when he gets in a mood. It's true. Which, honestly, that's probably more workable if G-Man's in the mix, because they can just like teleport back to fucking civilization if they want to pick up a thing of milk. God. But Bubby's in big. Like, I just want to watch my birds and set fires mode. Bubby and Gordon going fishing. That'd be cute. That'd be cute. Oh, good, good stepfather son activity. God. Or forever, however that all shakes out. <laughs> uh, Coomer vaguely adopted Gordon, as far as I'm concerned. So, Gordon has been forcefully adopted. <laughs> Do not resist. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy's crush on Vin Diesel is very good. Oh my god, yeah. Oh yeah, no, suburbia is not great. Uh, my Both my parents, uh, my parent and my dad, grew up in like very suburbia-ish places. So that's why I grew up in a cabin in the middle of the woods. That's how that shakes out. I'm literally the end result of what like most millennials want to do, but my parents did it as Gen Xers. This is the end result. Not bad, honestly. <laughs> I love them just clapping. Uh, I do like to think that someone once like brought up the idea of G-Man being someone who would watch the uh, Black Mesa fights. I think that does sound right. That does sound right. I think he'd be in the back. Very. He's a big. He fan. just. He's in the back. He is looking respectful. <laughs> <laughs> uh <laughs> oh yeah hey if you grow up in a really rural area as a kid you just definitely almost die at some point oh yeah i had a uh, asthma and attack while like 40 miles away from any the nearest hospital and no available inhaler that was fun mm. uh the time i stepped on a nail and hid the injury <gasps> for some reason was no. probably fun for my parents. No, really. I didn't get away with it for long. I thought I would get in trouble oh. <laughs> because I wasn't supposed to be playing in like the uh, U-Haul van, but I stepped on the nail in. Oh. Dumb, bad instinct. Frankie. Just that kind of kid. A real parental panic attack moment. <laughs> <laughs> I was fine. I was totally fine though. I think they just hauled me off to like get a tetanus shot. Good. Uh, otherwise, I mostly just, like, the big ones are, like, the amount of time I spent wandering around the mountainside wilderness in an area that has mountain lines, and somehow that never went wrong. Yep. Same here about somehow. the bears. Hey. <laughs> Don't know how that worked out, but roll of the dice, I guess. <laughs> So, you know, 
when older generations are all like, ah, back in my days, kids would go outside. I'm always like, I'm not sure that's like, I mean, I get what you're saying, but, uh, about that. Oh. Not really sure. Hey, Dub, I'm so sorry. Oh, that's rough. Yeah, I'm very lucky. Somehow I never broke a bone. I don't I, know how. I only broke one, and my middle school vice principal hated me and uh, assumed I was faking it. So when I was in a wheelchair... Hell of a thing to fake. Yeah, they held a fire drill while I was in my wheelchair and abandoned me up top and I had to walk down <laughs> with the boot on. Which is fun, because that's like the throw a ball to see if someone's faking a workplace injury type logic. Yeah. But like, where would you have gotten the prop wheelchair for that? Yeah, I know. Well, actually, we got it from the school when, when I broke my ankle at school, but it was... Right. Uh, well, I know. Silly. Silly lady. Indeed. I was like, oh, here's a funny story, and then, wait a then halfway through, I was like, wait, this is sad and <laughs> fucked up, actually. Hang on. Uh-oh. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> chat. We're both kind of just those people a little bit. <laughs> we have it under control, mostly. Mostly. I was no, it's good to be a coward and not break bones, generic flower. Don't break bones. Yeah, don't break your bones, okay? I still, like, I still flop around on that ankle sometimes. It ain't good. Don't break bones, okay? Be careful, okay? For real. Be careful, okay? Do not rebel by breaking bones. <laughs> don't be cool and break uh, bones. Oh, just because we were talking about Sam and Max earlier, I always, like, this is just a pure fanon idea I had. But I always had the notion that, like, at some point, Sam probably picked up, like, one of those, like, kid injuries that isn't that serious, but, like, pulls you out of class for long enough to be lonely. And Max kept visiting him definitely the entire time. Oh, that's sweet. Like, you know, he, he, bro he broke an arm or, like, you know, got kind of one of those, like, nastier appendix kind of scares. Mm. I don't know why Sam just... Well... I do technically know why, for reasons we can't talk about yet, but in general I feel like Sam would have been a very lonely kid without Max, and uh, Max might not have been lonely without Sam, but he is happiest with Sam, for sure. Yeah, big agree. Max, without Sam, Max would have just had, like, a ring of toadies or something awful. Like, fucking big bully stuff. He's... He's just a bully that picked up the local nerd and was like, This is mine now, thank you! <laughs> We're best friends! But, like, meant it. <gasps> oh no, Gordon Footwork, that's terrible! Ooh. Oh, and that's interesting, Cuppy Dog City. <laughs> Phantom Hop, that's true. Do you think... Do you think Tommy ever got, like... Obviously, Tommy's an alien, so it's hard to imagine that, like, he ever had that much trouble. Mm. But I feel like he definitely at least, like, got a nasty flu once or twice. Oh, Tommy? And G-Man was just like, yeah, Tommy. Tommy Culotta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I, I was absorbed and... in the music. <laughs> oh, no worries. But yeah, uh, G-Man was just, like, fucking... Scared quietly dying on the inside yeah absolutely the first time your kid Tommy's... is sick holy shit yeah uh, Tommy's the G-man's kid yo I know that a lot of people go for the concept that he was adopted but I don't it's nice I also love the him being adopted but I think it's fun to have him be part G-man and part human because it's interesting it's literally factual what do you want <laughs> Frankie's right. Also, I gotta shoo off some of this childhood injury chat stock, chat. I'm, I love that you all shared, but let's bring the mood back up a little bit, okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think Tommy... I kind of very... I like the idea of Tommy having powers very much like his dad, but I also think it's interesting if he can't do stuff quite the way that his dad can. Yeah, I, I big agree on that. Oh, uh... Huh? Yeah, we should probably put, like, a link to my AO3, like, somewhere. Huh? Oh, yeah! 
Yeah, I can pull it up for you. I'll toss that onto the about. Wasp. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Oh, who put the wasp? Eventually. Who did the wasp? Eventually, there. How rude. After we complimented your art. How rude. After you gave us all that nice art. How rude. Okay, hopefully that does it. He's a good writer. Read his stuff, okay? One does one's best. Uh, roller derby honestly always looks very fun, and I do actually miss when I was a teen for a while, I lived by, like, an actual skate mm -hmm. uh, roller rink. Oh. And there is something very fun about just going fast on big, chunky skates. Yes, exactly. See, that's true, Gordon Footwork, but it's worse because the G-Man couldn't use Google. Because Tommy is 37... And even assuming that uh, Half-Life VR AI takes place in 2020, which it, it might not, then that still puts Tommy being a little kid in, like, probably the 80s. Don't check my math. My math is bad. I know my math is bad, okay? Uh, but if we assume that it follows the canon game timeline, then HLVR AI took place in 2000 and X, which means that the latest date it could be is 2009... So one way or the other, Tommy, uh, G-Man, I feel like, bought a bunch of, like, child-raising books and then, like, destroyed most of them for being useless. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> although also I should note that even worse than that, G-Man was probably used to kids being sick in my continuity because Matt- No, wait, that's right. Magnuson is actually close in age to Tommy. So he might have had two kids a little bit close to each other. So that's also fun. But even if it's just TV, However it that, that's really... Oh, man. Poor G-Man. Yeah, no, it's scary. It's tough. Uh, G-Man does start his Google searches with Dear Google. But the problem is, is that then Google like writes its response like a letter back. Because G-Man doesn't know that that's not how Google should work. <laughs> and every time he types in H-T-T-P-S semicolon slash slash yes www dot google dot com yeah time is fake and you can put hlvr ai anywhere i'm just that person who thinks about it i always kind of like the gag that it's somehow simultaneously 2020 and like 2002 <laughs> <laughs> Because honestly, it's very tiresome to limit media references to, like, the aughts. Oh, that's cute, weird sky. But it's also funny. My dad does the Ooh. www thing every time, and I have to, like, no, you can just, you can just type in Google now, it's okay. You can just go I think Google parent com. probably... I think parent probably just types in Google, but also I've seen their desktop oh, wall-to-wall yeah. icons. You don't want to see my desktop in that case. I mean, it's not like my desktop is good. <laughs> I just only keep the middle clear because I keep like art as my background. I think right now I actually have that really nice piece of uh, Magnuson and art that uh, Sarah did. Oh, sweet. That's literally my background now. Be warned. If you do fan art, it's very likely going to be my wallpaper at some point. Because I like it. It's good yeah, to see. My mom has been catching wind of the fan art, and she's like, you should set up the printer and put it up on your wall. So we all have a wall of the fan art to look at. I'm like, mom. Mom. I think we've already outpaced what like a reasonably sized wall could hold. Yeah. Which is a hell of a thing to say out loud now that I say it. <laughs> A G-Man deserves kisses. Yes, I am the author. I am, in fact, the author of the one Magnuson and Uriah fan fiction out there. It's me. I was the one. You. I will, I will build this ship, goddammit. I've actually had someone recommend Frankie Spick to me because they saw me drawing Magnuson and Uriah. And I was like, yes, Frankie's made it. Good. That made me so happy. Uh, it's just like, a, it's a whole fic that's just Uriah being gay. I'm trying to think about what to put, what to draw next. 
Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. Mm. A chat for you. Hang on. Oh, Hang we got on. a chat. We got a chat. Oh my god. God, you guys. <laughs> <Guys>. <laughs> That's wonderful, eventually. I love how you render I them really with all the little hands coming off of the Yeah. Background. That's a good looking I hand, I really by the way. love that you give... I really love that you give them, like, you have them forming a hand out of the indeterminate <laughs> chat pile. Thank you. But they still have their weird little normal limbs, like, off to the side. <laughs> I really think that's funny. <laughs> so good. It's like they're just waving their tiny little hands as they act together as a group. Reach for the wasp button. <laughs> every time. It happens every time. No, Crash Dash. No. <sighs> every no. time. Every time. Every time, more wasp. You are so mean to me. No. Cruel. Oh, oh, uh. Cute grandparent camping trip, maybe. <laughs> That's something? Look, I'm thinking. Why are you <laughs> laughing at me? I'm helping you. I'm sorry. <laughs> like Fine, hitting, think of it yourself. That was like hitting three buttons on the Frankie <laughs> generator and just slapping them. We were talking about it earlier. <laughs> Let me think a little. I normally don't actually have to think very much when I draw. I was gonna say, do you want me to like help spitball or should I be talking about something else to cover? Talk about something else to cover. Another wasp! No! Okay. More wasps. Very so cruel. cruel. Uh, G Man actually does like legitimately enjoy himself on vacations, Kalish called Jericho. He's not really used to resting. And I think the problem is that like left to his own, he finds an action like kind of dull. I feel like he gets understimulated more or less. But so long as he can, like, watch something, he's probably happy. Uh, he kind of gets into their hobbies with them a little bit. Like, he probably goes jogging with with Coomer kind of stuff. Oh, that's cute. I like that. Oh, I've got to draw Bubby's trains at some point. Yes, you got to draw his trains! Okay, that'll be My the next trains. thing. Uh... I am very fond of him just having model trains. I am too. I think it's a cute idea. <clears throat> yes, people are allowed to say hung trans, auto mod. <laughs> Add God. Ugh, trans. What even about it's just the word trans? Yeah. Auto mod is shit. <sighs> auto mod, you're an awful little bootlicker, is the problem. Yep. Train crimes, God. No, I definitely like to think that like Bubby makes like very intricate, but always like he has a sense of humor about like his model landscapes. He's definitely done one that has like an active crime scene on it. Oh God, for sure. <laughs> if you look closely enough, you can actually like find a guy like stumbling out deeper into the woods, like carrying a sack. <laughs> It's, it's like very artful. He doesn't show anyone. He doesn't like take photos and put them online. He just makes these train sets purely for himself. And he's starting to run out of room in the basement. Fuck. I love that. He just makes a new one. This looks like a grandma hat. I need to look up a Bub fishing hat. Bubby is a trains trans. It's true. Yeah, there's always something unsettling. Like... There's definitely one where, like, if you look closely, every single human figure is, like, turning away from a specific point on the map. Weren't we talking about one where he had replaced every single human figure's head with his own head? Even the children? Yes, and, like, or, the or with the same head. Yeah. <laughs> Just fucking that decapitated 30 of them. Yeah. <sighs> I just love the idea of him, like, putting this kind of work and care into it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are talking about Bubby. Uh, I have a- we have the fan canon concept. 
based on a very brief line about Bubby liking trains. And so I like the idea that he actually does build model train sets. Because mm -hmm. uh, he, he more or less apologizes to Tommy in the cut things about assuming that he likes trains. He goes like, trains are my life. That's... It's very cute. Yeah, there's a lot of like really tender cut stuff with Bubby that's very surprising. Yeah, honestly, I can see why yeah. it got uh, cut a little bit. Just for like time and jokes and everything. Like, uh, reasons, but it's still like... Mm -hmm. yeah. but... I do consider the uncut versions of Half-Life uh, VR AI to be worth checking out. Just be aware that it's definitely like eight hours worth of content. Mm -hmm. That we, 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 this might surprise you. Um, we have been mm -hmm. talking about our hyperfixations for, oh, three hours now? And, uh, this might surprise you, we're autistic, so we special focus on mm -hmm. these kinds of things. <laughs> A little bit. A Only little since bit. March. <laughs> Last March. It's gonna be March again soon. We're gonna it's have gonna to face up birthday. to the one year anniversary of this shit. Wait. Oh yeah, HLVRA started around my birthday. Hog. Oh, yep. wait. You've never seen HLVRAI generic flower? Hold up. Yeah. Let me let me get you the good stuff. Yeah, uh literally I think the major reason why people know who Wayne People who aren't the old fans of Wayne Radio TV, and the old fans, I genuinely Watch salute this. because I wish I'd gotten into his stuff sooner. Watch this. Uh, if you don't know what HLBR watch, watch is, watch these, okay? You do not need any prior information about Half-Life. Yep. Oh, um, also, really, if at you're all. looking for the full VODs, I know they got pulled from Twitch because of music issues. They're, they're, they're also on Wayne's full, uh, full video channel that he has for his VODs just go to the full channel one it should be linked from his main channel mm. well it's a good time yeah it should be on YouTube I think do check it out cause uh <laughs> just either check it out or be cool okay you're right Blinkist <laughs> yeah uh, yeah, no, in, in Alex, I think I talked a lot about, like, there is no way to interpret it other than, like, he is obviously positioned as against the Combine because you spend the whole game listening to the Combine talking about sterilizing, quote-unquote, infections, which are basically rebels, and then you get the giant bacteria phage thing. It's incredibly good. Yeah. Well, oh, know... Frankie info dump. Oh, fuck yes. Yo! Oh, hell Snail. yes. <laughs> hell yes. Snail has requested talking about Vorticon slash human cultural hybridization, particularly post-combine. Good night, Aroki. Hell yes. Good night, Aroki. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's about where we went to, Kalish called Jericho. I think we literally just like, hey, we should check out this thing that we've seen clips from. And we got into it before, uh... I want to say before Act Four dropped. Yeah, I remember we, we didn't watch we were, it live. We were dying we were because Act Four edit. was happening live, and we're like, we can't watch. We gotta wait for the edit. Which I'm kind of glad we did. Yeah. Overall, it was a lot. We're more used to watching streams now. Uh, okay, so Vortigaunt cultural hybridization with humans is something that I've definitely thought a lot about because I really feel like overall it feels suggested that like Vortigaunts and humans are just kind of going to permanently live together from now on. Uh, especially since Vortigaunts are fully capable of keeping up a culture between themselves from a distance because their psychic uplink thing. Um, but I do think there'd probably be like smaller groups of like Vortigaunts living together and that kind of thing. One thing that I definitely think is going to happen is Vortigaunts are going to start wearing clothing because Earth is fucking cold. Yeah, big agree. And also has, like, the sun, which I kind of feel like I'm never sure how much sun was actually available on the Vortigaunt homeworld. The first because time a Vortigaunt everything... gets sunburn is going to be kind of a big fucking deal. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, because there's definitely, like, well, there's distinctly different coloration on the top of a Vortigaunt's arms over the under, which does suggest, like, something being different there. But we've also got, like, a reoccurring pattern of animals from their planet having really big eyes and tending not to have fur. And also, uh, the biomass doesn't tend to grow in areas that get direct sunlight. Tricky to say. Tricky to say. But I think generally, uh, they definitely wear, like, clothing after a certain amount of time. Uh, sorry. I, I heard that rushing to skip the song. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so I definitely think that, like, Vortigaunts, like, yeah, sweaters. Sweaters are gonna be big. Someone's gonna need to figure out how to put shoes on the Vortigaunt. Polly is very funny. That's an important thing to know. Mm -hmm. uh, we we also got into HLVRA right before the fact stream. The fact stream was literally the first ever Wayne radio. No, the first, I think our second Wayne stream that we ever saw. But the first one was like a chill, playing like Call of Duty type stream. That was fun to have in the background. It was. The fact stream was our first real stream and our second overall stream, and. It's kind of just been on the Wayne train ever since. And we are so excited for Fax, too. I'm so excited for Fax Moths. I'm, I'm excited to see what images people make up in advance just for that. I'm a little scared about, like... Yes. What we'll no, this with, time, it's going to be very different. I'm. He's going to die under papers. He's going to drown. <laughs> I'm worried. I'm, I'm excited to see what the special <laughs> conditions are. It sounds like it's going to be really fun. Yeah! Uh, oh, so Vortigaunt and human stuff. I also think that, weirdly enough, uh, humans are going to wind up with a lot of Vortigaunt food culture because Vortigaunt food sources are a little bit more common at first for a while. Uh -huh. And Vortigaunts are who know how to cook stuff like head crab. So you're going to get a lot of like mingling there really fast. Uh, especially because food is one of those things that like humans culturally, we love to share and trade and adapt stuff. So someone's definitely going to figure out how to make like, you know, uh, head crab parmesan really fast. Oh, that'd be good. Wayner dies live on stream by getting too many paper cuts. God. Rip. Uh, so I definitely think like a lot of human and Vortigaunt food mixing. I'm always... What's interesting is that there's one thing we actually see the Vortigaunts picking up. And it's human language particularly very specific phrases from individual humans. Uh, first, there's Art and Alex, who I feel like is worth mentioning because he has learned human body language that other Vortigons do not use at all. Like, Art talks with his hands in a way that other Vortigons don't, which is interesting because he also includes his or his uh, third arm, the Vortal arm, in that. Mm -hmm. Uh... So that's already interesting. And then in Half-Life 2, particularly Half-Life 2 Episode 2, there's actually a very subtle bit, which is that there's phrases that Magnuson uses. Dr. Uriah Magnuson, the scientist who uh, you meet at White Forest specifically, who we believe was the slick model scientist, a.k.a. the same model that Tommy uses in HLVR AI, because there's only so many scientists left and we know he was at Black Mesa. But anyway, there's phrases he uses that not only does Uriah the Vortigaunt use, but other Vortigaunts uses. Oh yeah, so like, uh, when you're in the mine with the Vortigaunt known as Cecil, um, as a nickname, he'll say something like, what next in the parade of constant, like something or other, and it turns out when you get to White Forest, Magnuson says something like, what next in the parade of constant difficulties? And it's like, oh, Uriah taught the Vortigaunt yeah. that, that from Magnuson, huh? 
It's very cute. It is. Because it's been confirmed by developers that that's what that's supposed to be. It's phrases from Dr. Magnuson specifically keep getting picked up by Vortigaunts. Uh, and admittedly, because Uriah is the one closest to him, it's an assumption on our part that it's happening through Uriah. But it makes sense with literally all of the information available. Sure. It's really cute. It's literally like slang that the boyfriend is using is getting picked up in the family group chat. Uriah is compiling top 10 epic Magnuson moments and spreading it to the group chat. Please, please it's honestly... like and spread Magnuson fan cam aiming for 10 million likes. Fuck. Please. God. Stop. <laughs> uh... But what I do think is very interesting is that the phrase is very specifically an annoyed phrase. And it kind of makes me think that, like, it's almost like the, the Vortigaunts are just kind of enjoying, like, witty burns. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it kind of makes me think that, like, I kind of like the idea that, like, Uriah through Magnuson is able to be pretty cranky even in English. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, Vortigaunts tend to come off as, like, very calm, very sedate, and I do think that that's likely a trait with them. But I kind of like getting to see, like, really individual personalities. This is definitely not Disco Asylum music. This is Undertale music. <laughs> this is the choice, I believe. Let me swap it. Let me swap it to something a little more upbeat. Okay, listen. There we go. This is from Ice yeah. Ground Zero. You were saying, my good friend? Also, Coomer is noodling. Oh, who's going to That's bed? awesome. And good night, Crystal's Pearl. Good night, Crystal's You Pearl. went with them fishing. You went with them fishing after making fun of me for saying old men camping. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> Cruel to me. Cruel bugs. Cruel to me. What would Bubby name his boat? Oh, that's a question. Hmm. 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 I'm trying to think. Like, would he go for? I don't think he'd go for a weird like science pun? I was gonna I hate... say the SS lover, but no. Fuck. Okay, SS Dr. Feelgood. <gasps> SS Feelgood. No, Dr. Feelgood's funnier. What if it's just Dr. Feelgood? There's no SS on it. It's just Dr. Feelgood. <laughs> Does that get the joke across correctly, though? Looks like it says Dr. Feet. Hang on. <laughs> yeah, move it back on the bow a little bit. There we go. Why are you spelling out doctor in full? Because it's... Hey, Dandified Corgi, thank you for the follow. Hey, thanks for the follow, Dandified Corgi. I have to find my wood texture brushing. <laughs> Normally I draw out wood, but I've been playing around with using textures more. Um... This? No, that's I'm a big texture, fan of actually. using textures. Uh, a texture. I've meant. Let's go crazy. Oh, that's nice. Uh, God, I was reading one of my like uh, manhua recently, and they did this really great dress design, where I'm pretty sure that the main outline of the dress was definitely done by hand. Uh -huh. But I totally clocked a pearl brush to make like pearl oh, strings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and a rose really brush popular. and it was it's very it was so nicely put together Ooh. because it actually made for a really nice dress the design was really lovely but also i could tell that it took them like 20 minutes and fucking good yeah. go for it that's what i want to see <laughs> the rv doctor feel good fuck You know, I could see Bubby getting an RV, actually. Like, a nice one. That's that'd be a good chance, compromise right? for I'm old. Fuck. I feel like that'd be a good compromise for I'm old, but I want to go camping and shit. Mm -hmm. Oops. 
A research vessel. Oh, Chili. Hey! Thank you. Thank you, Chili. Oh, God. Bubby would name his fishing boat after a research vessel. <laughs> That'd be cute. Oh, hey. That'll do perfect. Oh, uh, Vortigaunts are almost unequivocally taller than humans. Even the shorter Vortigaunts, if they stood up all the way, would be taller than humans. Uh, and we actually know that Vortigaunts can stand up all the way. They're fully capable of popping their heads up. They're fully capable of standing up on their legs more. I think it's uncomfortable for them to do for very long, and it requires a certain amount of balance, uh, just because of what we've taken a look at with how their muscles kind of work. Mm. Uh, I think Bugs has actually like specifically pointed out that they've got muscles that make more sense for staying in their crouched position yep. that don't necessarily, they got the small but not a lot of the muscles ones. that you need for they got that flat ass is the problem. Yeah. So they can't necessarily stand up that tall. Uh, funnily enough, Uriah is by far the tallest Vortigaunt. And that's saying a lot because Art looks very tall. Art is somewhat... T Art is already like a little bit above Alex's sight line. Crouched over all the way. Uh, so he's probably pretty tall and gangly. One second, okay. Okay. Basically, like, I think Uriah looks the tallest overall because he's over Gordon pretty far, and Gordon's supposed to be like six feet tall. Mm. So that implies that if, like, Uriah stands up straight all the way, he's definitely, like, over seven feet tall. Uh, again, it's kind of tricky to quantify because literally all Vortigaunts like stand crouched and bent forward and if their neck's kind of more horizontal than anything else. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, in general, Vorts are tall and tragically do not have asses. Sad but true. <laughs> Oh, Lake Le Monde. Yeah, I like the song. I just realized the other one was a pop God. song from Paprika, so... Oh. Yeah, that could be trouble. Yeah, I, I pulled that from the list. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I do think that Vortigons are probably very jokey uh, in the Vortessence, if that makes sense. I definitely like to think that some of the stiffness of how Vortigaunts talk has more to do with talking in an unfamiliar language that literally lacks one of the ways that they, like, communicate with each other. Uh, so that's probably tricky to adapt to. But there's some Vortigaunts that seem very sassy. Cecil from uh, episode... Is he episode one or episode two? Episode one. That's right. Okay, H, Half Life Two, Episode One, has a unique Vortigaunt named Cecil in it, who uh, helps during a particularly rough patch in the escape from uh, City Seventeen after the main central point of that dystopian ass city has been destroyed, and he he's got a little bit of wit to him. <laughs> <laughs> we love a Cecil. God. Now all of the Vortigaunts know you're hard to work with. Honestly, though, I do think if you're a jerk to Vortigaunts, like, you don't get to make that mistake many times. Ew. Hey, good night, Clu Clued the Destroy. Thanks for hanging out, Clued the Destroy. Sweet dreams, okay? Sleep good? Oh, God. Uh, side note, one of the things that I've thought of for Vortigaunt culture is that I feel like most of the time if you, like, request help from a Vortigaunt, which Vortigaunt you get is often whichever Vortigaunt is closest. They can, like, Vortigaunts consider themselves a little bit interchangeable. Not in an interpersonal sense, but like, oh, someone needs a Vortigaunt to go do a specific task. Whatever, I'm the closest Vortigaunt. A giveaway between Vortigaunts to tell that a Vortigaunt has a crush on someone 
Uh, can we skip this one? Yes. <laughs> it's very Sorry. difficult to talk about. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just like, I, I the, the crossover. It's okay, it's okay. Go for it. Uh, a giveaway for a Vortigaunt to have a crush is if a specific Vortigaunt keeps fulfilling requests for a specific human. If they, like, if they insist on being who goes to help a specific human, that's a giveaway. Which is to say Uriah. Very much Uriah. Yes! Yes! Snail, that's it exactly. It's like how when older people type, they type with lots of ellipses or use a lot of periods, so it's hard to tell if they're mad at you. <laughs> exactly. That is so universal. It is weirdly universal. Uh, gotta watch them ellipses. Give me one sec. To uh, G-Man, G-Man also definitely types exactly how he talks. Oh god, for sure. <sighs> Lots, mini, mini little, and then Tommy is just like staring at his tone, at his phone, like. Dad says he put Sunkissed away for the night, and I can't tell if he's mad about it or just telling me. <laughs> can I can I play Free Menu you Fool real quick? I love that song. No, yeah, it's stuck in. You my can head. play it now. Just <laughs> we'll we'll give it a moment of silence. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> All right, enjoy Free Menu you Fool. Thank you, thank you, Frankie. Anomalous Materials Lab. Yes, I recognize you. Hello there. Big day today, Freeman. But I hope no one expects me to start up the generator. Hello there. Are you sure you checked all the donuts? Hello there. Do you think we should delay all the donuts? Hello there. Shouldn't we try to capture a donut? Yes. Hello there. It appears the donut system has failed. Hello there. Aren't you a bit worried about that donut? Hello there. If my brain is in your donut. donut. Hello there. We'll make an excellent donut. Hello there. You still say there's nothing to donut theory? Hello there. I believe this will make for a notable donut. I can give you something for the donuts. Don't worry, I am a donut. You still say there's nothing to donut theory? I don't think so. Freeman, 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 you fool! I don't think much more of this. Freeting, 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 you fool! No, I don't want to die! No! Santa hat dance bugs. So cute. I do love that. <laughs> Best part of the song, bro. Sing along. <laughs> Okay, we gotta have one of the cattails be like doing that floofy falling apart thing. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. I love when they do that. I'm 
<laughs> okay. Ah, the classics. Uh, Kumar has definitely taken a bite out of the cattail. I think you can actually eat cattail. Let mm -hmm. me Google real quick. Edible if you roast cattail. them, it's not good, but you can. Yeah, it's not good, is what I've heard. Okay, young cattail shoots and roots also. Oh. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Huh? I bet that... I imagine that's one of those things where you want the shoots over the... Yeah. Fucking forbidden hot... The, over the forbidden corn dog. <laughs> the wild, free-range You can eat dog. any cattail if you're not a coward. Yeah. <laughs> you can eat any cattail I definitely once. think as a kid... I The problem is, if when I was a kid... Definitely the part that I bit on a cattail was definitely the fluffy part. Oh no! Oh, Frankie. God. Listen, <laughs> I have the sense memory of biting into a lot of things that seem like a bad idea. <laughs> Honestly, I really do love thinking about Vortigons being introduced to specific Earth things. I feel like there's a lot that's very delightful, and they haven't gotten to look at a lot of the, like, greater biome variety. Uh, humans... I will say that if a human's gonna meet a Vortigaunt, probably most of the time they've got, like, someone else has prepped them a little bit in the early, like, meeting. Um, but yeah, the problem is, is I do think a fast way to make a human feel weird is to reveal that you know something about them when you've never met mm. uh which you know depending on the human specific situation i think it's something that will become easier to handle once there's more common knowledge about vortigaunts uh i do think that this probably leads to some humans treating vortigaunts as if they're interchangeable or all the same person uh which is part of why I think uh, the fact that Uriah has a lab coat and a name tag is very cute. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like they've run into that problem with him specifically. And Uriah has, like, lost his... You're fine, generic flower. Don't worry about it, okay? Just, it's okay. Move on. Uh, <laughs> Vortigaunt's twisting a cat tail for the first time. Oh my god. Uh, Vortigaunts wouldn't get the pro. Yeah, Vortigaunts definitely wouldn't like get the problem at first. Uh, it, I think it's definitely one of the rougher patches, but not like in a. And then the problems all happen. God, make a fool of yourself in front of one Vort. Yeah, you might become the subject of Vort group chat oh, memes hey, it's for a little bit, but boy. I like. Hello, spaghetti Fuck. boy. Feel like dumping oh, more spaghetti on mean. your shirt again? They don't do Welcome that. The spaghetti boy. No, it's all in the silent group chat. <laughs> they don't just start viciously bullying humans. That would make it a little rough, bugs. Yes, that's spaghetti that boy. Is, that Good is job, that bubbly. is spaghetti boy. <laughs> it's Bulb. It's Barney. It's Barney. <laughs> uh, spaghetti boy. Uh, I've no, I definitely. Uh, God. Uh, Vortigaunts might not purr, but they do make a thrumming noise that's very close. And also, I don't, don't care, and it's cute, so. Yeah. Fuck it. Make Vortigaunts purr. Who's gonna stop us? Gabe Newell gonna come out with his knife collection? I think not. You have to find us first, Gabe. Don't look Fuck. up my Steam login information, okay, Gabe? That's cheating. Hey, <laughs> I was gonna look at what song this is, but it turns out looking at the title does not help me at all. Oh, let's see. Uh, welcome to Pada... Pada... Pada Tain... Hang on. Welcome to... Pada... Pa... Town. Oh, it's the Parappa, uh, the anime, uh, theme, oh, Parappa so Town. The anime soundtrack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Bugs. Hey, Bugs. What? Is Parappa 12 or is he 18? Parappa is whatever age he needs to be for whatever is funniest at the time. God damn it. <laughs> <coughs> okay. 
Okay. <laughs> Why is he so worried about having a car? Because Joe Cool made him feel inferior and kind of sunny. I can see why. Joe Chin is a fucking full grown ass man. Yeah. And he's constantly <laughs> bugging these middle schoolers. It's sad. Vorta a vortescent bulletin board isn't a bad way of putting it. It's definitely like closer to a server where there's definitely like side chats. But it's a fun, quick way to transmit the idea of, like, they're talking to each other in this other band, uh, and also just very funny. God. Barney is nicknamed Spaghetti Boy. He goes, and how you doing, yeah, are you And he's like, how are you, Spaghetti Boy? Signs, signing at him. Good to see you, Spaghetti Boy. Just... Why do you just desperately want someone to nag a human about their psychically informed spaghetti adventures? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is honestly something satisfying about watching a sketch page fill up, right? Well, thank you. Ooh, ha, ah, the negative space. Ooh, yes. Uh, something that I remember that we were talking about, I think we've talked about it on stream before, but I'm very fond of the idea that Vortigaunts have to get used to the human uh, verbal check. Oh, yeah. Uh, of like, <laughs> hey, it's raining. And then another human goes, oh, wow, it is raining. And then all the humans go and like look out the window and talk for a little bit about how it's raining. And Vortigaunts do not get that at all at first, but they think it's very cute. Yeah. And I feel like there's a period of like Vortigaunts trying to figure out what to comment on. They're like, what? They're like, human friend, you are wearing a scarf today. And the human's like, yeah, I am. It's a little bit colder out. You know, I used to live some... And the Vortigons, it's like, what is this secret key that just gets humans to open up where you just state something obvious? <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, I'm just... Sorry, flower. Yeah. Uh, try something with, like, a lot of vinegar. Or just like generally as a sour component. Sometimes that breaks through a little bit. I, I go for hyper honey lemon uh, hot water mixes. Uh, definitely like, I feel like Vortigaunts, you know what would be funny is I bet for a little while Vortigaunts start like a competition to see if there's any limits to like the gen general observation stuff. Oh, that'd be cute. Like, is there... Like, they try to find the hard limit, and they're like, Okay, telling a human they have a nose gets you nowhere. <laughs> Except, you know what? I bet some of the humans would be like, immediately get into- The, the human is just like, Oh, thank God. Finally an opening to ask if Vortigaunts have noses. <laughs> oh my god, absolutely. The, the, so the two please feel free to write- On the side of your thing. Yeah, please feel free to like write with this concept, by the way. This is just like a general fan canon uh, that I think is fun to spread. But yeah, the human just like, yeah! Stream, okay. Also tell your friend. yeah, <laughs> tell your friends. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, I do think that the human observation of cat- Vortigaunts are like, oh, they have to do this out loud instead of what we do, which is ping the word cat in the in the mental group chat. <laughs> cat, 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 cat. Cat. That is a very good cat that you have found. Where, where is this cat? I would wish to come pet it. God, I... I Every now and then, you do probably get, like, out of nowhere, Vortigaunts just all silently get go someplace <laughs> to, like, look at a cat. <laughs> Every time there's a new baby. Oh my god, yeah. Ah. Which, by the way, if you ever want free serotonin, please devote a couple of minutes of thoughts to Vortigaunts getting to observe a human baby. Oh, that'd be cute. Just, oh, it's so pudgy. Tiny human, look at these small- We kind of thought the fingers all grew in later, honestly. <laughs> Full set. Mm, mm, small. Yes, hello, tiny human. That is my finger. How- 
How how do I get the small human to let go? <laughs> Good night, Leon the cowboy. Good night, Leon the yes! cowboy. Yes, I want I want Vorts with pet cats. I think they deserve it. Uh, I choose to believe that Vortigaunts have babies because I think it's cute, mm -hmm. and I also think that it would make sense to assume that Vortigaunts have also had their reproductive abilities cut off. But my assumption is that the Nihilanth did that and that it interrupted some function of vortescence that allowed them to have kids, because it would just make sense if it's related. Uh, our concept is usually that they start as an egg, and then what you get is something between a frog and a kitten and a baby. Yeah. Or like pudgy. Yeah. Like a baby, like, like a pudgy little kitten that's also a frog. Yeah. It's good. So it's just like mouth and little squinty closed eyes at first, and big hands, and big feet, and big belly. And like, goofy Ew. limbs for a while. Cause it's cute. What is this song? This is... Festival One from Harvest Moon, Friends of Mineral Town. I played the shit out of this game. <laughs> uh, I think Vortigaunts are probably all... I don't think they have any sexual dimorphism, uh, but I do think that once Vortigaunts encounter and get used to human pronouns, they all use... they don't all use the same ones. I think some Vortigaunts have a preference for their pronouns, or like how they're kind of viewed gender-wise, and some don't. And it's just because it's... If not new to them, then a different structure than they use. Mm -hmm. And I feel like language-wise, everyone's just kind of muddling through the best they can. Uh, baby bird situation is how I imagine it. Like, they're basically the same shape they're going to be when they're an adult. They just haven't grown into it yet, and they're just a woojily little baby for a little bit. I do think having a larval form and a transformation would be cute, but also... I kept thinking about them looking like that specific way, like really, really new kittens look, but like pudgy. Oh, that'd be and cute. I think that'd be cute. And I can't explain myself past that. There's no need to. That is perfect. Exactly. Uh, also, I, I decided at some point that Vortigaunt babies learn to climb way before they learn how to walk. So they can cling to a parent. Uh, and hold on tight that way, even when they're pretty small, but they don't walk for a while. But they do learn how to jump pretty early. So I don't know how many of y'all have ever had a frog get into your house and then need to try and get it back out. But I think a toddler Vortigaunt is a little bit like that for a little while. Yeah, I think that sounds a good uh, right. I mean, bugs... Bugs' arm doesn't need to be too twisted to draw baby Vortigaunt. Yes, give me one moment to finish this explosion, and then I will. <laughs> Seems like a reasonable request. Beep, beep. Yeah, I love the idea of Vorts being clingy. Uh, for humans, it's a little bit tricky because Vortigaunt babies have, like, pinchy little talon nails. Mm hmm Sorry, I'm just immediately vibing out to this song. It's a good-ass song. I don't blame you. Just the classics, you know? I've been sleeping with my blue pillow it's... lately, and it's like the best armrest I've ever had. <laughs> oh. There we go. Explosions I do fun. definitely... Th I do wish sometimes this song had made it into the orchestra. Yeah, I do too. Probably something to do with the pacing. Mm. But it is funny that both the ghost music's got cut. It is. Let's see, I'm gonna draw some little things. Come what on. do you got against ghosts, huh? What do you got against ghosts? Yeah. What's wrong with you? Stop that. <laughs> you had a frog fall from your ceiling once? God. Uh, in my case, we always had a big fish tank in the back, like greenhouse that was just filled with like algae and snails and frogs would have like a bajillion tadpoles in it. Highly recommend it if you ever happen to be in a position of like having a house. Just get like a big 
fish tank somewhere fucking used or something and fill it up if you got frogs in your area. Uh, yeah. The ghost played jazz, not orchestra music. I mean, true. Uh, but because of this, we would often get tiny little frogs because that was the frogs in the area were all very small would occasionally find their way into the house and inevitably they would hide in the shower oh, which means baby. that they would be found when one it was very tragic for the frogs but also there's something very funny about like sometimes the frogs would very politely just get up onto your hand mm -hmm. and be like yes this is warm Oh. This will do. Oh. And then sometimes it was a chase. Oh no. The uh, the leopard frogs uh, that end up in New Hampshire uh, are of the chase variety. They do yeah, variety. yeah, yeah. So that baby vortigaunt who does not want to like eat their their mush today might occasionally be a problem. <laughs> uh, the good news is they can't keep it up as long as a human baby can say, like, run when they learn how to run. Mm -hmm. But it's a bit of a panic first. <laughs> a full-sized frog and it found its way into your kitchen. Sometimes frogs are just mysterious. They sure are, aren't they? Uh-oh. Oh yeah, and baby Vortigaunts definitely have tails, because look at Vortigaunts. They obviously have tails. They should have tails. <laughs> Every time I see it, someone draw a Vortigaunt with tails, I'm like, that looks more correct. <laughs> oh wait, the Vortal Hand. What am I doing? Baby Vortal Hand. Do you think Vortigaunts ever get into, like, chewing on their Vortal hand as kind of a thumb-sucking thing? Oh my god, absolutely. Poor things. <laughs> it's very tricky, because, like, you want to get them out of the habit because it could cause damage. But it's cute! Um, no, there's definitely a lot of humans who put up with a baby Vort, like, pinching their skin just because there's a baby and it's patting their cheek. Oh, vorts with big chubby tails like leopard geckos. Oh, that's cute. Uh, vorts move a little bit like lizards sometimes. I always the picture... the second vorta. Oh, sorry. Hmm? Oh, I, I picture yeah. when they're walking on all fours like this. It's like how a chameleon will kind of do that, like very steady, uncareful. Walk. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely like where vortigaunt crawling goes. Uh, yes, you're absolutely allowed to post fan art in the chat. Uh, and totally valid to not want to join another Discord. We love the fan art. We do. Oh, hell yeah, jams. No, it's this song, and I'm gonna be sad. <laughs> another three, why must you induce emotions? That's another one that's definitely on the list, by the way. Vaguely. Oh, man. It, there's nothing wrong with this song. It's just that it's a song from Mother 3. Hey, good night, generic flower. Try and get some sleep, okay? Good night. Consistent sleep is always helpful. Really, just sleep as much as you can is what I've heard helps. And the, you know, Baby Vort's trying to grab flowing water like chameleons do. Oh, I used to take care of this chameleon oh. named Dude the Chameleon. That be so cute just grab question mark question mark grab grab uh side note i we keep describing vortigaunt hive mind as the group chat and that's partially because i think having a baby in there is uh when my niece was much smaller not even just like a little bit younger than she is now before she could write she would occasionally just like want to mash emojis at me on the phone. <laughs> and at first it was just kind of that she wanted to mash emojis in general. And uh, my sister and brother-in-law knew that if she did it at me, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> but then later she she would do it direct. She would a ask like, I, I want to write to Uncle Luke. Uh, and it would just, oh fuck, that's so cute. Oh, it's in the hat. Thank you, Gordon Footwork. This is amazing. Oh, I love that. That's lovely. Thank you. 
That's great. Poop jump. Thank you. <laughs> oh, baby vorts definitely snap at water. Sorry. Like please, dogs do. Please continue with your story. Munch. <laughs> anyway, baby vorts in the group chat definitely are doing the equivalent of like smashing emojis. Oh, that'd be cute. You don't, you don't get much information from it, but every vortigaunt knows when the baby like is grouchy about a nap. <laughs> yes, that is a great tragedy. It seems that you are being made to lie mm. down and have a rest. Such cruelty being requested to eat more than just banana mash. <laughs> God. Uh, I, I've also compared it before if you've ever been in an apartment building and had a very little kid in the apartment above you. Parents can't do anything about their child deciding to stompy stomp run off. But to me, it was always cute because it'd be like, oh, bedtime, huh? Because <laughs> you just hear, oh, thump, 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 thump. <laughs> They're running for it. They're running for it. Surely this Baby time. forts and snow. I feel like baby vortigons would be so offended by snow. Oh, yeah. I think we've talked about pee, -pee it like, is yelling cold. at the snow. <laughs> It's, uh, have, if you've all seen, there's that one video that was going around Tumblr for a little bit where it's like two people walking through the snow and one of them's carrying this like super bundled up like bundle over their shoulder that you kind of assume must be like a little kid. And the person of the camera says in Russian, uh, let, let me see the Duchess. And then they <laughs> gently like push it open and a cat's face pops out and just goes, Mer! and then they close it again. <laughs> That's baby Vortigaunts in snow. Oh, welcome to the waking Just... world, actually, an onion. <laughs> hey! I'm glad to hear it's a peaceful time, actually, an onion. Anything but Your salsa. niece once refused to... <clears throat> yeah, little kids get like that sometimes. Mm. It's very funny. Um... My, my niece was definitely one of those kids that was just, like, hard to get to eat in general for a while. <laughs> Which I think is probably the most, like, difficult mode for that to go in some ways. Because it's like, you can't force a kid to eat, really. <laughs> but also, you need nutrients to live. <laughs> please, please, God. Please, please. <laughs> oh, can I find that vid? Ah, oh, I don't know. Let someone, me see. Someone... Trying to find anything that, like... Yeah. Someone Russian in chat, if you have that thing cat, where it's the Russian let people me walking see through the, the snow, Duchess. and with the bundle, and it's shot like this, and it's at night, and inside oh. the bundle yeah, is a cat. Googling isn't going to get. I'm afraid that Googling isn't going to get me here. If I ever see it again, I'll try to remember to put it on the Discord. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, to be fair, Apple's. Apples is actually a pretty good choice for your little kid being picky, but it's also very funny because that's not enough calories. Uh, small other thing also with your to Tumblr. Mystery maybe if you're out there. I think uh, my Tumblr ate my reply to you, but yes, I'm open for commissions. Indeed. The Bugs is currently up for commissions, yes. including sketch pages, which often get done on stream if there's something that we can both talk about while they're going on. Any subject, including baby Vortigons, is on the table. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is part of why I'm here. Part of why I'm here is because I can do the cell. Cosmic Eternity, you are so kind. You are so sweet. Thank you. Oh, my God. Leaf Twig says, when we first introduced my dog, who is very short as a miniature Dashund, to snow, he jumped into it, immediately sank, and sat there. Oh. He decided in that moment that snow sucked and he did not like it at all, so he would not move. I see baby Vortigons doing that with snow for the first time. That would be very cute. My dad had a cat who did something called snow catting, where she would jump into the <laughs> snow and you would just see her tail sticking out of the snow. And then what she would do is run full speed through the snow, piling it up as much as she could, just because the thrill of digging. That cat also loved to eat paper like a That's motherfucker. That's so cute. Paper oh, was the cats, cats are good. Yeah. This was the cat who would bring us uh, receipts from under the bed. 
that were balled up oh. while doing the I've gotten you a kill meow. The oh. type meow. Trudy was a gift. Uh, baby vorts also definitely like hunt small objects sometimes. You basically baby vortigaunt toys and cat toys probably have some crossover. To be fair, that's also true for normal babies. It's true. Plus, a surprising amount of cat toys have to be baby safe, yep. because same principle applies. <laughs> Much like babies, you don't want a cat eating a goddamn button. Probably. Goombi! Yeah, I'm gonna sneak a little Goombi in here, actually. Hang on. Um, we gotta get a little Goombi. I'm gonna put it on top of one of the <laughs> shelves. Oh, that's Fandom Hop! I love that! <laughs> Constant reoccurring chat fucking stream moments. <laughs> Thank you, Fandom Hop. It's true. Thank you. Hey, hey, hey. It's true. Let's... I have no control. Let's I'm but helpless. It's a Goomba with a little antenna like a Goomy. And it's got a slug <clears throat> body. That's a Goomby. So that's what a Goomby is, huh? Yep. <laughs> yeah, I think that looks right. Good. Secret chat in between the cereal boxes. Secret for chat. 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 Mm. Shh, don't tell nobody. <sighs> <laughs> your niece always plays with the cat toys. Hey, your niece has got good taste. I, I bought my dad's cat uh, for true. Christmas one of those electric uh, flopping fish toys. God. Uh, this this Pikmin track is more ambience than I thought it was. <laughs> oh, this is the title screen. Pikmin title screen. Yeah, oh, yeah, no. I was gonna say. It's it's literally the SFX theme. Oh, you know what? That'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> that might do it. <laughs> Slap that one on the stream playlist. <laughs> Oh, these crickets are going hard. Fuck it. I can work to that. I'll be honest. I think when I was a toddler, all I really wanted was a chewy squeak toy. Oh, man. I want one of those as an adult, bro. Now, why is that not an option? I mean, there are, like, stim chew toys. I know about those. Mm -hmm. But they're always, like, very much designed towards being little, subtle stuff that you can wear. Yeah. What about the unsubtle stuff when I'm at home? Yeah. Come on. Let me go ham. Oh, I know why this angle looks Get so weird. I didn't curb his collar with it. Jeez. Oh, uh, that'll do it. Uh, yep, there we go. There we go. Unbelievable. Okay. Collar's trick. Co trick, trick of collar. clothing geometry. Awful. Terrible. Oh, leaf twig, you got a ferret? Oh. oh. Do you have to put your keys in a safe? Do they stink? I heard they stink. Do they stink? I mostly worry about the thievery. But do they stink when they stink? Every animal stinks. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Loop in the third episode title, Do They Stink When They Steal? <laughs> but then in English, it's like translated some really weird, like, half a pun. God. Like, these thie thieves smelling of roses. God. About as much as rabbits. That makes sense, honestly. Do rabbits. Stink? Honestly, even a hamster gets, even a hamster gets a little bit uh, musky eventually. Mm. I think I've gone nose They're blind just very to my small. cat at this point. I love her. Yeah. That's really what happens with every pet, honestly. Yeah, that's true. What ferret steal depends on the ferret. That makes sense. <laughs> Your old ferret stole jewelry. <laughs> Your current ferret steals shoes. Oh. I feel like shoes are almost more of a problem no. than jewelry. Shoe insoles, <laughs> specifically. Oh my god. Shoe insoles. Oh no. <laughs> That's so specific. That's killer. What mischief. Oh. God. That's wonderful.
Hmm. I bet Kuma really loves holiday sweaters. Oh my god, yeah. Dude, I bet he gets the kind He's that like, like, light up and shit. Yeah, yeah. No, for sure. Like, the full fucking, like, nine yards. And I feel like he is so... He wants to try and get G-Man into wearing, like, some Mr. Rogers at-home jumper sweaters, like the button-up type, oh, over the work shirt kind of look. That would be cute. He's, like, conspiring. He's like, no, no, no. Obviously, you need some at-home wear. Like, just, please... Please, he's trying so hard to get it to work. Please, 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 a sweater vest is a treat. Please, please, God, please. Sweater vest. Sweater vest for Kuma as treat. Get G-Man in sweater vest. Please, thank you. Oh, G-Man in a lab coat is a weird thought. Huh. That is a weird thought. Then again, G-Man That's the funny is thing, is that he really... <laughs> He really would, like, blend in immediately if he, like, wore a lab coat. But he doesn't. Very distinctly, which I always kind of enjoy. Bubby and... Let me see. Let, what do you got there, Nude After Dark? Let me see. Fuck. Oh, absolutely. Yes. No, Bubby definitely has the that It's rules. Lit sweater. Oh, man. Toddland used to sell a good Hanukkah sweater. Hang on. I think they got, uh, <laughs> that one Evan dude that worked with the Aquabats was wearing it for a while. Let's see. Evan, or Toddland, uh, Hanukkah sweater. I always like the design of it. Oh yeah, it's a, it's a Arnie Magnuson. Doesn't come up that up oh, that much. Is. Come on, show me the picture, you little punk. Bubby owns that sweater, and he, like, and you'd think that he would, like, complain about it being tacky, but he loves it. He wears it, like, all the time. It's cute. I like it. It's a nice powder blue. Cute. I feel like Bubby wears it, and if you say anything, he's like, what? It's just fucking cold. Whatever. <laughs> but he loves it. G-Man is eventually convinced into, like, trying out some sensible cardigans. Oh, that would be cute. Get your man a sensible cardigan. It's a good look, is the thing. It's true. Also, cardigan is one of those words that I always forget, but if you forget it, then you're in trouble, because you have to start trying to describe sweater with buttons. Why, it's a jumper, Frankie. <laughs> yeah, but when I say jumper, you think baby jumper, but it's always the first word I remember. Mm. But it is also a workable word, just British. Bubby definitely wears what's comfortable more than anything else, especially now. I really want to watch those edited uh, ACAB streams soon. I want to. I want to get the Bubby lore. I feel it. I feel it. I'm sitting here like, damn, G-Man looks like Tommy. Motherfucker, he's his dad, of course. <laughs> yeah, I mean, once you put him in the lab coat here. is the problem. <laughs> Bubby's just like, this Hey, is Gordon Footworks Kitty. Sorry, Hello, you said? Hello, Gordon Footworks Kitty. Bubby's just like, this is weirding me out. Take it off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just nope. Thought it'd be hot, turned out it's weird. <laughs> Immediately weird. Um. Which means, in theory, then. Hmm. Hmm? Oh god, are you, I know what you're gonna draw. <laughs> yeah, G-Man definitely can't do any science. They just 
just give him busy work. Yeah, it's Danganronpa music. Yeah, I don't play the games, but this was someone. Uh, I do. Someone put it in as a song during one of the AI dungeon streams, and I was like, I like this. I will steal this from my own. I have playlist. played. <laughs> I have played. I have played Danganronpa one and Danganronpa two. I haven't played any of the other ones yet. I probably will eventually. I genuinely like the series. I think it's good. It's exactly the thing that it wants to be. Hmm. Whatever you might think of that. I've never played any of them. <laughs> Kameda's a good character, I'm just gonna say it! Okay, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Maybe we ought to watch uh, Clown Depot's playthroughs for them. Chase, uh, Chase is always That'd acting. That'd be fun, cool. honestly. It is, I do enjoy it. Uh, it's definitely a goofy, edgy series. But it's just always really tragic because I really do like Kameda and I got into the series before it got turned into Kameda as the meme 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 time. And it really sucks that people then started editing him to be bald because he's an ex-cancer patient. Oh, really? That's part of his storyline. Oh, wait yes. Yes, it's one of those really fucked up things where it's very obvious that the original person doing that was making a really shitty joke, and then other people didn't know that that was the game context. Yeah, it's a bit yikesy. It's probably then became just a joke about like, oh, wig snatched, but it doesn't really matter because again, he's an ex-cancer patient. Uh... Without getting into game spoilers, his whole thing is that he has amazing luck, both good and bad. So, like, yeah. Damn. Again, he's a bit of a goofy, edgy character. I'll cop to that. But there's something to be said for enjoying that time to time. Mm. It's not great. It's not good. The bald Kameda thing, and it definitely made me very like mm, about the whole oh Sans and Kameda and the song and the thing and the thing. Mm. <sighs> Weird Tumblr moments. Weird Tumblr moments. But yeah, watching through it could be fun. It's kind of like if you bolted Phoenix right onto a friendship slash dating sim and then did edgy it up a little bit and make it about like teenagers <laughs> oh god damn it dax aster has the price finally come to call oh that's very nice of you to say something very sweet first i'm definitely about to curse you ah <laughs> oh my god uh... Thank you, Daxaster. I invited this. this I... Oops. Oops. <laughs> yes, honestly, thank you very much, Daxaster. I really appreciate the game. This is amazing. And you even remembered. Thank you. Holy shit. <laughs> thank you for also putting bugs in the soda popper hat, if yeah, I may just thank say. You. We are both cursed. <laughs> I love the hyperpigmentation on your eye. Look at that. Yes, I really love that. That's great, thank you, I, I always Master. appreciate- Yes, thank you so much. Uh, in general, I always appreciate that y'all always hit the hyperpigmentation thing, because it's how my eyes look. Some of us are just born with Professor Venomous eyes. It's true. God, that's so cute, though. Thank you again. It's terrible. Thank you very much. <laughs> also, I do like that uh, if you put Tommy in G-Man's clothing, that is still definitely Tommy. Do you think every now and then Ben Do you think every now and then Benry and Gordon are like so is Tommy's jawline just going to get like super sharp when he's older? <laughs> <laughs> Quiet deliberation. <laughs> Benry just I am taking photos of your side profile for no reason, okay? Week to week <laughs> comparison him and Gordon how, standing in the closet. How, how them cheek <laughs> It only gets worse when Benry and Tommy finally get to, like, meet Gordon's mom. Oh my god, yeah, yeah. Gloria! 
Oh, I haven't told Chad about Gloria for a long time, huh? Yeah. Oh, and thank you, Ch uh, Chilili. Yeah, it does look good, doesn't it? Shucks. Uh, uh, Gloria Freeman is a character that I that we pretty much made up. Mm -hmm. That's just uh, it, he, she's Gordon Freeman, specifically an HLVR AI's mom, and she's a six foot tall woman with a lot of hair who's also a scientist. Yep. Uh, because I say so. And nobody can stop me. And I think it's fun. And also the idea is that Gordon's trans, and so Gloria always has to be like, my delightful, wonderful, beloved son, who made it sound like I named him after me, <laughs> like a terrible person. I love him so much. I'm glad he decided to honor me when he chose his new name. It sounds bad every time. <laughs> <laughs> Let me do a quick Gloria over here. Yeah, I do love Gloria. Uh, usually the idea that I always vaguely have is that she uh, used to work at Black Mesa herself like way back in the day and then kind of jumped ship to move to Aperture like in the 90s about. But Miles and Phoenix are a whole thing, but you can't then decide to go and date Gumshoe and Phoenix, right? I know that much. It's... What you're describing is a courtroom game stapled onto a visual novel, which is legitimate, but slightly different. Uh, Gloria also definitely just has, like, the same hair as Gordon, but, like, three feet more of it in my head. Mm -hmm. But we all want to date Edgeworth. That's what you do, basically. Near as I can tell. I haven't played Phoenix right. All my information is, like, second or third hand. I think Phoenix Ray is definitely about gay lawyers, but it's also about a very dystopian future of law. That's not me joking. That's laid out and like, I've played just enough of Phoenix Wright to know that literally the first information dump is, this is the future and law got really fucked up. That's why it works this way. <laughs> the mic picks up you doing that. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nope, uh, Phoenix Wright is set in, like, I think something like 2020X when it first came out. It's like the very close future. Oh. Yeah, Hop's theme actually does jam. The thing I'm doing is, uh, when I'm doing this line work, you can hang on, let me move the mic a little closer. That's what Frankie was hearing. <laughs> I can hear the impact of the short, fast strokes. Yeah. I don't think it comes up for you guys. Uh, no, uh, Gloria I, I... also definitely sometimes babysits Joshy. There is one thing. Last time we did Sam and Max, um, uh -huh. when we were chasing Max and Tiny, there's just this like... I... Oh shit, mm. when I hit. And uh, fucking... <laughs> <laughs> that was me on the tablet trying to chase Max around. <laughs> yeah, uh, Bugs has been playing that game on the tablet because it's easier on their wrist. Yeah. So every now and then I can just hear these little, like, tapping noises. Hey, Kalish called Jericho. Good to see you. Hello. Yes, Gloria's a grandma. De depending on your personal canon. Having Joshi exist or not is valid either way. Uh... Because Gordon, I mean, because Wayne definitely forgot about that bit, like, immediately afterwards. <laughs> I like him having a kid. Or having a kid very soon after everything. Or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's cute. I like babies. I like babies, too. Also, baby, also characterizing him as Joshua is very fun and funny and accurate to a toddler, frankly. <laughs> Small robot son. Yes. Excellent. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Josh Joshy the real. The real Joshua. Yeah. I always differentiate it by saying Joshua versus Josh G, which is weird, but here we are. <laughs> Billy Hatcher! Yep. Yeah. This is the song. Gotta play Billy Hatcher eventually. <laughs> Daddy Gordon! 
I'm so excited for my dinner of apple cores again tonight. God. <laughs> <laughs> I can hit the pitch pretty good. Uh, Joshi is what I call HRVR AI Gordon's kid. Joshua is Wayne's IRL dead AI child. But not really IRL. <laughs> Oh, the the sweat the Hanukkah sweater was uh I think I actually have it in my history still. Let me see. I think it just said it's lit. There's the link for ref. Wayne's text to speech baby that lost it. Cowboys one, cowboys two, cowboys three. I run out of breath really fast doing that. <laughs> Joshy steals. Joshy is trying to kill from beyond the grave. Very sad. <laughs> it's true, he's stealing my breath. That's the price you pay for doing a Joshy imitation voice. You are mocking the dead, Frankie. I'm not mocking, it's <laughs> loving. <laughs> loving mocking of the dead. <laughs> it's not mocking at all. <laughs> We love him. We miss him. Hey, Frankie, what, what? do you think this is from? Billy Hatcher again! <laughs> <sighs> we gotta play Billy Hatcher at some point. We, we really do. I love Billy Hatcher. I Any excuse to play it. No! We should do that as, like, our holiday stream. Okay. Like, it has nothing to do with the holiday, but just, like, as a pure indulgence. Yes, Jesus Christ hatched from his egg on this day. Okay. <laughs> holiday Billy Hatcher. That actually does sound fun. We can just fucking, like, fuck around with it. Yeah, that would be fun. I can, I can, I can just enjoy and wonder. Card for Christmas, I could probably set it up and hook up the Wii to it, and then uh, boot Billy. Oh Hatcher shit! Actually, actually play it legit style. Yeah. Wow. Play with the GameCube so you can hear all the buttons clack and click. <laughs> the furious, the furious clicking. Yeah, I super feel that Gordon and Bubbly. Huh? Uh, we definitely came on after never getting to hear Josh Joshua alive. We're in the same boat. And now we never will again. Whoa. <sighs> Rip. HLVRA and Animal Crossing designs. That sounds lovely. Ooh. I do love those. There can never be enough of those, honestly. That's true. Okay, I like this song, but it also makes me go into, like, alert mode. I will change it. No, no, no. Okay. okay. I'm not a complaint. Okay. I just mean in that video game way of, like, oh, this level. Yeah, mm. I feel it. Mm. You know, I love that one level that proved that they can do horror with the Splatoon format. Yeah. Which one? The, uh, it's, it, you go through the tutorial. But as you're going through, it's like all dark and foggy, and the uh, octo, yeah. yeah, they come out of the goo. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, I also have a really big, like, there's something very eerie to me about the levels that have this, like, weird, distant, fake cityscape. Mm -hmm. It's just, like... I think those are even like more in uh, the oc the single the first single player mode. Yeah, has a little bit of that eeriness in it, where it's like, "Hey, what's this weird recreation of a place I know very well?" Yeah, exactly. About... Oops. Yeah, Octo expansion fight or flight response activated. Octo expansion is the best, honestly. It really is. I don't think I've ever enjoyed a DLC so much as that I've enjoyed Octo Expansion. It's pretty hard to be. Even like Breath of the Wild added some fun stuff, but not even a motorcycle can beat out Octo Expansion. Mm -hmm. I love the Indeed. way that it makes the controllers rumble in your hands. 
Like it's like I'm yeah. really riding the motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right off. It's also fun because unlike a horse, I don't care if I gun it off a cliff. Yeah, that's true. Whee! And then you have to feed feed at your garbage, just like a horse. It's true. Let's see. See, this is the part of the song where if you hit this during the level in the Octo expansion, it feels very intense. Ew. There's definitely some sniper level where this song is playing. I can feel it. It was like those levels where you had to sculpt out with the sniper rifle. Those were totally my favorite because those were like, if, if I fucked up on one of those, it felt earned. Yeah, honestly. Uh, uh, Wayne has Joshi and then Joffrey. And, I think was... and Joffrey's not dead. Joffrey is really Joffrey's... Amazing. Joffrey's in the attic. You should watch his Easter, egg, Easter stream to understand a little more about oh, Joffrey. Oh god. Unfortunately, his death I is guess. Bad. You should also watch it Ugh. so you can watch a grown man get dizzy playing VR funny games. That's true. Yeah, this is the hero mode boss song, isn't it? I think. Some boss has this. Side note, uh, I finished the Octo expansion before I finished the single player mode because I kind of, when I first ran into single player mode, I didn't want to use the guns. I wanted to just use my roller because I like using the roller. Uh, but I really wanted to be able to play an Octarian. Mm -hmm. And you have to get through the Octo expansion to do that. So I encountered most of those bosses for the first time in their Octo expansion forms. That's pretty cool. It was cool, but it was also very... It was very terrifying, and then it became very funny, because then I went and did single player and was like, Oh, you're not rocket powered or anything. Like, get fucked then. <laughs> I'm not being constantly slammed off into the fucking far distance. He's overseeing oh, hell yeah. his domain. This is probably one of the shortest songs on the Undertale soundtrack that like generates the hardest immediate hit. Oh yeah, Small Shock is a big shock. Just like... Small Shock hits you like a truck. Yep. Uh... As an aside, I've never quite been able to square the circle of an HLVR AI Undertale AU. But we've been thinking about it. There's too it. many moving parts. We've thought about it. But what I have thought about is that Gordon in HLVR AI is a streamer. And I've thought before about Gordon Freeman the streamer playing Undertale. And I think there's a lot of fun in that idea. Oh, yeah. Uh, especially because Gordon Freeman would almost certainly play it, maybe not directly after release, but he, like, let's say it gets recommended it a lot. He would play it like a normal JRPG at first, which means he would have to restart entirely. And I think that would be very fun. I think he would definitely love Papyrus a lot. <laughs> hey, here's a fun thought for you, chat. Mm -hmm. He's also a dad, isn't he? He's also a dad, huh? Uh, which as an aside, I think after he finishes, I think he'd kind of like have a... Th I think he'd either hate Asgore very much, mm. or... He would just be very sad about him. Yeah. Probably both. Uh, a Delta Rune AU is much easier. Yeah, you're super not wrong. Uh, and I always and just I, I always run with the idea that life continues after the game in HLVR AI. And uh, I do think Coomer would probably be like interested, but a little bit like a cat seeing a cucumber about the meta themes. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like that's very cool Gordon I'm leaving now and I don't want to talk about this <laughs> Gordon would super cry Gordon would absolutely cry he would have like a rough time eventually <laughs> he, 
he would cry at the Tori. I think the Toriel fight would hurt him really bad because we've already given him a single mom who's like a science nerd. He would like get through it and he would be like, oh, cool. Like, is this like where the game ends? Like, this is a really short game, I guess. Uh, like at Toriel's house. Mm -hmm. And then he'd want to check out the basement. And then it'd be like, oh, you're not supposed to go in there. Hmm. And then I think, yeah, once he gets past the door, he'd be like, okay, uh, we're going to hit the BRB real quick. Uh, and he would definitely accidentally kill Toriel the first time and then reset. Because chat would be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> He would not get it right the first time. I did not get the Toriel fight right the first time. When I played the demo, because I played the demo first, I couldn't figure it out because I didn't realize that her attacks wouldn't hit you. Oh, no. I actually got scared by them the way that you're supposed to. Oh. It looked to me like I was going to die and that I had to fight back, which is actually really lovely because like, uh, in the basement is the exit to the rest of the game, which Toriel doesn't want you to go through because it's dangerous and she's not wrong. Um, and I, I couldn't figure it out and I thought that I was going to die because I kept getting like, you know, you can take a couple of hits of damage in the fight with her. Mm. Uh, it, side note, if you keep fucking that fight up and restarting it, Flowey's dialogue changes a few times. Yeah. It gets a little rough eventually. <laughs> G-Man has a fun little train whistle. Toot toot! Yeah, that's so cute! Thank you. <laughs> he would absently play with that. does look a little bit like he's biting on it. <laughs> Which I've done, to be fair. Is that better? Yeah. <laughs> toot, toot. Hey, good night, Galactic Pal. Sweet dreams, okay? Thanks for hanging out. Sleep good. Uh, I think... I always like the idea that when Gordon streams, sometimes the others just like wander in and out. Uh, Benry tends to hang more often than everyone else. And I actually like the very funny, ironic idea that Benry becomes kind of a mod <laughs> for Gordon's streams, which is deeply ironic and he shouldn't be trusted with that power, but he does. We, we've joked a few uh, times about Tommy coming up like in the dark and it's just like, how you see G-Man at the end of Half-Life Alex, where it's only like... Yeah. He's just up getting, like, water, and just behind Gordon. <laughs> Chat just like, uh, <laughs> Gordon, go, hey, hey, Freeman, uh, hmm. <laughs> Yeah, Benry is chaotic, but he also does stop people from being creeps. He knows them when he sees them. Yep. Fuck. <laughs> God. Crabs. Closer, getting I banned from chat by Ben getting banned from chat by Benry has creepy pasta elements only if you really fucked up you get like three dilfs before you wind up with nightmares God. chaotic lawful in nature that's a very good summary of Benry's alignment chaotic lawful yeah. That's true. He does take his job seriously. Fuck. Oh, chat. <laughs> Gordon haunted. Not clickbait. Real. 
Meanwhile, then in the darkness, you just hear, uh, I'm going to bed. Do you want a soda? Can I have the last? Can I have the last one? Uh, but since people. God. Uh, since people drift in and out of Gordon doing streams, I definitely think, like, Tommy hangs sometimes. Bubby, despite himself, hangs sometimes. Mm -hmm. Uh, and during daytime streams, every now and then, Joshy just commandeers the stream, more or less. God, that's very cute. Uh, but I think Bubby would kind of get into the Undertale playthrough a little bit. That'd be very cute. Because... Especially because I, I feel like Bubby probably played, like, older games. Like, he's probably played Dragon Quest, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. God, people think Gordon's streams are ARGs, but it's just Benry. God. Yeah, if you look... If you look at the uh, the sound sample for his like VOD uploads, the sound imaging actually reveals words, but it's all just like lol. God. Feet. No. Man from Twitch. <laughs> Ban from Justin TV. <laughs> Shit, they're coming for us now. Don't you all start. <laughs> Oh, what would the science team's signature instruments be Steven Universe musical leitmotif style? Oh, man. Uh, That's tricky. That is tricky. Well, Bannery would be the fucking wow Zella. No, real answers. No, that's a real answer. You can do some really geary stuff with it. That's fair enough. Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Benry. Gordon, probably something techno y. Bubby, uh. Because that's his, like, actual music motif. Yeah, I like that. Bubby, uh. You know the, the air instrument, uh, used on Star Trek? The, uh, fucking, you know, Think Geek sold one and everyone creamed themselves over it. It was like a hundred bucks. By air instrument, do you mean the classification of instruments known as woodwinds? No. Or do you mean a theremin? A theremin. Okay. Uh, I think... I don't know, I'm picky and I want to pick out, like, orchestral instruments, but yeah, I'll be here it, all do day. do it, do it, do it, do it. I, I don't know enough to answer this question. Hmm. I know enough to know I don't know enough to answer this question. But also, maracas. Coomer should have a cello. That's cute. No. No. I'm, I'm too grouchy for this question. <laughs> I'm, tr I'm like, I want to think of real musical instruments, but I don't think that's funny, so. Give us like a day and we'll get back Melodica to Melodica or didgeridoo? What is wrong with you all? <laughs> like an actual soundtrack. Hey. Frankie, what'd you have for dinner? <laughs> Frankie, what'd you have for dinner? A uh, meal replacement shake. Was it good? It's okay. It's chocolate. Mm, mm, mm. I had uh, my hand, my boiler sent over ham and some bread. And noodles that tasted like vinegar mm -hmm. with an olive in them. Oh Ooh. man! But it was that like sound good. one singular olive cut in half, and I got both halves of the olive. It was a good olive, but I was like eating this like a boil. Why do you sound like you're olive. being held at gunpoint? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> right out of you're like desperate to fill the air suddenly for some reason. <laughs> Yes, obviously, didgeridoos are an actual instrument. Thank you. Yeah. The waterfall part of Undertale is very pretty, honestly. It is. There's a lot to love there. I'm thinking about... Let's see. This will be the coke. I know Buffy wouldn't have a train on the coal. Uh, water tank. Steam. 
Y'all are not making me any less cranky about instrument stuff. <laughs> I did not mean to imply any of those are fake instruments, but also you all know you're being goofy. Good grief. Uh, G-Man can never be allowed to possess a slide whistle. Oh god. <laughs> it's too funny to stim with. It's funny and he also messes with gravity when he plays with it for fun. <laughs> good night, Haim. Good night, Haim. Sleep good. Sweet dreams, okay? I always think of a cello for Coomer, but like very specifically in that kind of uh, over the garden wall kind of vibe. Oh yeah, that would be nice. I can actually do like that on But then like transitioning. Cello. Yeah. Uh, but then like transitioning to like the weird distorted MIDI kind of cello imitation noise for some scenes. Mm. That'd be cool. I think. I think G-Man with a piano would make sense, especially if it like got pushed into weird impossible piano here and there. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. I do feel like Darnold had piano lessons growing up. Yeah, he does he seem just seems like, like that the type. Kind of, like... Like, definitely. He had the... He had, he had the respectable parent kind of thing going. <laughs> where he's like, yeah, it was very well-intentioned, but... Whew. The last thing Adrian Shepard hears before the portal shuts is a slide whistle. God. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, kill a lesbian, the worst thing is, is that we made that joke. That the bunny guy from Cyber Kids kind of reminded us of Russell. Oh yeah, I messaged Frankie on the side and I was like, haha. Because uh, uh, Sarah Murphy messaged me and was like, do you think that because Russell downloaded the whole internet, he'd have it, right? And I messaged Frankie that and I was like, haha. They show it to like little kid Alex and she's like, look, Russell, it's you. And Russell's like, I have to shave right now. <laughs> All right, this apocalypse beard has gone on long enough. I think at some point, I feel like for a little while in the apocalypse, like, there have been, like, some mutton chops developed at points. Oh, God, yeah. Look at fucking Russell's, Russell's beard is intriguing, I'll say He's that. getting there. He's, he's going some founding father's places really by accident. Is. He definitely looks like if he was in the right waistcoat, he'd be painted in oils. <laughs> Like, whenever he finally gets the chance to shave, like, Eli always kind of gives him the business about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God. Alright, who who among the science team slash rebels in Half-Life has the best beard if they let it, like, grow out for a couple of months? Eli. Eli. Go get warm, snail. You think Eli? I think Eli. Yeah. I think Eli, because he's already got like pretty good coverage on what he's growing out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not patchy as he has it. It's true. Mm. I think. Okay. Magnuson would definitely have mm. patchy. Is the problem. Magnuson has an awkward period if he tries to grow it out. Yeah. Okay. Good question then. Who has the worst if they try to grow Russell. out their beard? Whose looks the worst? Oh, it's Russell or Kleiner. It's like a tie, because like Kleiner goes yeah. for a wispy. Kleiner's clean cut. Yeah. Kleiner doesn't even have scruff on him. Yeah. Like, Kleiner's like actually getting like razors to hand. Let's see. He won't be pouring the bucket out. Uh, a slick model is in fact Magnuson. I definitely think Magnuson is like pretty uneven, because he's also clean cut. Mm. Oh, it's bad to think of He's Harry definitely Kleiner? like the... I feel like Kleiner lets his scruff grow out now and then, and he doesn't super mind. 
but Magnuson is just definitely like, absolutely not. It looks terrible. It's bad to think of Harry Oh, Potter what's that, chat? Now. Chat, do you have any problems with what's happening? I mean, I think this looks cute so far. I don't think we're going anywhere weird. <laughs> I think this is fine. <laughs> what is this? Kleiner, like, mid-writing his thesis. <laughs> He just kind of, like, locked himself up to write his thesis for a while and just did not come out. God. Hippie Kleiner, God. <sighs> Only photos exist of this stage in his life. Fucking Rapunzel ass. <laughs> He got locked in his office for a little too long? God. <laughs> You're not wrong, D&D &D saint. This does look like an affable Berkeley man. But like, the better class. This is definitely, like, a well-remembered T.A. Hey, Bugs, what you putting him in? And the Katamari songs really are all bangers. Uh, Gordon, I believe, went through a raver phrase more than a hippie or beatnik phase. This might be a high school art teacher, yes. I think Kleiner was ever on a pin-up calendar. Yep. One of those goofy, like, men of science things. Body is a black mesa. <laughs> These anomalous <laughs> materials will rock your socks. Oh, you thought it was the hottest woman in a Wooga science woman? I don't know why you'd think that. I don't know what about... I don't know what bugs could possibly be doing. That'd make you think that. Bugs? Hmm? What? Nothing. <laughs> okay. Good. Okay. It's a good look, though, is the thing. Okay. 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 Question me again, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, when, when I get cranky, I just get cranky audibly at y'all. With bugs, you have to suffer consequences. <laughs> I'm not cranky, I'm mischievous. That's true. It's the difference in tone. Bucky is taking a moment to savor the peace as G-Man plays the train whistle for the train coming through. He, like, he likes to add sound effects. People do not know what is coming. God, you know what I realized this is? Huh. Bubby does, like, the Calvin's overly elaborate, elaborate playing pretend thing, but he's, like, 60 and he has disposable income. God. I draw clean-shaven Barney every day of my life. It's true. It's true. It's fucked up, but true. Though I do love that Barney is just like, so 
he has such like an intense five o'clock shadow mm -hmm. in Half Life Two, mm -hmm. but it never gets any further than a than a than a five o'clock shadow. That's what I think. Something I think that's an he's all scraggly and hot and such. Yeah, yeah. scruffy, scruffy. Yeah, you could exfoliate your face. Uh, and on the blankest. That, man. The Blinkist one, two, three. I think that's a good science experiment you should try to do. Hmm? Oh, I see. Interesting. They're doing science. Interesting. Science. Good, good, good. I think Barney can grow a beard. It comes in slow but even. So he just definitely has like a five o'clock shadow for like two months. It could be worse, but... Yeah, it could be. Gordon, it's even growth. If Gordon goes for, like, one week without... We already saw in Half-Life <laughs> Alex, he's already got it, like, creeping up to his cheeks. So he's yeah! Like... He gets so scruffy in Alex! And that's literally only a week of growth! He's got that loop in the third disease where you leave him alone for a month and he just looks like Jim Henson. Yeah, that's the problem. God, he actually does turn into Jim Henson really fast, yeah, huh? Yeah, he does. <laughs> this is Gordon cramming on a research product project for uh, Green. <laughs> yeah, Gordon got the... Gordon didn't really get, like, the bulk out with his testosterone, but he did get the good, like, hair astute thing switched on. God. He's drinking directly from the coffee pot. It's fine. Barney doesn't have to throw him over his shoulder and make him go to bed at all. Just dragging him off. It's fine. It always sounds cute when he tells it, but like then Barney flashes back to like Gordon actively struggling. And biting. You have to like grab his legs really firmly. <laughs> Otherwise he just kicks like fuck. I do think putting Benry in a in a women want me fish fear me baseball cap feels correct. Mm. All of the official art of Gordon is really funny, is the thing. I don't know why that's true, but it just is. Every official pr promotional render of Gordon Freeman is more or less hilarious for some reason. Big agree. Like, in some of them he's craggy protagonist man, and then in some of them they inexplicably rendered him out as like an airbrushed twink. And I don't know- yeah, with like the snatched waist! Listen. <laughs> mm -hmm. Listen. I didn't say anything. Listen. I'm listening. Listen. It's it's very I don't know. I I would love to hear like it would be very granular to ever hear the details on like the decisions about the official renders. But there's, there feels like there's, there's gotta have been some weird back and forth that happened. God, Super Mario Odyssey is like a perfectly designed game. Yeah, honestly. Like everything in it communicates exactly what it means to. From like, oh, this is like a hot desert. Mm -hmm. This is a fashion mermaid place. This is the land of the uncanny valley, but it's kind of New York. Yeah, exactly. Good night. Which uh, is skill elephant. Good night. Which I always do think it's funny that if you read the art book, they definitely meant for New Donk City to be that unsettling. Yeah, I love that. Which like, they would have to. Of course they do. No one does that on accident. <laughs> But it's very funny how many people reacted to it, like, why would Nintendo, don't they know how creepy and weird this is? Why? And it's like, oh, they know. yes! 
Of course they know! They put a funny cartoon man in a game with a bunch of Sims characters! I love the way that the uh, music only kicks in when you hit the ground in New Donk City. I fucking yeah, love that so much. It's so cute! Just BAM! Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. That is the best one. Okay, Bubbly Milk just like shared one of these renders. And it is so, it's like, it's interesting. Oh, yeah, Gordon yeah. Freeman <laughs> holding a mug backwards is a lie. Have you seen um, Beta Gordon back when he was blonde? Blonde? Yeah. No. Yeah. When you say Beta Gordon, I am, see, I'm thinking of the first model, which is Gritty's human Sona. Uh, yeah, so, kind of like following up uh, Space Biker Igor, or Ivan, um, with a, uh, like, Gordon blonde in a red HEV suit. It was very cool. Very, very cool. Looks like- uh, Full look Beard Gordon is definitely the one that I think it was Gritty's human Sona, because it's Gritty's human Sona. It looked like Gordon bleached his hair. It was very funny. It was like that kind of God. platinum blonde, not that like natural blonde. Gordon it's has, very like, funny that like one spring he doesn't talk about and he begs his co-workers to just not fucking mention please god gritty the hockey mascot let's be clear yes gritty the hockey mascot i cannot stress enough how much the original model of gordon just looks like that hmm? like google original gordon freeman model and when you see the one with the giant beard that's the one. That's the one. I've been the space biker. Uh, honestly, cause almost every fic I've ever written has been for me. Mm -hmm. And like, if I think of anything, I'm like, oh, he he, ha ha. This will make like my two or three buddies who also like this thing. They'll really enjoy this. Um, everything else is pretty much just gravy. And if that's the mindset it. you have going into writing, it'll work out great. Yep. Plus, uh, remember Writing always specific. the two cakes thing. People do not go, yep, damn, more cakes. damn, this cake over here is so much better. They go, oh, fuck yeah. Several fix on this. Fuck, 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 yes. Yes. There's literally... I literally go looking... Yeah. <laughs> like... There's one... The reason you can search for stuff by tags. Yeah. There's one HLVRAI writer that like keeps writing the same hurt comfort fanfic over and over and every time I show up like a horse to the slough, just yes, 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 beat Gordon That's up, true. yes, make Benry care tenderly for him, yes, oh god, it's so We good. love that shit, it's the best. It's written so tenderly and it's nice to see Benry realizing that someone he cares about is, is capable of being wounded and oh no humans are fragile i love that shit i love that shit that's a good bit i always like that bit that's a good one uh which is good because i definitely like to write the subgenre non-human alien intellect is very gay mm -hmm. seems to be my niche yes 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 i'm passionate about fan fiction <laughs> <laughs> it's true. This is a train. Uh, honestly, learning how to write happens just as you write. And I understand, like, worrying about, like, am I doing this right? I'm doing this for practice. I'm trying to improve. I spend a lot of time, like, shuffling around sentence order and everything to sound right. But just write. Just get out a bunch of words. Yep. Same thing for you. Sometimes. Draw. Worst, like, if you if you want anything to, like, really help spruce it up, this is going to sound weirdly obvious, but read books. <laughs> like, I know that sounds so obvious, it sounds condescending, but I keep forgetting. Mm -hmm. And then I'll, like, read a book and be like, oh, mysteriously, I'm inspired to write more now. <laughs> Hell yeah, Battle Cats. This is Billy Hatcher. God damn it! How? 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 
It's not even a bit! I was literally in the middle of checking! There's a desert level?! Yes. Uh, you actually roll on top of the sand at several points, but you can only do that if you're standing on top of the egg, which makes navigation a little difficult, but you can do it. And when you do that, you it does actually sound wear a knight, as in Knights in the Dream hat. Very interesting. A hat? Yeah, a hat. Uh, you get your powers from hats. Oh, that's right! Yeah. You can, you can unlock cosmetic hats by hatching them. Well, no, you, they're not cosmetic. They're needed to beat the game. No? Ooh! Yeah. You need... Each hat gives you different oh. powers. Uh, some of them are kind of useless, like the phones only give you, like, plus one defense. Um... That's true. But, uh... Yeah, it's... There's, there's a lot... There's a lot of Billy Hatcher really. It's good. I like Billy Hatcher. Oh, I was gonna finish the stream in the lab coat. Yeah! Uh, and I see you all in chat, but I also know y'all are like gay and like romance stuff, and that's out there as books too. I understand the attention span thing. I read in small chunks that are read while I'm like waiting for my hamster to sniff a treat on my hand. <laughs> Works differently for everyone. But like, read fan fiction then. Also valid. What I mean is like read prose, not necessarily books. I'm not, like, slapping the fan- I'm talking about getting better at writing fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> but to me, you get better at writing by reading more than worrying, is what I mean to say. Hey, fan fiction got that good, satisfying structure. Yes. I've mostly been reading T. Kingfisher, and she wrote- she writes horror, and then she also occasionally writes kind of romance, but the kind of romance that has, like, assassins and deadly plagues and giant clockwork war machines Ooh. and ghoulish decapitated bodies and that works for me Good. so it was great she did a re-endition of like beauty and the beast but the main character is a gardener fucking hates the roses <laughs> <laughs> it's very cute like there's whole parts where it's just like yeah, we're both kind of stuck here, so I just spent time reading bad poetry in the library and poking the beast with my foot to read him the best worst parts. That's Fucking... cute. Right? If you're gonna do straight romance, that's got rights. Also, Beauty and the Beast AUs are always good. Speaking of that more two cakes thing, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just floating the idea out into the ether. <laughs> Yeah, it looks really cute. I don't say that a lot about my stuff. I'm just like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good job. It's always good to savor that yeah. when you can. Yeah. It's a good job. Look at them tenderly enjoying his hobby together. <laughs> I like how he gave Coomer the part that allows him to do chaos. Oh, yeah. I never did get into warrior cats. I feel like I could have gotten into warrior. Yeah, this one's almost done, huh? Wow. We'll Look at that. The Just... next one soon. Wild. Maybe like one or two pieces here and there. You know what the next one is? What's the next one? It involves Wallhammer Barney. Oh ho! Oh ho 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 ho! I think you may have some I mean, I can do some talking about it when the occasion arises. <laughs> I see you, chat. But for right now, we should probably wrap up pretty soon since we're getting up oh, to about 1.13am. 1 1 yep. How do oh, I God. didn't interrupt because you were finishing- You were finishing up your last drawing, and I know that whenever you're still working on a drawing, we want to, like, coast that to a stop. Oh my God, I completely lost the time. <laughs> <laughs> I've been keeping track, Thank luckily. Thank you. <laughs> I try after the fucking seven hours oh, the other God. day. Yeah, I'm so sorry about that. Even my dad was like, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, my parents also was like, 
that's a little excessive, but understandable given the everything. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> but it was fun. It was. It fun. was fun to clean up the whole chapter. Yeah, I enjoyed that. I. Uh... And also, I'll, I'll be honest. If we were gonna get up to the text part, you kind of have to smash back through that. Because it's not the most riveting thing to open on. It's more fun as the crescendo. Yeah, exactly. But we just got seduced by the lack of soda poppers. I felt so free. I'm trying to think about what else to do with them. Mm -hmm. Well, we can always wrap up one last drawing next time. That's true. Since I... Trying to stop the stream. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me just let me just skeletonize <laughs> this one out real quick. <laughs> Smacking the bugs with the newspaper, hang trying on, to get them on, off the pen. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not rushing you. I just think it's funny. <laughs> God. Copy dog. Copy dog. How rude. Oh, that late, the late night wasp. The late night wasp. I see how it is. How many wasps did we wind up with? Too many. Cosmic. Cause I expect better of you. Let's see. I think one of these is an info dump, so that means we're looking at a total of 24 no. wasps. Goodness. Good God, people. <sighs> poor Adrian. Poor, poor Adrian. Adrian Shepard has to eat all these wasps. And he cries the whole time, <laughs> chat. It hurts him That's so much. That's not who I meant. He's That's allergic not to who them. I meant. He's allergic Catboy to Tim them. Allen, are you happy? Are you happy now that I said it was Catboy Tim Allen that I meant? And he's so sad. Because for some reason actual wasps keep showing up. He's so sad the whole time, chat. Demon, put him in space. Uh, cringe and, and God is dead. Let's be clear. <laughs> Just because someone mentioned it. I don't give a fuck about so-and-so called cringe culture. It just means somebody doing something that's very sincere and other people being uncomfortable with it and making fun of it. Yep. Do live free. No one can stop you. Yep. Look at me. Look at me. I'm drawing three old men from a Half-Life spin-off. Kissing. For money. Look at me. It works also, out. Also, this song rules, but we should... This song rules, but we should probably skip it. Yeah, you're right. Don't worry <laughs> about cringe culture. Don't fucking worry. Yeah! I'm cringe, but I'm free is a statement that I do enjoy. Yes. Okay, look at how much I fucking doodled on this page. And that was Paprika OST, with ro which rocks and a half. <laughs> oh, hey, here's Cowboy Benry. Been a hot minute. Yeah! I never uploaded that picture, but that's okay. Ugh. Good. We like to see it. Also good. I like those papyruses. Those got more notes on Tumblr than I was expecting. Yeah, me too, to be honest. Nobody ever stops loving the boy. Let's see, is there anything in the fan art channel today? I know we did a lot of the pasting and Yeah, Chad. let's take a look. Oh, there is! My god! Okay, Goodness, hang on. what do we got? What do we got? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me get us all set up over here. Hot diggity dog. Hot doggity damn. Oh, Half-Life, but it's Hollow Knight would work pretty well, honestly. Brain Rotting, thank you for the follow. Hey, thank you for the follow, Brain Rotting. Where's Discord? Where's Discord on this menu? Where's Discord? There it is. Aha! Hello. So last time, um, I think we saw this one on stream. Yeah, I remember, because we talked about Yes, that was on stream. Well. Eventually. I do like fluffy ears. <laughs> so fucking good. Look at this. Look it at really, all the I really I really love this interpretation. 
It's slightly horrifying, which I love a lot. Yes. I can imagine this scuttling through a vent. Oops, let me shrink this a little so I can show the little piece. There we go. Fucking great. I love it. And very nice handwriting. I love it. it bonus points yes. for handwriting. Very nice. We do bonus points for penmanship? Uh, e. I don't. I love this also. I love this very much. Thank you. Thank yes, you, thank this you. makes me very happy. Thank, thank you, Eva. This to me is more in character as Max than it is for Sonic. <laughs> yeah. He does this like <laughs> he does this in Bosco's. He does at this Bosco. To Sam when both of He's, them are in the office he is together. On... <laughs> God. But he also does this like on Bosco's counter and then gets kicked out of the school store. God. <gasps> oh wait, hang on, hang on. Fuck. I I got it. I got it. Uh, uh, look at it. Oh, it's so small and tiny and little. Oh, little bug. Oh my god. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Queen Lily 666. The platonic bug. Beautiful. <laughs> Fucking beautiful. Thank you. I still love this. I really do too. Oh, dog song is perfect for closing up. Look at this Irish wolfhound. I, love the I really do love this. And the hat's really it it well makes done. it work much better than any other art I've seen of this concept, which includes Steve Purcell's, because Steve Purcell's version of it haunts me. This is great. Thank you. Mog. Thank you. Thank you for Mog. Thank Mog. you for Mog. Ooh. Yeah. They are cuddling. Babies. They are cuddling and holding each other. It is very good. Tender. Tender. Tenderness. Loving. Get tender. Oh, wait. Be soft. Thank you, Make a Flygon, for this piece. And thank yeah. you, Lily 666 for this piece. And thank you, Hell 9K did nothing wrong for Mog. Leaf Twig! Again, I love the floppy ears. I love the lucre. The expression is wonderful. I do too. You did great. Like, Indeed. Like Max found something. Oh, it's Chad, killer lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Oh, it's so they tiny. probably would adopt like, they would definitely adopt like a little pile monster. Oh my god, absolutely! I love Sam's expression. They just put it in like the donut box. This is wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my god. <laughs> that does seem appropriate. <gasps> Frankie. Oh, oh, oh. Yo! Thank you! Oh, it's Leif Dylan! That's cool! That's very sweet! Yeah, uh, so we haven't started the Bug Snacks LP, but I've watched one with my girlfriend, and we were tossing around ideas because she has a Bug Snacks OC, so I wanted to come up with one. So I kind of figured out a way to make one that's still kind of a monstrosity because I'm not trustworthy with G rated body horror because it's really fun. And this is my buddy, who's a uh, Leaf Dialin Runau, uh, who definitely doesn't suggest anything worrying and is unable to say anything but his own name for a while. Don't worry about it. Oh, it's fine. Totally fine. That's cool. Uh, he he has bad reactions to uh, eating bug snacks. You can find it on my Twitter if you'd like to see the art I made. Wow. I guess I could put that on the server. Do Didn't it. occur to me, actually. Do it, do it, I, do it. Uh, all do right. it. Do it. Look at him. Look at him. That Sam smile is so wonderful. I love the triangle <laughs> smile on Sam. These are great. I love the line break up here. These are lovely. That's a perfect Max. Yeah. That's a perfect Max expression, too. These are wonderful. Thank you, Le Plonine. Le Plonine. Le Thank you. Leaf Twig back at it again with the good hat and the snout. It's, it's so true, cute. it's an excellent hat. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Max, but with anime eyes. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. Sam, help! Someone replace my eyes! Holy shit. <laughs> oh. That rules. <laughs> <gasps> Look! Oh, 
that's so cute! Oh, it's true! Sure. It's Sam and Max! <laughs> Oh, that's so cute! God, I wish I had an Aloha shirt that looked like that. That rules. I'm gonna put some hearts on. I'm gonna put some extra hearts on here. Thank you, Killy yes. Lesbian. Heart. Oh my god. Heart. Love. Star. Cool. <laughs> Read my sled. Oh, it that's cute. Born. It is Barney. It is. We love to see it. Hound Eye. It took me a second. I love Hound Eye so much, but my brain sometimes forgets them. I had peeper puppies. Or, yeah, I, I have my brain defaults to peeper puppies, and that stall was me going. That's not right. It's that's a, not right. <laughs> it's a better name. It's a better name. I love this little haircut on Gordon, where it's shaved on the side, and you see the hoof up yeah. here. That's cool, and the freckles are nice. This is a really great way yeah. to stylize the HEV suit too. Great work. And wonderful uh, Barney. Also, do kiss he. We do love. Do kiss definitely he. kiss he though. Thank you. Eventually again with the Should chat. I, put... I love it. I just that's every time. Every time. <laughs> what were you gonna say, Frank? Oh, should I post my goofy bug snacks art in the fan art channel or podium? Uh podium. Alright, I'll chat put it there. Wasp. Okay, wasp warning. Oh look at him. On a little leash. Let me see, let me see. Oh, look at that! Oh, I <laughs> love a the happy eyes Oh, that's chat. so cute! Ooh. Oh, that's wonderful! Oh, I love that! That's so cute! Thank you, Cuppy Dog City! <laughs> I love this! God! This expression is very Sam? good! Sam, I want to cause problems on purpose! <laughs> Thank you, Claudito. Holy God. That's wonderful. I love the power stance. I love the expression. This is perfect. It's extremely strong. <gasps> Newt! Oh my God, Newt! Hmm? Look at this hmm? bug! Yo! Oh, that's so cute! Oh, that's so cute! Oh, I love how you stylize the Oh, that looks great! Oh, yeah! God. That looks great! Oh. Thank you so much, new. Lovey. Oh my god. Dude, after dark, thank you. Oh, I forgot to leave a little thank you on this. I'm gonna leave my fun little Max emote I have from our server. Uh, it is Max after being run over by something. But it is an admiration of love. It's just that I have a Max emote and I want to use it. Dead Max. Thank you. It's a good Max emote. <laughs> <laughs> Bubbly. <laughs> Fuck! God damn it! <laughs> spaghetti Boy lives on! Wouldn't you like to know Spaghetti Boy? <laughs> ah, Fandom Hub! This is me causing problems on purpose. Ah, I do love it. Oh! We do cause. You do cause a little bit of problems on purpose, but I just love the fucking little. <laughs> I do too! Look! It is you! Look Yay! At the heart, the oh, I the love that. That's great. <laughs> what wonderful haircut! I always love that because it it looks really nice that way. It's cute. Yeah. Thank hey, you don't get electrocuted, there. okay? Actually, an onion. Don't do that. No getting actually electrocuted. This rules. Thank you. It's super cute. Thank you. <gasps> Baby Mort in the snow, Chilili. Oh no! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they don't like it! Oh, oh, oh. Poor baby. Oh. Dax. Hey, cool. God. God. <laughs> God bless you, Dax. This is gonna haunt me for the rest of my days in a really wonderful way. It's so good! <laughs> <laughs> I put the Luigi tragedy icon on it, but also the holly heart. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Cooking with Wart and Adrian. Oh, that's cute! Oh, oh, his hat. oh I love these! Oh, that's wonderful! Oh, I love the head crab blades sticking out of the stew. Yeah, that's really cute. This is great! Thank you! Oh, How I tender. just scrolled- I, I scrolled down. Thank you, uh, Ooh. Thank you. <gasps> Magnus and the baby boards! Oh my god! That's so cute! <laughs> oh, oh god! 
just they 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 definitely just <laughs> just put the baby vorts on top of Magnus. Then that's so cute. I love he will not that. move them. He cannot move them. Ooh, oh, that's a really nice painting. Oh, I yeah, love Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, this is a nice. Palette. I do love a painting. And look at that little puppy. That's very cute. It's cute. Bubby. Thank you, Onion. I love this Bubby Onion. <laughs> I like the Andrew <laughs> Lashes. That's a good oh. choice for Bubby. I might steal that if that's okay. Yeah, it looks great, honestly. <laughs> yes! Oh my god! That's <laughs> it's wonderful. lit! We all know he likes the sweater. Oh, that's great. This expression is wonderful. Also, good wrinkles on the pants. I have to fight pants wrinkles a lot. Good job. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> 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 Fucking Tommy haunting the chat. Oh my god. <laughs> god. Carbonated milk. Soft lesbian. Fandom jump. These are very good... <laughs> That's very cute. <laughs> Those are very good chat names, honestly. God, I love Tommy's dead stare. That's wonderful. <laughs> oh my god. That smug expression is beautiful, thank you. Yeah, I really love this Benry, honestly. He's smug. He's smug. He defies he you. He hates a smug energy. He stole this hat from Bubby. <laughs> he gave Bubby this hat as like a Father's Day gift and then he stole it. Yeah, it's true. Whoa! Yo, this is so cute! Yo! Thank you, Ivan. This is lovely! Thank you so much! Oh, the hearts are cute and I love the way you did the eye, the eye highlights. This is wonderful, thank you. This is so cute. I do love having him riding his shoulders too. Yes, That's yes, lovely. Yes, yes. Big love. Thank you, everybody. Real quick. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. 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 Good stuff. Oh, we got babies. Good stuff. Good stuff. Babies. Oh. Left baby. All right. Let me knock us oh, over. That's good. To the, 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 the thing, the thing, the thing. Indeed. The thing. And for y'all who wanted to see my bug snacks OC, I put the Twitter, I cheated and just put the Twitter links in the chat, uh, including the middle link, which is body horror, but it's G rated cartoony body horror. <laughs> but seemed worth better safe than sorry. That's true. Let's see. Yeah, the pet channel was a brilliant idea on Bugs's part, like, specifically. Someone in chat actually recommended it, but I don't remember who, but to whoever yeah. it was, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, does anyone know anyone? Yeah, that... honestly, it's a, it's a delight. Anyone know anyone that would be good yeah, for Yeah, anybody raid? streaming? I'm poking through my, uh, list, and because it's winter, a lot of these animal cams are pretty empty. I vote Koi Pond, honestly. Koi Pond is always good. Ah, oh, thank y'all for coming, honestly. Tonight was a lovely one. Yeah, thank you. Uh, let's see. Cajun's live deer cam. No deer on the deer cam. <sighs> Why does winter have to really ruin the nice nature cam trail? Hey, thank you all so much. Honestly, tonight was very lovely. It was. It's been really fun getting into doing the video games and everything, but it is very lovely to just get back to doing a chill, uh, ish, somewhat cursed, somewhat goofy, draw and talk kind of time. And it's delightful that we can just talk at y'all about, like, Sam and Max lore concepts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you for coming out for this. Oh. This was very sweet of Blankus, that's fucking amazing. <laughs> that's beautiful. Alright, let me send y'all off to the koi fish pond. Um, I know there's a command for that one where it's yeah. like, you can switch what camera it's looking at, and I gotta tell you, the in-pond camera is fucking dope. Alright. Yeah, check that out. Bye, everybody. Everybody enjoy fish, okay? Go look at fish, okay? Fish, okay? Sweet dreams whenever y'all can sleep, too. I know for some of y'all it's gonna be a while now, too, still. Kiss a fish, okay? Chill out, time. Yeah!